mean, that's massive. That is a massive break. Yeah, we've had a few uh, problems early on with the internet connection, unfortunately. Um, but uh, we can just tell you we are now live. Uh, third frame of this match already absolutely dynamite quality faultless up to press two breaking clearances as you've seen and gareth hibbert there he's just smashed those open this is a good layout no clusters to now negotiate yeah wants that to just stay off the side cushion it has just and uh you might see him come up table now for the one on the left hand side cushion Maybe not. I think these are. You don't want to. You don't want to curse him too much. But these are so easy. It probably doesn't. There's probably a few ways he could go about taking these. I think he's just a little bit short there. I'd like to have been dead straight on this yellow in the middle. Yeah, I did think he was going to play the one down the cushion myself. It's uh, always more than one way to go. Yeah. <clears throat> and he's not hanging about, so he's obviously uh, comfortable with the position. Yeah, very fluent player. Doesn't only take only takes time when he needs to take time. Some people are like that, you know. They can obviously everyone's got their own style of play, but for for me, sometimes I I I'm not the quickest of players. I'm not the slowest, but sometimes I think when you take a bit too much time or you overthink things, it's a, it's a fine line between being careful enough not to make silly mistakes and not playing at a decent enough pace to feel like you're in a rhythm. I think Gareth does that very well. Just takes a little bit extra time when he needs to, but when they're all there, he just gets on with it. Yeah, he sort of sights the table, doesn't he? He looks at his route and he uh, goes off on his business. And I think that that is a thing, isn't it? Overthinking often. You need to take your time, you need to be careful, but uh, it is easy to... Sort of start to you almost doubt, don't you? You find the path and then you you yeah. look at it and you just think. That's so what I think. Sometimes the shot clock can actually help. I agree with um, that. Yeah. Sometimes you definitely feel that you need more time and you feel a bit rushed. Uh, but but sometimes it does just. For example, there's a ball on the cushion and you you might study the table for quite a long time. Right? What's the best way to go about? Can I get on it? Can, shall I get on it? Shall I? Actually, if I take this one next and then that one, maybe I could break it out. And what's the, you know, am I am I likely to be on a ball when I break it out? You ain't got time to think like that. So sometimes it's kind of like, okay. I've got one ball on the cushion. Uh, I, I'm just going to land on it, and it and it kind of helps you sometimes. Here we go, Dean. Ready for this deliberate pause. He did lose the cue ball a bit there, but he's made a ball. That's all that matters, and cool. Look, look at these reds. Yeah, once again, a fantastic split. Very good. Yeah, this bodes well for the uh, the quality of play today. The way the table's breaking is certainly an improvement on yesterday. Yeah, I think Dean's uh, he's just took his extension first up. What we see a lot of people do. Obviously, his first red's a gimme over this corner pocket, but it's how you get the cue ball out. Are you slicing it ultra thin and trying to come behind the yellows? So much so, he doesn't want to crash into those yellows. He's taking a missable pot into the middle. He's got it. Um, he's out of position. I think he's... He can just jack up a little bit and, and clip this one in the middle, but he's obviously got that one over the corner pocket. I think there's a gap there. Yeah, from the overhead, there looks like there's a gap, but when you look at the uh, the main screen, it looks a bit tight, doesn't it? It does, yeah. Uh, it might be one of those where you leave the leave the cue ball central and, and, and have to go cushion first with a tracer right-hand side to swing it round. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. The thing there is you... The cue ball. Yeah. Has to get back out and down table. 
you know, the more you look at this table now, there's a few more problems than when it first seemed. Uh, the red in the middle of the table doesn't go into the in, into only goes into a couple of pockets. You see, Dean's just looking to get on that now. I think he's got a nice natural angle to just drift behind the yellow. Take this red into the middle. But um, the most testing clearance of this match so far. First three have been fairly easy finishes. This one's a, turning into a tricky one. Might well have to leave the black at distance. Yeah, I think that's the issue. It's going to be the uh, final red for position on the black. And there is a good chance he may have to play that final red into corner off the cushion first, as you alluded to. Spinning the cue ball out, but he's going to leave distance. Yeah, realistically, he's, he, he may get to the bulk line or, or just in between the bulk line and the middle pocket, but he's not going to get anywhere near as close as he would have liked. So, no issue getting the white ball out here. It's just how close or how how good can he get on the eight? Not sure I've ever commentated on a uh, on a match before where somebody's deliberately left themselves total snookered. I think that's about as good as he could get, really. And it's uh, not nice. No, it's not nice. Would have loved it to have just come off that cushion a little bit, but... A real tester, this. Yeah, it got a good line, didn't it? But it's just off that cushion slightly would have been a, yeah. a help. Oh. Yeah, tough pot that. Tough pot from distance. Yeah. And really, it was the start of that clearance. It would deal, you know, really would have liked to have taken that red first, wouldn't he, rather than last. But it uh, must have felt he couldn't get out. Yeah, this cluster of three was just causing them a problem and, and it really was a case of, well, you're probably going to end up, if you, even if you come through the gap, you, you could end up glued to one of the reds. And I think he did the right thing. He just pushed, pushed that black onto the side cushion, which, which has cost him in the end. So, takes this yellow to corner. Does he just push this other yellow over? Or can he just, yeah, he just slid past it. Perfect. And even at this very early stage of the match, this could uh, make a great difference. Just that black from distance. Difficult pot. Can't say it was particularly a mistake. It was just a difficult pot. And, uh, yeah, it wasn't, a, it wasn't a bad shot to, to leave the cue ball where he left it. He it, it, it couldn't really do an awful lot. I think in hindsight that you know he just needed to uh, play that first red into the middle with a little bit more pace so the black went into the cushion and came back out but he's got to put that to the back of his mind now said on comms that, that we think we have problems with the internet in our live so they do know we're oh, like right, okay. so oh, right, okay. So yeah, you might not be seeing that. Okay. Okay. Sorry about that guys. Just a little technical issue. So yeah, that long uh, black from distance would have made it two apiece. I think it was that last red cushion first, just a couple of more spins maybe, a little straighter on the black, he might have had more chance but he's gone now yeah and uh, Gareth's made a ball again pretty much the last ball rolling into the left middle pocket not as easy a finish as the first two he's had so Dean's it. Dean would have perked up a little bit in his chair thinking he might get a sniff here yeah, this yellow at the bottom of the table, stuck to that red. It's going to be an issue. Now you see, nearly went into the corner, to be fair. Yeah. Just lost that cue ball slightly. And from not 
from losing the cue ball, he's, he's now he's now not really got an easy opener. He's looking, he can't really go reds, although he's got a red on. But the reds are too difficult, so he's got to go yellows. He's, he's got nothing but a plant. Admissible from distance. Played it well. Is he on? Is he snookered himself? I think he's okay. I think he's okay from the overhead. Yeah, body language. He's poking his cue where he's thinking a couple of shots ahead, so he's definitely fine. We say it a lot, but this is a big, big visit to the table after Dean's missed black in the last frame. And uh, for Gareth to go 3-1 to, to cement that sort of break a serve, if you like, with another break finish. Properly puts Dean on the back foot. And it is going to be this yellow that's stuck to that red. Yeah, It's going to be the uh, deciding factor he's for uh, Gareth in this frame. I think he's just about perfect. Uh, you know, he's, he, he obviously wasn't quite. Now, I think that's perfect. He's got the angle now to, to screw into this yellow and red. The problem is, he, he's... Well, can he screw into it or is he going to swing it off two cushions? I think if he can miss the red, swinging it off two cushions is the one. More likely to be on a ball after. So you get quite a lot of side on this. He's played that really well. Yeah, that was a great shot, wasn't it? It was. It's just, it's been, he needed to trust the luck a little bit and hasn't really got it. He's got no angle now. Um, how on earth he's going to get back up the table? You can see there he's looking at... Uh, well, does he, has he got a double on? He hasn't really got a double, has he? No, I, just, I don't know. What, I mean, power on this with top and left and trying to somehow get it up table uh, and then back down. Wow. Look at the side on that. Look at that for a shot. Hey, he's put his hand up. I mean, he's put his hand up, and I think Dean's probably not too impressed with that. Um, <laughs> well, I was impressed with him outside. He got on that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, incredible the power he's generated as well from 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 queuing off the cush. He just. Do you know what though? Sometimes you are kind of playing to get a bit lucky. You just need to get it down this end of the table. You're you're in such a bad spot. Just playing to get it down this end of the table and kind of hope for the best, really. Well, I'm with you. I mean, yeah, he, he was playing for that sort of area, wasn't he? Yeah. But um, he's come unstuck. Yeah, but ever the gentleman put his hand up and apologised. Perfectionist, no doubt. So trying to bust into that ball or trying to land for it maybe in the middle. But, uh, well, he's got it in for the middle, but the other middle. So right. now... What's he got now? Trying to swerve it. That's tough from that distance. It's done well. It's done well to 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 even get get a hit on that from there. So then rolls reversed. Three break finishes. Dean missed the black in the last frame, and uh, Gareth's run out of position on the black in this one. He needs to return the favour. May see a safety shot here. May not. Dean's a very attacking player. I'm sure he's very confident of knocking this long winner into the bottom left corner if he wishes. Yeah, you can't blame him there. Played the ball into middle. I think he'd yeah. like to have come back out, wouldn't he? He's just sort of landed low. Yeah. I think he made that decision straight away. Uh, and that's a that's not just a snooker. That's a very good snooker. Um, you, you don't want to leave. Obviously, you want to get as good a snooker as you can, but w when you're playing sort of top level, you don't really want to be leaving people one cushion escapes because often they'll get close and maybe even get out from there. But, I mean, Gareth is in a world of pain. But decision here, Dean, does he... Does he move the black? I think it does go comfortably enough in the middle, doesn't it? I think so. Yeah, I think he leaves the black. Develops uh, his first ball. Just uh, make sure, yeah, just knock this red out. Yeah. That's what it feels like. The black just drops to middle. 
plenty of balls to get on it easy enough, you would think. Yeah, it does look tight from that angle, but it definitely goes. Just needs to be careful. The fact that he's pushed that red near to the black just gives him that uh, assurance that he's he's going to get that cue ball very close to the eight ball. So he can play to middle if he chooses. Just depends. Or he plays corner. Just wants the right angle on this last red. Just draws back. And there you see. Yeah, I think that's perfect. Just drops that into the middle. And it was all about getting that cue ball close to the eight. Yep, tight as it is, it's now unmissable. Right behind it. Very well played. Yeah, very high quality match this so far. I think Dean really needed that frame. After missing that black in the previous. Yeah, they've kind of, uh, they both started well, but they've had one let off each. So the match sits at 3-2, which is basically where it deserves to be. Dean to break next. We've already told them that we are live. Yeah, it came up here on YouTube that we're live. Oh, and we got told through the set that yeah, just to mention, no, that they told us to mention That's it, right. so, I, so I have mentioned that we're live. Brilliant. So we had internet issues early on, with, but we are now live, so. So after this match, we'll, we'll go in, I'll go in. After the match, yeah, because Kevin were on about after this, I think he was going to cut in, wasn't he, but. Mm. Yeah, I won't bother. After this match, but I'll be in the studio. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that and you come in after I've interviewed the other winners. Yeah. And then I'll go and over to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You are doing the one after as well. Come in where? Into, Into the studio. The studio after this match. Yeah. And then come in after I spoke to the winners. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Talk a little bit about what's happening in today. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Spot on. Yeah. What's the name? Kev Robinson, is it? Ah, okay. Yeah. Cool. All right. Sorted. So another big break from Dean, but nothing down. Yeah, dry break. And there you see Gareth elects to take the yellows. Not the nicest of the layouts, obviously the black being your main concern. Everything else does have a pocket, although they're not ideally placed he has got a ball in the one over the middle where it'll be very easy to get into the black it's just it's just going to be a case of does he land on it once he once he breaks it out and uh, does he leave that till last because there's no other balls up in that end of the table decisions decisions yeah that is the issue if he chooses to leave it till last no guarantee of position when he does break that eight ball out. You would think he'd like to get it out earlier, but uh, as you've just said, Dan, what does he get on afterwards if he does so? So let's see what he's got uh, got planned. So just checking again, looking at that ball to middle. Yeah, so I think what he's looking at here is going to... He's got options here. He could even go into it now, knowing that he'd be unlucky not to leave the long yellow. But this is no easy finish. No, and it's just how you... I mean... I think I thought he might have gone middle now, possibly. Yeah, I think... 
it could, and and then he is, you know, if he just nestles into it, he is guaranteed to be on the one in this bottom left corner, but he's almost guaranteed to be hampered queuing in some way, shape or form. I think he's doing the right thing here. Just um, take this. I mean, this is missable down the cushion, but take this. And then you're just going to need a little bit of luck. Almost yeah. impossible to judge this perfectly, but I think if you can go cushion black and push that black into the back cushion out roughly halfway between the bulk cushion and the bulk line y you should have a shot on it so yeah you would hope to have a shot in the same pocket wouldn't you but well no yeah that's that's not what he wanted he, he, that that was perfect a little bit more pace uh, to come back out and um he'd have been on it into the opposite corner so be looking at going across here, but the red that's on the bottom cushion just spoils the line slightly for him. So this isn't easy. Feels very similar this to uh, to the previous frame. Bit of magic. Oh, what's he tried there? What has he tried? Indeed, I don't know. Is it a trying to mass it and come out? I, I, I think I really don't know what we're on the overhead there, so I think he was jacking right up to try and do some sort of massive, massive forward to come yeah. back and kick it into the corner. I almost want to see him play it again. Yeah, that would have been some shot, wouldn't it? Yeah. <coughs> so, Dean's going to be feeling pretty good about himself right now. He's. Uh, Started the match very well. Made his one mistake. Running out of position on a tricky finish. Missed a long black. It's been let back in. 3-1 about five minutes ago was looking like it could have been 4-1. And he's now got fairly easy clearance here to take it back to three each. So he will be feeling the better of the two as we speak. Gareth at the moment is going to be a case of what if. On another day be 5-1 up in this match and cruising. But he's not. Just overrun that a little bit, but we need to reroute. Yeah, should be okay. But definitely just ran through a little more than uh, desired. We've all been there on a fairly easy clearance and uh, it, it, you make hard work of it and, and and it really is just through lapse of concentration and actually just sort of not giving the clearance the respect it deserves because they're all out in the open and because it seems quite easy on the face of it. And I can tell you, I mean, having done it plenty of times, they are the most frustrating frames to lose. Yeah, and he's once again not quite in the position that he desired. Just out of position still here. So, electing to screw off the side cushion. He wants to be, I think he's okay there. I think that's pretty good, little yeah. straighter would have been uh, probably preferable, but he's okay here. Yeah, I think it's just good enough to be able to screw into the side cushion. Yeah, it's perfect. Good recovery. And this to take the match to three apiece. And I'm with you, Dan. Dean will be the happier of the two with this scoreline, that's for sure. Could have been well behind at this point in this match. Yeah, just a couple of other scores as well from the last 16. So you've got Jason Hill currently 2-1 up on Liam Dunster. Uh, Craig Brown 6-5 up on Chris Bowrum. The winner of those two matches play each other in the quarterfinals. And uh, the winner of this match that we've got on now plays the winner of Corey Reese and Rich Swaffield, who's currently tied at four apiece. So all... In the balance out there.
actually over there Liam seems to be perfect position to make this tool against Jason Hill alright Gareth Hibbert to break massive break again has he made a ball he's made a red yeah red to corner just for a second there it looked like he might not have made anything he struck them well timed it well <clears throat> there you see straight back with the cue ball no danger of any in off yeah and he's he's in first again but like the last couple of frames he hasn't got an easy layout uh, I think he can take a red first if he wants to but he's got two other reds that just don't go um, looking possibly at the thin snick on the yellow in the right corner and then he can go into the other two on the side cushion but but still there's work to do with the yellow closest to the left middle it's a bit of a mess this table yeah thin yellow I think maybe the shot though that's what he's looking at yeah that, that, that's come out well I was going to say it's come out pretty good but I think they're blocking each other now maybe forced into taking this uh, yellow at the bottom of the table on the cushion Yeah, and as you can see there, he could play into the red if he does so. Yeah, I think he's just put, sort of, I, I do that a bit myself. You kind of come around and visualise, okay, if I hit the middle of the reds, am I okay? If I hit the left-hand red, am I okay? If I hit the right-hand red, am I okay? And uh, he probably didn't want to hit that one. Um, ideally, he would have hit the other one or split them. And he, he was going to have some kind of shot. Um yeah it, okay so the yellow obviously goes into the right middle chasing this clearance yeah he would have liked to have uh, just got that bad yellow out the previous shot yeah That's sometimes you just have no choice the way the table lies he's got an angle now to be able to flick into the red um, just to the right of the yellow and dislodge it yeah and he would be, uh, be holding there for yellow to middle Bow on Craig Brown now tied at six each. Going to the wire over there. As you can see, Gareth's uh, just run out of position. If he was just a little bit further to the right, this would be this would be uh, he'd be on it into the corner. He's had no choice in the end but to play a plant. Yeah, again he breaks down halfway through the clearance. Hasn't left it easy for Dean though. He's got he's got options. A couple of balls he can play long, the one he's closest to, and also the one closest to the black. If he gets it, frames his. Big moment in this game. I think for me, probably taking the one next to the black. That would be my preferred route. Out of the two, I prefer the one near the black. I think Dean thinks the same. But you have to get this ball. You're selling out if you don't. It's a That's a great shot. pot, yeah. It is a great pot. Especially at that pace. He's played it sort of pocket weight. There, uh, The pot's not too difficult, but there's pressure on it. And uh, to play it plain ball, pretty much pocket weight, it's a test of, test of nerve more than anything. Played it very well. It's a little bit short of where he wanted to be. Wanted to be on this one into the right middle straight if he could, so he could get closer to the one at the top of the table. Oh, I think. I think he's just about all right. Yeah, he is close to this red. Just tried to change the angle slightly with the spin. Horrible little shots, these. 
Yeah, referee there, just making sure. There's no push shot. Very easy to push when they're so close. And again, not perfect on this red. He's really got into that. Nicely played. So he's going to feel like he's been really let off in this match. Um, last couple of clearances that Gareth's been on haven't been easy. So it's, they're not, you know, Gareth's not going to be sat there feeling like he's playing terribly. This last finish in this in this frame that he's just had there was was really tough, but he had no choice. Um, hasn't got there, and he's 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 actually really just been making life quite easy for Dean. These last three frames. You see uh six each. Low one at the table. So, back to the action here on the mainstream table. And it's Dean Shields to break with a 4-3 lead. Oh, straight in the... Co just got away with it. Just got away with it. That's when you know your luck's in. You've been let off in the last couple of frames. Then it looks like you're screwing straight in off. Just knuckles it. Another couple of balls coming towards it. Look like they're going to kick it in, but they just don't. Maybe it's Dean's day. Yeah, that could be a big turning point in this match. Look for all the world like that cue ball was uh, going down the pocket. Yeah, and uh, decision to make here. Yeah, I think there's an argument for reds or yellows. I'd fancy him to get both, to be honest. Taking his extension. Looking possibly for me. Yellow into the middle of the red. It will open up fairly nicely there, but reds reds are quite easy too. He's just gonna need maybe just one pinpoint positional shot from might well might well leave the one down the cushion till last and just screw back a couple of inches for the black in the middle, I think. Depends how he gets on it. Would have loved to have been a little bit straighter on this red that he's closest to. Yep, so actually he's taking it now. So we take this ball down the cushion. There's a red to middle if he if he chooses. He's very straight on this ball. The issue is he, he doesn't want to be screwing back and leaving himself queuing off a side cushion, so you'll know better than us just how much angle he's got. It's not too bad. Yeah, He is nearer to the cushion than he would have liked to feel, but... Yeah, I think if the yellow wasn't to the right of this red in the bottom of the table, he'd just pop this red into the bottom right and, and bounce the white off that right hand side cushion but he, I think he might just flick the yellow which can cause him trouble because he's stunning to the other one yeah that's what he's done just stuns into it yeah not perfect again but he's okay need to play this with quite a lot of side top and right hand side to try and get the white as close to where it is now as possible he really needs to be careful not to leave himself hampered queuing. Yeah, and because of that, he's looking at potentially playing three cushions. So side, bottom, back out. And this needs to run off this cushion. He's played that well. He's played that well. Just needed... Really wanted to be off that side cushion. He's jacking up a little bit here. And I think the angle he's got is, he, is he's stunning into... If he screws up table, he he's, he's almost looks like he's screwing into the black. Does he just top it through and take the black long? Rest on the yellow. Make sure of the pot. 
he's going to stun this. That's a great shot. That is a really good shot. Yeah, really top draw yeah. shot was that. A lot harder than it looked. Way harder. A little stun run through. Great shot from Dean Shims. Confidence is growing with every frame. Yeah, and these haven't been easy clearances. No. He's been slightly out of position. He's been asked a question on multiple occasions. Yeah. And he just keeps going. Keeps pulling the shots out. Keeps pushing through. Yeah, I think the mark of a great player is not always... You know, the, the, the way the balls come out and the way the table lies, you, you just, you, you're rarely going to have matches where you're not uh, having to dig yourself out of trouble and it's it's how you deal with that. That's where you show your character sometimes, running out of position, putting yourself under unnecessary pressure, but finding a way. Let's see over there, I think that's to go 7-6 to Craig Brown. Nice positional shot there on the black. Good friends, those two. Same neck of the woods. Now, Hibbert really needs to stop the rot. He's made a ball. Okay, so... He'll take it. He's at the table. He's really... Whether he takes reds or yellows, got one cluster that he needs to get into. And the black's not ideally positioned, but he'll take it. Hand on the table, it's made a ball. Yeah, but work to do once again for Gareth Hibbert. Yeah. He's breaking well. He's just, just not getting the splits. Yeah, I mean, you look there, you, what, what's he got? Ten balls in the top end, t uh, top half of the table. He's getting a really good connection on them, but you talk about pool gods and you uh and you throw a couple of chances away like Gareth did from three one up. Sometimes they come back to bite you. Yeah, and this eight ball, it's not easy where it is. Depends uh, what happens here when he tries to disturb this little cluster. Yeah, so so he tops in, say he tops into the, uh, the yellow and the red. He's going to be pushing the red into the black. And that's probably going to come out. It's all about getting the right pace on this. Doesn't want to, okay, that's he's just picking them off. Actually a very clever shot. So I think once he removes this one, the other one will then go into the middle. Is he looking off the black? Advanced. Very, very good. That's the thing. These top players, it's seeing stuff like that so quickly, you know, and having the vision to say, no, no, I don't need to break into it. Because nobody, you don't sort of golden rule when you first start playing and trying to play to a sort of higher level is you, you don't want to be smashing into balls and just trying to play cannons if it's not necessary. And uh, I think Gareth's one of these that always just backs himself to make a difficult pot as opposed to trying to go into something and doesn't want to trust the luck. No, but he needs a really good cue ball here. And and that's the problem. Yeah. He needed pinpoint position there. For me, if he was going to play that red off the black, and it was far from easy to control that, to get where he wanted to be. But he'd, he's way off where he, where he planned. Yeah. Not happy. Little punch of the table. Generally quite a calm mannered guy. It's Gareth, but so what's he do here? Is he trying to sit the, the white behind the yellow? He's gonna all out attack. I thought he may play off the edge of the red there, maybe sit behind the, the low yellow. Just uh, give his opponent something to think about. But he's gone the aggressive route. So the saving grace may well still be that black, the black eight on that cushion. But it is a potential double at the very least. So Yeah, it's gonna it's gonna feel for Dean as well, like, you know, this is this is becoming the theme of the match. I think f this is the fifth time in the last five frames where Gareth's got in first. Not had not had easy. 
uh, an easy finish to go at, but he's almost got there and just went out of position at a crucial stage. And he's kind of coming in and picking up the pieces. This yeah. one's not yeah. as easy as this last couple have been. He just tried to flick the yellow out there. Yeah. Just, just passed. Just slightly the wrong angle. It's not often you can have somebody like Gareth Hibbert on the ropes, so you really do need to make chances like this count. He's not going to keep on missing tricky clearances. He's got an angle now to go into the yellow if he wants to. It's on the side cushion, almost guaranteed to be on the other one. Yeah, you do feel that's that's the shot. Yeah. Just promote that yellow. Just drift. Yeah, so that's nicely done. He's probably probably about as bad as he could have been on this ball, but he's, he's still okay. That's been the theme, hasn't it, of a, a few of these clearances that he's uh, taken on on the back of a, a Gareth Hibbert mistake. He's been slightly out of position all the way, but he just keeps digging in, keeps making the balls. Yeah, that's all that matters. And it breeds confidence. See, has, he, has he got a good enough angle here to be able to get really close to the black? It's a really nicely controlled shot. Made that look a lot easier than it was. You can almost play this with a little bit of insurance if he brings the white back a little bit. So no, he's only leaving Gareth a plant if he misses. You don't really want to have that mindset, but it might just help you. Pocket speed. Yeah, just about there. Yeah, and that's what he did. You can see the cue ball. If he had missed that eight, he was leaving an awkward plant. So, commanding performance from Dean Shields. Taking every opportunity to put his way. 6-3 the lead. Yeah, only maybe half an hour ago he was 3-1 down. Hibbert looking like going 4-1. Yeah, and you don't often see Gareth making balls as he has been doing. And then struggling to clear on such a regular basis. Just not getting the splits that he needs. There we can see in the background Liam Dunster. So, Dean Shields to break once again with a very healthy 6-3 lead. Didn't seem to split very well there. Uh, he seemed to hit them okay for me, but they didn't uh, open. Let's just see on this rerun. Yeah, he hit those well. But the pack just didn't seem to split. Yeah, there's a good six or seven balls that just seem to not really move much in the middle of the middle of the pack there, and Gareth again in first uh, again, not gimmies. We'll see a little bit more about how this finish looks after that first shot. Still work to do, and plenty of it. Line up a plant. Another sort of fiddly clearance though, there's a lot that can go wrong. Update from the outside table, Corey Reese 4, Rich Swaffield 5. Another one that looks like going all the way. Liam Dunster's now 3-2 up on Jason Hill. Craig Brown 7-6 up on Chris Bowron. All these last 16 matches. See Gareth's fluent as he is, he's, he's taking his extension to just try and basically figure out what he wants to do. Yeah, does he screw this red in and, and release that ball? Or does he play the plant? So, 
tells you. The thing with playing this plant is the ball that is hitting will be drifting to the right, you feel. Yeah, it's almost like you play it either dead weight or you play it with a lot of pace. You yeah. Take the white up table. He's played that as well as he could, actually. That's, that's, that's pretty good. So it's just going to need one pinpoint positional shot to land on this plant into the bottom left-hand corner of the table. He's going to have the perfect ball to get onto it from. I think if he's... From how it looks, he can just screw... There you go. Exactly where he's pointing his cue is where he wants the white. Nowhere near as easy as these look controlling the pace on these lightning quick tables. Yeah, you beat me to it there. This is a lot harder than it looks to control. And that's a beautiful shot. If he doesn't catch the bump... Yeah, it's very good. Yeah, you couldn't play that any better. See, result last 16 now. Craig Brown's through to the quarterfinals. Beat Chris Bowe on 8-6. Now, Gareth, this is crucial. He needs to kill the cue ball. He'll be dragging this. He's to hold up. This is, that's not ideal. I think his line here needs to, needs to almost cheek the pocket and play this into, into the far jaw so that he can make sure the white comes up and that his line is almost this yellow on the left. He'd like to bump into it if he can. It's perfect. Perfect. Still, still not easy. No, yeah. no other woods yet, but. Yeah, he played the right hand side of the pocket, put a right hand spin on the cue ball just to get out. But it's a shot at this eight. He's going eight to middle. And it's there. Very good. Yeah, fantastic clearance, that. There's a lot of character shown there, especially the, the way these last five frames are gone. Chasing tricky, difficult clearances and not quite getting them. It's a lot of character shown from Gareth Hibbert, but you don't win what he's won without being able to dig deep in matches. Yeah, and Gareth's missed nothing easy. It's been a case of he's, he's he's had to try and chase difficult finishes. Tried to bump a couple of balls out and not really uh, had any result. And on the back of it, his opponent has just, well, he's punished him, hasn't he? Every opportunity. Yeah, had a couple of easy ones, but a couple of difficult clearances, but he's got them all. You see Rich Swaffield. You probably would call this an upset if you were to beat Corey Reese. Corey Reese is, has been, I think, I would say the most improved player on the tour the last couple of years. He's uh, turned into a consistent winner. I think he's won two or three, maybe even four um, IPA events. He won the big TV event uh, last year, 10,000 to the winner. He's won a couple of tours as well. Always at the business end. Yeah, I think uh, Richard Swaffield, though, the, the victory against Simon Ward uh, yesterday. He was well behind in that match. And I think that will give him a real boost. Yeah, they can, they can feel better than just trouncing somebody 8-1 sometimes if you dig deep and really does really do feel like you can kick on after that. It's all going to kick in on this. Uh, Gareth's made a ball. Yeah. And uh, he's in. Yeah, took that first yellow. Checked the cue ball back off the bottom cushion. And I think he's got the right angle here. Yeah, all just about. Like, the, the two at the bottom cover each other into the into the left middle, into the left corner. So it's about how he gets on them. Uh, and the one in the top right, is he going to stun across table now? Just trying to figure out how he wants to go about it. Ideally, if he'd have had more angle, he'd have punched across towards the right middle pocket next. It's a bit of a slack shot. It's the previous shot, if I'm honest. Normally he has the cue ball on a string. To the point where he might even be thinking about rerouting here. Topping through. 
Yeah, running through for the middle of those three yellows. Yeah. And this could end up working out quite nicely for him. Didn't plan this route, but... I always find that one of the hardest things to teach people. I've done a very small amount of coaching and teaching people to just kind of think on their feet and, you know, reroute if, if it goes wrong and you run out of position. A lot of experience came into it there from Gareth, just accepted that accepted that he ran out of position and uh, didn't dwell on it. Yeah, that's perfect. Well, this will take him just one frame behind in this match. What a match this has been. Yeah, it's had a bit of everything, this. Well, we've panned over to that table where Liam Dunster is uh, and Jason. And I don't know if I've seen Jason off that chair yet. Yeah, I think took two one up and started well. But there we go. He's, there he's out. He's out. Right. Biggest break of the match so far for Dean Shields. Desperately needs a ball. He's got a ball. Great break. It's a very good break. I think he's got I think he's got the red bottom left first up if he wants it. It's only really the, the, the red near the left middle pocket that's gonna cause him an issue. Yeah, you can't hit them much better than that. If anything, slightly unfortunate where the cue ball is. Any further up table. And they've had a multitude of options for his opening ball. Dean's taken his extension like you see a lot of players do. Very first shot after the break and have a study of the table, how he wants to go about the clearance. So in taking reds, the red on that side cushion it's going to be the problem, I would feel. That's very the good. The black. Look at the eight ball. Yeah, I think it does just go into that pocket that he's played the uh, the red into. But he's played a good, quite a ballsy first shot there from Dean um, at distance. But getting that yellow out first. So now that red does go into this corner, corner pocket. A curse, Dean, but I think th the these are the kind of clearances that he's probably better than most at. You know, it, it'll just land on the ball down the cushion, back himself to get it. Gareth plays a very similar style. He's played that well. Lovely control. Yes, he's got the option to top top the white through and maybe dislodge this red. I mean, if he can, if he can get, he'll know better than us. But if he can guarantee himself a half ball, yeah, that's good. Very good. So he's just completely 
uh, rubbished what I said about him that he's just going to land on it. But like we say a lot all the all the time, it's all about get, when you're going to go into your bad ball, you got to go into it if possible when you know you're guaranteed to be on a ball next and he's played that to perfection. Didn't quite play that to perfection, but he just got away with it, I think. Heart would have been in his mouth for a second there. So, just needs to be careful here if he plays it to middle. Just nudging to the red, pushing it down table. And it's going to be all about position on that last red to get to the eight. Yeah, anything but straight. Yeah, and he's a little bit straighter than he would have liked here. Yeah, he's, he's, he's kind of just off straight in the wrong way. He's uh, can't even screw all the way up the table and back down because the yellow's in the way. This is this is not ideal at all. Can he punch it off the side? Top and right. Really needs to get hold of this though. Really needs to get hold of it. Oh, has he got away with it? No. No. Not quite. You see Gareth's Gareth just moved in the background there as it as the white flicked into the black. You can see he was kinda yeah, you know, don't nudge it too much. He just wanted to see if it came out, and it's not. It's kind of it rolls reversed again, really. We've seen Gareth do this a couple of times. Yeah, I think it was a big ask there, trying to run through to get on the eight. He's going for the double. 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 No, it's not there. It's not there. It's not there. But he's got pressure on. Uh, on put pressure on Gareth here. This ball goes to middle. To be fair, there is a route here, isn't there? There yeah, is a route. He's just made it that little bit more difficult by leaving the black over that corner pocket. So uh, a couple of these yellows that would probably have gone into that corner can't. And he also put that yellow on the side cushion, top left of the table. So there's pressure on this. He's landed well there, though, hasn't he? Yeah. The play to corner. He could come back two cushions if he chooses. Yeah, I think his plan will be to play the one down the cushion last. Yeah, so he's come back out. Left himself either ball, in effect. Yeah, and it's all about just getting as close to this last yellow as possible. You don't want to be playing this from distance. It's a nice natural angle, this. A tracer right-hand side. You want to take it as close to this left middle pocket as you can. Yeah, and close to the cushion, usually, but he's left a little angle here. He's a great single ball potter, is Gareth Hibbert. You're backing for this. Oh, yeah, he's played it, played it well. Yeah, and there was pressure on that finish with the eight ball over the corner. Six each, huge frame there, absolutely massive. Yeah, Dean Shields didn't quite get on that last ball to get to the eight. Didn't quite have the angle required. Looked like he maybe could have tried to punch it off the side, but elected to go forward. Two cushions with side spin. Very difficult to get out and get onto the eight as intended. And unfortunately, he managed to move it. But it blocked. It was blocked from the pocket by the yellow. Just literally needed the extra extra ounce of speed. If that black just pops itself out another inch, he's perfect. He's seven five. And he's on the hill. Yeah, and then he tried to play a double. And at least he left it in front of the pocket, putting some pressure on his opponent. But it wasn't enough. Gareth Hibbert has levelled this match at six apiece. Massive hit there. Massive hit from Gareth. Made a red. Back on the side cushion. Yeah, in the same position it was a couple of frames ago. Just below middle. 
Yeah, not the hardest clearance he's ever going to be faced with, but far from the easiest. So it's the opening ball that counts here. It's a tricky route, is this? Is he, is he thinking about playing the one that he's closest to? Cutting it down the cushion? Surely not. No, no. it's going yellows. Going yellows. It's nicely played. I think the black's a little bit off the cushion. I think the probably got it in his head that he's going to be doubling the black into the middle. Yeah, I don't think he's got much option there. With the reds where they are, yeah. difficult to land on it to play into the corner, that's for certain. Yeah. So now, can he... bit of bottom left-hand side... I think his line's probably going to be to go in between the red and the yellow. But if he does flick the red, it should come out okay. As long as he plays it at the right pace. Yeah. And he's just shown you there with his cue where he wants to be. The next yellow key. Elected to play two cushions. That's a great shot. Yeah. It's Very well executed. Great shot to kill the cue ball the way he's done there on this on these super fine cloths. It's a very good shot. Yeah, he will be looking to uh, double the eight ball here. Like so. Not, not close enough to the... Uh, he would have loved for the cue ball to have been six inches to the right of where it is now so he could have played the one into the bottom right corner next it still should be fine just needs a tiny bit of angle I think that's just about okay didn't seem too happy with it but I think he had a kick there but he's okay So, he's screwing this ball into corner. Back out for the yellow to middle. He just wants to make sure he can get the right angle to leave this double. And that's what he's done. He needs to just run a little bit further to be perfect. Yeah, it's not, it's not great that, because no. it, it, you ideally want the white to be... Because I think that black's quite close. You, wanna, you don't want to be bringing the double kiss into play. Okay. I, I don't think that's great. No, he's a little low. Can he just drop this in? I don't know if he's enough of the pocket just to drop it. Well, he didn't feel so, so... Well, what was he doing here? Was he leaving a cross double and he's not gone far enough? I, I don't know. This has got double kiss written all over, hasn't it? What's he doing? I think he was coming down to leave yeah, the cross double. I think he must have been. You, you, you bang on, he's just, he's just under hit it. twist in this frame double in the corner <laughs> tried to drag it into well, the middle it never looked on to me I think that was a little bit of desperation trying to cut that in the middle to be honest yeah I, I don't I don't think it was impossible but it's a really low percentage shot I think he just he just I don't think he had much of a choice he, he knew the double kiss was going to happen he couldn't double it into the corner uh, it was the third to last yellow where he felt he had a kick. Didn't quite get the position he was looking for. Yeah. Now for Dean, this is uh, a carbon copy of the previous frame. Black over the pocket. Gareth came to the table with uh, a, a, a difficult finish. 
Okay, so looks looks bad. I think it looks worse than it is. He's on a double to the middle. Play it with a bit of top left. Swing it round two cushions. These are quite easy doubles into the middle. Is he playing the snooker? He is. He is. Okay. Another twist. One thing he's got going from here is the, the, the middle pockets in the way of the one cushion escape as a natural. So he's going two cushions. This isn't far off. Oh Trust wow. me, this isn't far off. Oh, wow. What an effort that was. What an effort. I think if, if if Dean doesn't win this frame, I think he's gonna. There's gonna be part of him that's gonna be. Maybe regretting not playing that double. Talking of doubles. Yeah, had a big that cue ball. ball. <sighs> you can feel the tension out there. Once again, just not in perfect position. He keeps finding the shots, doesn't he? Keeps digging them out. That's a good shot. It's a very good shot. Again, on the side cushion, though. Nothing coming easy for Dean Shields. But every time he's asked the question, he's produced the goods to press. So, no gimme. This is for a lead, 7 6. It's great there. shot. Great shot down the cushion. And yeah. once again, he's yeah. taken this frame from Gareth Hibbert. Got his opportunity. I think he's done well there, Dean. Is is the the last three or four balls he had. He's just played them, not casually, but played them at a decent pace. He's just got on with it. You know, he's he's had three uh, tricky pots in a row. Uh, four, actually, the double. Yeah, you know, the double was a good shot. Yeah, he's just played ballsy pull. A lot of bottles shown there from Dean. Didn't overthink anything, just got on with it. Backed himself to make the big shots. Corey Reese with Swaffield, five each now. Proper tussle. Liam Dunster, five, three up on Jason Hill. Mark Boyle, two, one up on Andrew McKee. So, Dean Shields to break once again. No cut breaks in this match. He's hit them really well. Yeah, really well. Parked the white middle of the table. It got just bumped, I think, up, up, up table a little bit. Which means that... Um, I don't think he's on a yellow first up. Maybe you can see a gap to the one to the corner. Not yeah. an easy clearance. No, it's not, but it was a great cue ball. Great control break. Fantastic timing. Not the kindest of splits, to be fair. You'd expect better on any given day when things are running for you. You'd expect a better split than that. Yeah. This is a bit of a mess, to be honest. I think if you can position the white well enough, that can you go into the black and red now by playing this first red into the middle? And then, okay, so he's taking this. That's a great piece of queuing. He's, he's sort of cursed his luck there because I think he's trying to flick the red on the way back out, but. 
if, if you can play the one into the bottom left corner this at the bottom of the table and drift the white up and almost cannon the middle of the three yellows he'll be on that red I don't think it's as bad as he might think it's not easy no and Dean's not afraid to take the difficult ball on to choose his colour set is he no you know he doesn't take the ease. a lot of players would take, make sure they get the right suit and then uh, work after it he doesn't mind taking on that difficult first shot and his percentage of success when doing so it's impressive See, and the red closest to the black does go into the right middle although it is a tight angle it is an acute angle but let's just see Dean's looking there I think once he plays this one into the corner if he arcs the white a little bit I think it will just, just slip by the yellow this is a toughie though to control oh he played that well what a great effort that was, but unfortunately not as desired. Although I do believe he can still get where he needs to be here. Yeah, it's an ultra thin cut, but it, it, it it's is the hard. line. Yeah, the line's still there, but this ball is going to be travelling almost to the point where it's, does he play it off the yellow? Yeah, I think he's looking yeah. at it. He hasn't got much time, and he also needs to worry about where the cue ball's going and the black. It's all on this shot. He's played what it well. What a shot that was. He, 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 that's about as much as he could have... That's about as well as he could have wished for, really. What a horrible shot he's faced with now into the middle. Yeah, the only good news is the cue ball, natural path. It's 100% concentrate on the pot, but this is a tough pot to middle. Test of nerve. That what is, a what shot a that is. shot, Dean Shields. What a finish. That is impressive. That is absolutely superb. Yeah, great performance from Dean Shields. Really is at the top of his game. Some fantastic reverse clearances. On the back of a, a few, well, you can't even say positional errors from uh, Gareth Hibbert. A couple of those frames, just awkward layouts, trying to bump balls out. And uh, just not working out for him. But Dean Shields at every opportunity. Yeah, top class. Absolutely fantastic performance. And he'll be highly delighted, I'm sure. So we'll just have a, a short break before we move on to the uh, studio. Just bear with us.
Good afternoon and welcome back to day two here in the Isle of Man. Uh, firstly, apologies about the, uh, the delay in the opening of the show. Uh, we had a few technical difficulties, but uh, we seem to be on top of them now. And uh, hopefully you caught the, the final stages of our first match between Dean Shields and uh, Gareth Hibbert, which you know has turned out to be a fantastic match. And uh, hopefully all the problems are all sorted. There weren't no technical issues with uh, some of your game playing today. You've you got to be pretty pleased with that performance, Dean. Yeah, yeah, pretty happy. Um, I think I went about a couple of finishes in the complete wrong order, but I managed to get them. Um, yeah, just feeling good at the moment. And at the start of the match, you know, you you weren't really, you know, really going at it straight from the start. Mm. I mean, you found yourself 3-1 down against a former world champion and a very close friend of yours, Gareth Hibbert. And did you sort of, what did you do, try to hang in there? Um, well, I was 3-1 down, but I'd only missed one ball. So I was looking and thinking... If I get a chance, it's only one one break of serve, if you like. You know, it's get one chance, you're back in it. And when that's actually how it happened, I, went, I came back to three all. I think I went five or six three up then. Six three it was, yeah. yeah. Six three up. So he, he swings around about. I think Gaz then came back at me. It's just you just got to hang in there and keep focused. And then got back to six all. Mm. Did you think you was, you know, possibility of going down to, I mean, you went down to a best of three, but was it going to be a last frame decider or did you want to really keep away from that? Uh, well, yeah, clearly. But I mean, when it's, when it's six all, you know, I'm I'm thinking, I, I, I'll take a decider. You know, because he, he had the break in the 13th and the decider if it went there. So, you know, I'd, I'd have took that all day long. So to get the chance there to to take it out before going to a decider was ideal. And a little bit about the Isle of Man venue. You always do okay here, don't you? Yeah, it's you one of my favourite ones. It's one of your favourite ones. Just mm. tell the audience, obviously, the yeah, you know, I, our I new audience. I don't know what it is. I don't. Know. It's just I seem to be uh, just comfortable here. You know, it's I think obviously everyone. I think with other venues, you, you might get people that might go out somewhere else for food, whatever. But everyone seems to stay on site, you know, uh, or even even if, even if they're uh, going out, they, they're all, the hub seems to be back here. So I think it's just a, a good vibe here, you know. And yeah, I don't know, I just just generally enjoy the enjoy the weekend. And have you looked at the draw at all? No. Or? Okay, well, not got a clue. I think you're going to be playing the winner of the Corey Reese Richard Twaffield match, and all I right. think that is level at five all the last time okay. I looked. So uh, I know you are playing around the corner. I'm sure you are be looking into it. You. But you're into the quarterfinals. Yes. You're the second person into the quarterfinals. Craig Brown was the first one. So you've got to be pleased so far. One match at yeah. a time. Yeah, definitely. Just. Just keep going. Well, thanks very much, Dean. We'll let you prepare for that quarter final, and uh, who knows, we might see you here in the final Hopefully. tonight. Thank you very much. Well done, Dean. Well, that's Dean Shields safely into the quarter finals, and uh, we're going to have another last 16 match just coming up. And uh, just before we do, I'm going to have a, a little chat with our, uh, well, our commentator, Dan Davy. Dan, what a great match that was. Very good match. It had a bit of everything, didn't it? It was. Uh I think the first three were off the break, breaking finishes, a couple of mistakes in the middle, a Gareth chasing some difficult clearances and not getting them, and then rolls reversed, made a comeback, it had everything. And a, what a finish at the end from Dean, what a finish. Yeah. I think a big turning point was, well, I say turning point, but at six each, Gareth should have left himself a double on the black and he just ran out of position, the shot before, so couldn't quite leave it where he wanted to, but um, there's a lot of tension out there, wasn't there? And I think Dean just, in that match, held it, held himself together a little bit better than Gareth did. And both of them players, you know, they've got like a lot of respect for each other, and uh, they're obviously close friends. You know, the world double champions back in 2016. I don't know it's many moons ago, but uh, you know, they're still very, very close. Yeah, yeah, good friends. I think sometimes that, sometimes it can make it easier. Sometimes it can make it more difficult. Um, but yeah, they put on a great show, and it was a great match. And. Um, the the oh, the last ball that Dean's played into the middle, I can't. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if it came across from from the angle, but from from the what you were watching at home. But the level of difficulty to play that shot, dead weight into such an acute pop, uh, acute angle, queuing off the cushion under that pressure, and he's just floated it in as if he's just practicing. Great. And you know, if Dean does continue with some of that form, you know, he's going to be a tough one to beat. And yeah, who knows, yeah, yeah. he could yeah. be picking up that trophy. Could, you yeah. said earlier on, he comes to me, you know, he, he, he's due overdue, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he calls himself the Jimmy Whitepool. <laughs> Just, you know, gets the finals and loses them. And uh, takes a mick out of himself for it. But I think, jokes aside, you, you, you can get to, you, you, might, you might have a lesser player or a lower ranked player get to a a quarter-final, maybe a semi-final now and again. 
if you, you don't get to that many finals unless you're easily good enough to win one. So he's good enough. It's just a case of when. When. And then we'll just talk about another final that it will be happening tonight with the ladies elite final. I mean, Deb Birchall, she's already into the final. She beat Ashley Bird seven frames of three. The other semi-final, that's all underway now. Rachel Tucker, who won the last event. She's playing Beck Sweeney. I think the, the latest score was 1-0 to Rachel Tucker. And that's going to be a nice, tasty clash as well. Whoever wins that one to play Deb Birchall. You know, she's been in three of the four elite finals. Uh, you know, that's some superb form. Yeah, great form. Um, I think as well, you probably, uh, without stating the obvious, you probably have to say that Deb's going to be favourite no matter who she comes up against in that final. Um, Two-time world champion, back-to-back uh, -back world titles, Deb won uh, on the IPA. So um, continuing her good form, and I think, yeah, she's definitely definitely going to be slight favourite. Not a massive favourite, but she'll be slight favourite in that final, whoever she comes up against. And this match now... Gavin Robinson against Ross Fernie. This one's got everything in it, and it is a really good chance of seeing everything in this one as well. Yeah, good attacking players. Um, Ross Fernie's now one. I'm starting to lose count. It might be three, might be four, might be five. I don't know. He always Probably does well in the pro event, doesn't he? He does well in the pro event. He's won many pro event titles, multiple pro event um, titles. Uh, Gav yet to win one, but keeps knocking on the door. Um, Gav, like quite a ballsy character, can... You know, likes to get himself stuck into to anybody. Doesn't fear anybody. Uh, very attacking. Doesn't you know, lives on the table. Self-proclaimed. You know, plays a lot um, and reaps the benefits of that. So yeah, great match. And we saw you know Gavin play yesterday and uh, two years ago we'd have probably lost that match. But he seems to have matured a little bit now and uh, he seems to have now moved on to a different level. And uh, you know if he can you know produce some of that mentality again, he's got a good chance of going far and deep in this tournament. I think that's it. Yeah, it's all about just uh, all about just um, keeping it together when it matters and uh, doing it consistently. Okay, well, we're going to hand over to the comms now with Andy Richardson, and uh, we're going to get this match underway. And I know that you're going to be in there uh, assisting him, Dan. Yeah, Thanks very much for that. Over. Yep. Thanks, Mark. So, next match up: Ross Fernie, Gavin Robinson. Another belting lineup. Both, as you said earlier, Mark, very, very attacking players. Ross Fernie. On paper, would be favourite in this match, I'm sure. But Gav Robinson played so well in his previous match. This has the makings of a fantastic match. That's for sure. So, balls down on the break. And the good news is, no clusters for Ross Fernick. Yellow's looking good here. There is one bad red on the side cushion. But these yellows are there for the taking. And this is the sort of start you want. Yeah, it's hard to see where he can go wrong here. It's all about taking the balls in the right order. But... um. You'd pay big money to have that split every time. Yeah, it's quite ironic. The previous match, I don't think we saw a split like this. I think every split was a, a little bit messy, wasn't it? Yeah, it goes like that sometimes. And um, I've said this quite a few times before. It You can have matches sometimes, you know, where people say, oh, I, uh, I won 6-2 and... Uh, I did five off the break, but sometimes, you know, four of those five finishes were, were easy, and you really should be getting them, you know, and there's other times where you'd only clear twice off the break in a race to six, and you had to work really hard for him. Um, Ross here, just, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, he's, he's fine, he's making his way through it, I, I don't know, I don't know if it, yeah, I think we'd have gone the other way there. I think yeah. we're both looking at each other. I think we'd have took the balls in a slightly different order, but... Yeah, I'd have rather take the, uh, the the last ball he potted as his last yellow, I feel. Yeah. I Played this before it, but uh, he's confident enough. Should be no issue. 
A little bit of side spin just to come back off the bottom cushion. So, didn't make any difference. And uh, that's him settled into the match. Yeah, perfect start. Break and run. Nice easy layout. We say easy. You've got to take him in the right order. And you're under massive pressure out there on this stream table. So, um, Mark just alluded to the fact that he seems to do well in pro events, but not opens. Do you think, and, he, and he does. I think. I think he's won. I think it's four. I might be wrong. So I, I, I'm. I'm. I'm guessing. But it's. It's. It's three, four, or five pro events that Ross Fernie's won now. Um. But, but I don't think he's won at all. I mean, that's a that's a bit odd, isn't it? Really. Yeah, it's an interesting stat, that isn't it? Yeah. It's as if he. It's as if he really rises to it when he plays the better players. Yeah, and uh, I wonder when he has lost in the opens, has it been predominantly a professional player that's. I mean, yeah. you would think so, wouldn't you? Purely on the the principle that the the professional are the stronger players in the on tour. But uh, yeah, does he not get up for the matches quite the? I don't know. Is it something psychological? Maybe yeah. it is odd. Yeah, it is. And once again, the eight ball on that side cushion seems to like it over there. Yeah. See the cut break from Gav. But nothing down. Yeah, nothing down, but a nice split. That's the problem. Yeah, I think reds reds aren't too bad here. They've all got a pocket. It's, um, nothing needs to be dislodged. It's just a case of, uh, uh, of of getting as close to that left middle pocket as possible for the eight ball into the top left corner. But a good chance this for us. Yeah, just needs to screw out of this corner. He's going to work his way back up table. Taking this other red. To corner. And you can see there that, that eight ball. He'll be playing that into that pocket. Down where the two yellows are. And if for any reason he does miss it. There's a very good chance he'll block those two yellows. Yeah, that's pretty good. So I think I think his route now is the three on the right hand side of the table. And then you've got the red into the left middle. And uh just leave yourself the angle on the one into the bottom left corner. Just all about getting as close to that left middle pocket as possible. Yeah, and ideally not too much angle. So that's what I'd be looking at. Yeah, that's not ideal. I think he he, he might change his route now, but um he, he could also go bottom right, then bottom left, and leave the one in the middle until last, because he'll have a good ball to get on it from, but yeah, it doesn't look like he is. Go middle. <laughs> There's a multitude of ways. He can do all sorts here. Yeah. So. Just all about, the key thing is just a, a good angle on your last red to get as close to that black as possible. Yeah. The only issue going this way is the line. So he plays this to middle. And now he needs a good pace here. Yeah, so I just think needs to be careful. Yeah, I mean, where he is now would be ideal. If he can get back there, he's perfect. Yeah, that, that that's perfect. He's just off straight. Absolutely spot on. So, he'll be going up, as you said, Dan, towards that middle pocket. Just before it. Somewhere near that cushion, more or less straight in, is what he'll be looking at. Just a little angle. Yeah. Would have liked to have been a little bit closer than this, but you, you don't want to... You, you know, you've you got to back yourself to get these. You don't want to risk going towards the jaw or in the middle pocket. You've seen that happen a few times before. Yeah, and there we go. So, he's making short work of this so far. Ross Fernie. Great break and run first frame. 
You have Robinson. Cut break. Great split, but nothing down. And on the back of it, his opponent. Well, another fairly straightforward clearance, it has to be said. But uh, clinical. Not really done anything wrong, Gavin Robinson. Right, Cut break. Nothing down. It's a tough, it's a tough school out there. Is indeed. It's, uh, we've just seen there as well. Liam Dunster's now through eight three against Jason Hill. Mark Boyle five one up on uh, Andrew McKee. And uh, Corey Reese and Rich Swaffield six five to Rich. One looks like it's going all the way. It's just gone to six all now, so that's Corey breaking off at six each. Let's have a look at this break. Well, hit him. He's hitting well. Oh, yeah. Well, that's the first time I've seen that this weekend. Somebody to make the eight off the break. I don't think I've... Yeah, I think I've just been informed there were a couple before I arrived. But that's the first one I've seen in live play. Yeah, I think you don't get it as often on uh, on the front ball break. So Craig Brown had a couple against me yesterday, but he was using the cut break. I think you um, get a lot more action on that. You see the black there, for example. Just it rarely moves. But, um, so anyway, dry break from Ross. He hit them well though. He hit them very well, but nothing down. Uh, luckily for Ross, he hasn't really left much at all. Yeah, that is the good news. Dry, but nothing for his opponent. Gav Robinson really needs to... He needs an opportunity, doesn't he? Yeah, it just needs to be patient. Easier said than done when you're 2-0 down and haven't had, a, haven't had a poke yet. So, elects to just uh, separate those two reds. Takes cue ball back up to the bottom cushion. Bought cushion. Ross doesn't like it, so just plays another shot there, just opening things up slightly, dangling the carrot. Yeah, and, and I think one that, that that Gav might be tempted to go for here, whether it be the cut on the yellow into the middle, uh, the long red. This, you know, he'd have got many clearances more difficult than this in his career. Yeah, you feel the cut to middle is the right shot, don't you? Oh, and he's missed it. Yeah, oh dear. Yeah, you feel he had to take that on. Good opportunity. Yeah. And I fancied him for it, I must be honest. Didn't expect him to miss it. It was far from easy. But it's the sort of ball that we used to see Gavin uh, make. Not the best of starts for Gavin, but uh, that was his first opportunity. So... Tough cut to middle. And these aren't easy. No, he's going to have... Uh, I think he will. Just, I think he just wanted to come a little bit further. And he'd have had the perfect angle there, like a natural angle to, to play this yellow in the middle and just bump that red out of the way, which would have completely opened it up. It may be okay, though, you know. You think he maybe could still play it? Runs into the side of the eight and just nudges forward to the to the yellow. Yeah, I think so. I think just playing yeah. it quite softly is yeah. probably key here. That's it. Just roll through. Right. Well, he could hit the yellow direct. There you go. It'll do him. He'll take that. Not out of the woods yet, but it's slowly but surely becoming a, a clearance that it looks like he's going to get. Yeah, I think the key ball here is the yellow just above the eight. Position on that for position on his last yellow. Yeah, if he could land straight, dead straight on this yellow in the in the left middle, he's as good as out. Uh, 
a little bit short. Yeah, but even Lowe's not too bad. No. Easy enough to get up table. You'd feel he's going to have some sort of decent shot on this yellow. But yeah, he would have liked to have been straight. You see shots like that, just how crucial it is to have that white ball on a string. You know, your average player down the pub won't really understand why that was a bad shot or why that shot was so important. But if he's dead straight on that, he, he tops the white through um, an inch or two and he's, he's, he's already sat down. As it is, he's got a player shot here. So, it's quite nicely done. I think... I think he's off straight enough to be able to screw just below the middle pocket and back out, but maybe not. So he might just have to leave it a distance and play it in the left corner. Yeah, and this won't be the eight he was looking for when he set off on this clearance. But because he didn't land on that second last yellow straight as intended, it's as we uh, discussed earlier. Had to reroute. And this is harder than it uh, needed to be. Slightly hampered queuing as well, but you don't mind them at 2 0 up. Smooth as you like. Yeah, never in doubt. So, 3 0 the lead in this professional last 16 matchup. As ever, a race to eight. And yeah, it's been faultless really, apart from that positional shot. If we were ultra critical, we'd say maybe you should have been straight on it, but uh, he rerouted. Yeah, like a lot of the good players do. That you know, you, you never have a, the cue ball on a string for an entire match. The odd person does now and again, but um, that's a huge part of it. Is is just digging out the clearances when you you know things go wrong and you put unnecessary pressure on yourself, but. That's why he's won quite a few pro titles. 3 0 in, in, in what, 10 minutes? Yeah. Needs a frame on the board, Gav. Yeah, Gavin's dry break first frame was uh, massive, wasn't it? That's a good break. It's a good break. White straight back down the table. No danger of that going in off. And if that, yeah, yep, sorry, Dan. If that yellow goes to middle. The only issue might be if he was to try and play it early is can he get out to get onto another ball? Yeah, it's one of them. It definitely goes. Um, but like, like you say, it, you're going to have to really play it softly, aren't you? Yeah. I think that the yellow just below the black actually does go clean if you can position the cue ball exactly where you want. Otherwise, it's a very easy plant and, and, and you're probably going to be able to get the first yellow away from it. But main issue is that one, like you say, over by the left middle. Rich Swaffield 7-6 up on Corey Reese. Looking to take his second Welsh scalp in a row after beating Simon Ward yesterday. So he's going to run this through. Well, he's come up short there. Not as intended. I was looking to come back out there a little bit further. Yeah, it's, it's still not all lost. I mean, it, it, if it does go into the bottom left corner, then I, I, I fancy him to get it. Otherwise, he can play the plant now, three ball plant, um, on either of the two yellows that are in the middle of the table. I think it looks like he's going for the cut still. Well, I, I thought it was thin. I mean, I don't think it was impossible, but he's got down and played it a bit casual as if it was... A lot easier than it was. Ross back at the table, but 
not a lot on. No, and uh, fortunately there for Gavin, he kicked that red over. So, tiny bit of insurance. Ross looking to play a safety. Maybe flick off that red that Gav's just put safe. And if he gets it right, he's going to be flirting with the uh, flirting with the top left corner pocket. But it's almost worth the risk. Yeah, double it back. And it was all about the cue ball in that particular visit. Yeah, so... and. and, and Treat this as a worst case scenario. I, I think he hasn't left. I don't think he's left the cut in the middle. Um, okay, maybe maybe he has. So, plant in the middle does go. Problem's going to be what's he on after that. So, maybe we'll see him take the yellow into the. Uh, Top corner pocket. Slightly more difficult pot. Yeah. But, uh, could have been kinder, I feel, there. Yeah, definitely could have been. And a bit of pressure on this at 3-0 down. He's played it well. Played it very well. Well, he's taking this one first, by the look of it. I thought he may have gone the other way. Yeah, yeah me too, but um, I mean, fair enough. Yeah. Anyway, he made it. But he's just got to cut this back to middle. And it's there. So that frame that he desperately needed is on the, on the scoreboard. 3-1. Game on. Just for a second there, we had 4-0 on the scoreboard, but uh, rectified, 3-1 as it stands. And he'll feel better for taking his first frame. Craig Marsh taking the first frame against Nathan Bridges as well. Mark Boyle has just gone to 2-0, actually. Mark Boyle 5-1 up on Andrew McKee. Spoke about the ladies tournament as well. Rachel Tucker's now 3-1 up on Beck Sweeney. Beck Sweeney is, uh, for those that you don't know, Corey Reese's partner. And uh, Rachel Tucker is Deb Birchall's partner. She could be playing her in the final. Wow. That's, uh, that's an error from Ross Fernie there. That's a bad break. Straight it off. No, nothing, no luck about that. Wasn't kicked in off. Just the chance that Gav Robinson needed. And uh, the, the, these, are, these are a good split. Yeah, this is a very good split. At an opportune time for Gavin Robinson. So, two yellows at the, the uh, bottom end of the table. Ball cushion. Not the easiest, but look at these reds. There's a pocket for all of them. Just needs to pay attention to the red. To the right of screen there, near the middle pocket. It goes in the corner, no issue. It's just about how he links them together, really. They're, they're all there. It's just it's just what order he takes them in. And because they're sort of almost so in the open, you, you've got quite a lot of options as to how you want to how you could go about it. And yeah. There's sometimes the ones where, as you see, Gav's took his, uh, taking his extension first up there just to figure out, try and map his route out. Yeah, it's an easy enough route though, this. You can see, ball to middle. You can go ball to middle again. 
If he chooses, he could run through slightly. And that th the red that I was alluding to near the yellow he could take it next if he chooses. So this ball to middle if he, if he wants to. Yeah, I think that's the right thing to do. Just going to need to play a couple of sort of pinpoint positional shots. The uh, red on the left-hand side of the table to get back over straight on the one in the right-hand side of the table. So this is where it can go wrong, these next couple of shots, but I'm sure it'll be fine. Yeah, a couple of ways of playing this. Yeah, he has an angle here. He could even go back across table if he so chooses. For the red left hand side next. I think that's what he's done. Just wants a little angle. She has. Yeah, I think that's about right. Um not ideal, you'd like to be a little bit closer to it or but she needs the cue ball back at least where it is now, ideally just to the right of it. And he's uh, and he's perfect, but you don't want to go too far. Yeah, he doesn't want to be too low on this next red. That would be his issue. And yeah, it's not ideal. He would like to have been, as you say, down further right with yeah. that cue ball. Yeah, he, he's under hit that by a good four or five inches there. And this is where you're you now playing like a dead... I mean, can he drag it? I don't know if he can quite get there. Um, I think he'd like to drag it, drag this in. Try and hold for as straight as possible. Well, he's, I don't know what's happened there, but... Does it pass into this bottom right corner? I, don't know. It, I think it must do the way he played it, but... Uh, if it does, I don't know if he's got a full pocket there, but... Yeah, I did think he might have dragged that as you did. Maybe the angle wasn't there. We don't have the same perspective as the player does at the table. But either way, he's not quite where he wanted to be. So if this red does pass, he's just got to try and drop this in and hold. He doesn't want to fly behind the yellow. And I think he's played that well. He's played it as well as he could, yeah. Yeah, I mean, the red's only just reached the pocket and uh, the, the white's just about held up and not snookered himself on the black. So one of these clearances we're on about before where you just run out of position, but you still dig it out. Yeah, good recovery. Good nerve settler, those. Put yourself under unnecessary pressure, but... Find a way. Gav Robinson's right back in this match. I think Ross Fernie has just gone for a comfort break. So we'll just pan back out to the uh, other pro tables in action. Corey Reese on the left there, just dying up a plant by the look of it. Crucial, crucial times in that match. Looks like the red that's closest to the cue ball doesn't go either. Well, obviously, it's tough for us to see from here, but looks really like Rich was probably in first in that frame. There's only four yellows left. Has he blown his chance? Yeah. What does Corey do with the red that he's stood near? That's the question. Does he try and get back up there now? Is he? Well, he's got the plant. Oh, look at that. He doesn't like it. He's gutted. The red has flown round the table behind the eight. Things are getting harder. This will be some finish if he gets these. Looking at cutting that in the middle and uh, just swinging around the angles. I mean, it could be a couple of minutes before he plays this shot. I've no idea what he'd do here. 
He keeps looking at an angle for a, for red to middle at some point. Is he looking at the double? If he can leave the cue ball where it is, maybe he can go in and disturb the the red near the yellow where the yeah uh, yellow's got the pocket covered. Yeah, I think that's what he's looking at. But what a tough finish this would be. And his opponent's on the hill, which makes it even uh, more critical. So he's playing the other double, with the look of it. Well, that's the first part of the equation. We keep you updated on that. But um, back to the main table, Gav Robinson on the comeback trail. Bit of decent break there. Just about made a red. Just about. Didn't hammer them, but timed them well. Got a decent split. Didn't seem to put an awful lot into it. Just a firm sort of punch. Yeah, and that red looked like it was going to hang. But thankfully, for Gavin Robinson, it dropped. And I think once he removes the first red into the top right corner, I think that means that the other one goes closest to the right middle. So, not an easy finish, but not too difficult. Yeah, could take that red first, which I think he's going to do. So this will free up the other difficult red. Doesn't want to nudge that behind the other one. Well, not ideal. Not ideal. So, as we often uh, mention, it's about rerouting. Just have to change his plans. Now he could elect to come back into these two reds. Yeah, and he has done. And I don't blame him for that. He's played that well. Yeah. Played it well. Yeah, on the face of it, it doesn't look completely ideal, but because it doesn't go into either of the middles, but he, he's, he's perfect to just stop the cue ball and uh, leave himself straight into the bottom right corner. They all link up quite nicely now, so just about... Keeping tight cue ball control, and uh, actually, he's nearly there. Yeah, if he could just run this through. Second to last ball. Could be the higher of the three reds as we look. And that would leave him... Good position on his final red to get onto the eight. So he's decided to run further through and take the lower of the two reds. But that is not what he intended. No, I mean, he's, he's over hit that by uh, six inches. Yeah, I thought he may have played for the other red. He had, he had an option there. Yeah, I think that was the thing to do. Yeah, I think maybe he did. He certainly ran through much further than he intended. So, this red goes to middle. He's going to have to invent something here. Well, he'll take that. Wow. He'll take that. Wow, I mean, has he played that? I think he has, hasn't he? Well, he certainly played that direction. He put right-hand spin off the side. Yeah. He had to be going in that direction. I, f I think. I think he may have thought he may have hit something going through, but... Innocent till proven guilty. Let's, uh, let's, yeah. give, let's give him the credit. He was always going to knock that in when he after that. What a finish. Just digging them out. Yeah, what a recovery. And there we have it. Three apiece. No quit in Gav Robinson. So watch this, bottom right hand side. Yeah, he's had to play the gap there, Dan. There's no other, it. no other, no other explanation for that shot. No, he's played it. Played the gap, found it. 
Yeah, very, very good shot. That's off. And when you think he was, what, was he 3 0 down in this match? 3 0 down. Yeah. yeah, done nothing wrong. You see, the, these last two clearances that Gav's taken as we just swing by to Corey, I think, is this still the same visit? Is he, is he still digging? What a finish this will be. I mean, either way, he's at the table. Is he looking at a double? Yeah, I think it's got to be the same finish because that yellow is in the same position near the middle, the, the yeah. trickier one. I mean, this would be unbelievable. If he doesn't get it, no, he hasn't. And look at these. Look at the yellows now for Rich. Yeah. It's your best chance you're going to have to get into the quarters. Now's the time. Well, he's made a ball. Not the tidiest of cue balls on this break. Just see this again. No, yeah, it was, was flying all over the place, but he's made a ball and the reds are pretty good. Yeah, the reds are pretty good. And the yellows, should anything go wrong, are not particularly good, are they? Two yellows on the left-hand side cushion. Yeah, so he wouldn't be leaving it. anything easy should he uh, not be successful on this clearance. These reds look good. He yeah, couldn't have asked for much more. Made a ball, got a good chance. Not too difficult. From 3 0 up and uh, being pegged back to 3 each, it's exactly what he needed. Yeah, no clusters, no yellows to ne negotiate. Takes these two reds at the top of the table. Moves his work to the other half. He's looking great here. Look at that. This is one of the key shots. Wants to get back out, sort of centre of the table, really. He's cued that well. Cued that really well. So, elected to take his second last red to middle. There were a couple of options there. Could have taken the lower of these two. Left this ball he's playing now to last. Yeah, I don't know if he's perfect there, but a lot of top left-hand side. I think the line is make sure you get the cue ball high enough. I think he's fine. You almost want to be playing into the yellow or, or inside of it. Just make sure you get enough on there. That's perfect, isn't it? Yeah, yeah he struck that very well. Spot on. That yellow could have been an issue. Extreme side. Just to make sure that he caught the back of it. Couldn't afford to run past it. And he's regained the lead. 4-3, here we go. Set for another match that twos and froze. Perfect pull at the start from Ross Fernie. Couple of mistakes then to let Gav back in. Our break and finish to uh, stamp his authority back on the match. And it uh, looks like Rich Swaffield's through. 8-6, Rich Swaffield finds himself in the quarterfinals after beating Simon Ward 8-6 in the previous round as well. Two serial winners, um, two multiple IPA winners that Rich has got rid of back-to-back. -back. Craig Marsh, 5-1 up, another multiple winner on the uh, IPA. 5-1 up against Nathan Bridges in the last 16. Now Gav, what's his break going to say now? So 
take it. He's made a ball. He's made a yellow. Uh, not ideal, but it's okay. I think his reds are probably the ball. The colour set. You could, you could make an argument for yellows. He could uh, play the yellow into the corner now, maybe, and just about get into the cue ball enough to disturb the one by the middle, possibly. I don't know if he's quite got the angle. Either way, I'd be happy that he's uh, at the table. I think reds have got to be the ball, haven't they? You've just got to play one positional shot to land on this one in the top left-hand side of the table. And then you're as good as done. Mark Boyle, 6-2 up on Andrew McKee. So, reds it is. And straight away, well... He's trying to get on that red, hampered by the yellow to corner. He's just overrun slightly for perfect position. But he's still on this ball. Yeah, he took the words out of my mouth. He, he, he can still play it if he wants to. Not ideal, but, you know, is, is he going to get better on it? He's going to try and screw back behind it. I think he tried to there. Yeah, hampered Kieran and he's... Sort of quit on it a little bit. Yeah. A little bit worried about the yellow that he was queuing over as well. Might, might regret not taking it then. Could have just could have got into it enough with a. He was a very good single ball potter, Gav. So right middle, uh, red bottom right, and then if you can get the cue ball over on the right hand side of the table, you can play it quite naturally and drift in behind the red. His awkward red, leave that till last, I think it's definitely an option. He's trying to get up there now? He's trying to get him out. Well, I don't think it was on. No. Getting more difficult. Yeah, and it's still the ball he was trying to get on really early on in this uh, clearance that is the issue. So he's tried once again to get on it. Yeah, and look, again, look, I don't know. He ain't got a gap, has he, for the for the red in the bottom right? Surely not. I mean, if he has, does he even want to take it anyway? I mean. But look, oh. the, the, the cut's on. Yeah, and this time he has to take the cut. Yeah, no choice. And this is more difficult than the previous uh, opportunity. As I said, he's a very, very good single ball potter. He's just wiped his feet, but he's just about there. he gets these, this will be the third time now in this match already that he's kind of run out of position, played a couple of slack shots, but still found a way to get the clearance. Yeah, and that was a delightful shot, wasn't it, that last red? Yeah. Showing a lot of character, a lot of bottle. Yeah, very tenacious character, Gav Robinson. Plenty of fight in him. Plenty of talk in him. He can't get away from him. One of the true characters on tour. Always got time for everybody. Actually a really interesting, funny guy. We quite often wind him up about not being able to get a word in. And uh, Gav Robinson is just going for a comfort break. So we'll just... Uh, Pan back round to the action on our other pro tables. And that was a, we just saw that shot there. Red to corner. Yeah, Andrew McKee, uh, a bit of a fight back here. It was 5-1 down. And uh, if he gets these, this will be back to 6-4. Yeah, 
nicely done. So six four well in the game. Five one was uh looking quite bleak. Digging deep over there. Yeah, right back in the match. Six four down. By the look of it, it's Andrew Bakey to break. Just panning round. Talking of 5-1 leads. Craig Marsh 5-1 up against Nathan Bridges. Looks like he's broken down on his last ball, so Nathan in trying to mop up the pieces. Clint Anson's just started his last 16 game against uh, the chairman, Kev Barton. Clint's just slightly concerned with this cue ball. Just needs to be careful in that middle pocket. And as you would expect, prime position from where he was. On it probably as well as he could be. Yeah, you'd have to make Clint a big favourite in that game. Current world champion. The form of his life. Nathan Bridges reduced the deficit over there. 5-2 now. Just see Kev Barton there. Setting up with the uh, smart rack. I've got one of those myself. I don't know if you, Dan. I have dropped to my pool case that I never use. I haven't, but um, very good piece of kit. Yeah, I think is. they. Uh, well, clues in the name. They actually do look very smart, but um, the uh, you know when you you lift the triangle off, you often clip the balls on the way up, don't you? And, and yeah. it just completely takes out the equation. It's you know, ironically, it's not a triangle, is it? It's, <laughs> it's but. But, um, yeah, very clever. Very clever innovation. And yeah. uh, I think he's selling absolutely tons of them. Yeah. Um, the, yeah. Sorry, the, the, they are great in that you can fasten them to your case. Mm. Comes with like a little Velcro strap. Yep. So, yeah, brilliant. You can see the referee is setting them up on the main stream table. Yeah, and it's uh, not the same colour, this one. We've got the special one. Orange, golden, smart rack. Look at that. Limited edition. So, four apiece. Ross Fernie to break. Effectively, best of seven remains. Yeah. And where's that cue ball going? Ooh. Wow. I, I was going to say, he didn't catch them very well, but he'd made a ball. If you look, look at where the, where the cue ball flings off to him, and he doesn't catch them flush at all. So, not a great break. Obviously, it is unlucky to get kicked in off. But he's not hitting them as... Uh, as sweetly as we often see him hit them. And it's Gav now, who's 3-0 down, has got a good chance here. He's going to take a bit of time and probably going to use his extension here to figure out what he wants to do with his free shot. And 
It's an argument for reds or yellows here. Yeah. Just needs to take a bit of time. This is going to be the most important thing in this clearance is, is, is now. It's figuring out what he wants to do and how he's going to go about it. Yeah, could go reds or yellows. I agree with you, Dan. It's all about this free shot. So important. Can use it to develop. He's given the uh, colour set. Just depends. Right, so yellows is going to try and move. And there you see, he's moved one. Let's hope he can see that in the middle. He can, I think. Well, I think uh, I think I think he'll probably go reds now. Yeah, well, he's opened it up either way. Yeah, and I think it, it, sometimes you can overthink it. You know, you, you just need to. Th there's a little cluster there. I'm going to go into it. I'm bound to be on a red and a yellow, and we'll see how it lies after that. Yeah, reds it is. Probably the most difficult red. Oh, it's not difficult, but the one sort of centre of table, be no issue. He has the one to the right between the two yellows. That still goes to corner, okay. It's just about uh, position with a cue ball as always. There's an argument for taking the red closest to the black after this one, but also for leaving it to his last ball. Just depends how he sees it. I think the thing with leaving it to last ball, it's it's not the easiest position with a cue ball, is it? It's, it's Those yellows do hamper it slightly. Yeah. You can yeah. almost see him thinking what we're saying. Yeah, and because of that, he's taking that red now. I think that's got to be the right way. Yeah. What he will want to be is as close as possible to this eight ball, whichever way he goes. So long straight red to middle. And that eight does go to this corner, just past that yellow I feel. Certainly goes in the other corner. Yeah, I think it's one of those. It, it, it. It almost can make you do funny things when you've got the that yellow next to the black there, and you you, you sometimes can overthink it. But I think it, that the area that he's got to land in is a bit bigger than we think. But on the blue spot, it's fine. So he can actually get quite close to it. Yeah, he's got a good angle here. Just float through if he chooses. It's a delicate sort of shot. Well, he's pushed straight through for the other corner. He had an even better angle than I thought. What this, a fight back. Yeah, what a fight back. And to take the lead. 5-4. And it's there. What a fight back. He was nowhere in this match early on. That break in the previous, well, this frame that we've just seen. Being off, didn't catch them properly. Ross, when he broke, but he was unfortunate. That cue ball travelling the distance it did. And finding the corner pocket. That gave Gavin Robinson the opportunity, the free shot. 
He used to develop the cluster. Decided, elected to take reds. And there we see. Yeah, seven four Mark Boyle now, and uh, six two Craig Marsh. Clint Ironson's two 0 up against Kev Barton, but Kev's at the table. Yes, on yellows. Got one yellow at the bottom there, hampered for definite by a red. He has a ball near the middle, maybe. Maybe uses that at some point to uh, develop. If not, there's a couple of other yellows down there. Just loosen up the old shoulder. Old shoulder. Yeah. <laughs> With the <laughs> emphasis on the old. <laughs> Struck them well. Struck them well. Wow. Look at them. Wow, indeed. I think... Uh, okay, so he's... he's, he's the, the, the two yellows together are, are a problem. He can screw straight into them now if he wants to. He's also got the option to go reds. I mean, they, they all go. He might have to play one down the cushion. Um, either way, look, he's, he's, he's creamed that break. He's hit him so well. 5-4 um, up. This is huge for Gav Robinson. Get these 6-4. Complete turnaround. For me, I like to... Uh, I'll, I'll probably play this yellow in the middle and, and probably screw into the right-hand side cushion then try, try and screw into the right hand side cushion and bump them out from behind that will do though that will do not perfect but he's on it and he might as well play it now yeah that was the only issue wasn't it developing those two balls he wasn't forced to land on anything apart from these two it's not a gimmick he's made it look like one yeah he's played it well said before, he is a good single ball potter. It, it, it's rarely the thing that lets him down. Just needs to be careful with the red, the red, the yellow centre of table. Close to that red. Be a second to last ball now, yeah. I think that potentially take the yellow to middle. There's a couple of ways of playing this, to be fair. Could leave either of the last two yellows for his last ball. So he's elected to play the bottom of the two to corner. Yeah, he's perfect, really. Um, just needs to needs to be as straight as possible on this last yellow. Whether he whether he just nips the white and screws back a little bit like a soft screw, or whether he punches it and uses the side cushion, uh, you'll know better than us. He's right behind the shot, but she needs to be straight. Yeah, it looks like side cushion. Yeah, I don't think he's straight, but I think he's fine. I think he's fine. He can just uh, I think he's gesturing as if he's not happy, but. Five four up, Gav. You are three nil down. You've got an easy yellow. All right, you might not be absolutely spot on where you want to be, but yeah, it may not be the middle pocket now for the eight. But he's uh, 
certainly got options for other pockets. And there you see the only thing he doesn't want to do here, and he's done it, is put himself under that cushion. Yeah, just an interesting one as to why he played it so hard. He may, I thought he maybe could have just a little soft, soft screw and, and played the back into the same corner. Either way, a bit of pressure on this. Missed out. He's missed it. He's missed it. Wow. And that was an error. Yeah, wow. Definitely. I can't believe that. No. I think the soft screw for the same corner was the shot. Yeah, I can't believe that. That'll hurt. Oh, you, you almost make him second favourite for the match now, even though he's 5 4 up as we speak. He... Wow. I think Ross has played the plant there, hasn't he? Surely he's played the plant. Did he apologise? Maybe he didn't. Let's have a rerun. Well, no, I don't think he did play the plant. No, I think he's played the cue ball safe. And... That was so close to making contact with the eight ball there. He's wasting no time here, Ross Fernick. Just develops the eight, runs through, leaves himself on that red. So he can play corner first if he chooses. He can go middle corner, work his way back up table. But he really has no work to do here. This is going to hurt Gavin Robinson. It really is. Yeah. I, um, some players just have certain shots they don't like, you know. And I think because he could, because he could, take the white over to the left hand side of the table and play the black into a slightly more open jaw. He's obviously, that's just the way his brain works and that's the way he plays, but I think if, uh, yeah, well, it's going to be hard to put that to the back of your mind. Yeah, well played. Spins it round, two cushions. Just run this through and it's a natural angle. It's a corner back out to middle of table. There you see it. Punishing that uh, mistake from Gavin Robinson. And there aren't been many mis mistakes in this match. No, five each. That is huge. Well, Ross can't believe his luck. Yeah, and Gavin's got to put that out of his mind. Really has. Mark Boyle's run out an 8-4 winner against Andrew McKee. Takes his place in the quarterfinals. Craig Marsh 6-3 up. Looking to go 6-4 now. From 5-1. Yep, yeah, it's there, 6-4. Well, just been informed, Kev Barton has taken a frame in that match. He's now trailing 2-1, but as you can see there, setting the balls up, so at the table to break. We'll keep you posted. It's interesting, Ross has uh, decided to switch to the cut break. After a couple of poor breaks in the last couple of frames, he's, he's switched to the cup break and uh, has come up dry. Gav's back in again. So there's your chance, Gav, to put that mistake straight to the back of your mind. Got a 
couple of options here. If that yellow passes to corner between the two reds, he could elect to take yellows here. Take that first. If not, he can go yellow to middle. Just depends. The issue with reds being the red on the side cushion, left hand side. So there you see. Yellow as it is. Now, does he feel like he needs to go into this yellow? We, I don't. I, we can't really see from here. From the angle, from this. But does it? Does it go into the corner? Does it go into the middle? Well, it goes into the corner, or it did go into the corner. I feel he tried to slide past. And now it goes nowhere. Yeah. Maybe forced to go off the bottom cushion here. Try and kick the ball in over the corner. That's what he's tried. That's what he's done. Played it well. Problem is now, I don't think he's on another ball. Does it pass? He's just having a look. Does this cut back to corner? If it does, he can go into his bad yellow straight away. It's a thin cut. Yeah, if that passes, he'll be definitely trying. And there is it. There is a. Possibility of just a, a delicate little snooker, maybe. Uh, I think it's just, just poked itself out. But a fraction, a fraction softer, and he'd have had Ross in a bit of trouble there. Maybe a snooker. Like we, we can't really see from here, but I think I think it looks like it uh, that goes in the middle. Yeah, if you can drop this into the middle, you would put him firm favourite for this frame. Even with that cluster down by the, uh, the black spot. There you see, he's got onto the bottom of that little cluster of three. He's got a lovely little angle here. So he can take this to corner. And he's just going to, if you just watch this, it's into the corner, just nudges the back of the other red. Yeah, perfect. Would have loved to have been dead straight on this red into the middle as well, because he could have topped through then for um, the red that's on the side cushion. In fact... If anything, he'd like to have a little bit more angle so that he could go up and down the table, but that's still yeah. what he's tried. Still what he's tried, but yeah, just a just a funny angle there. Dead straight's fine. A little bit more angle's fine. Now he's faced with a tester. I think a touch more left there might have helped him as well, just to Yeah, he was really throw over. Really trying to force an angle there that that, that was barely there. But if he knocks this in, frames his. Big shot, this. Yeah. Five each. It's a tough hit. Oh, that's smooth as you like. It's really good at them. Definitely doesn't lack bottle. Or does he run round? Yeah, he's running round for the same corner. That's perfect. Very nicely controlled. Yeah, great little clearance this has been. Now you see it to corner, just nudges that eight. So this eight to middle. And he's really punishing Gavin Robinson now. Gavin's done very little wrong in this match. But every small error, or the couple of small errors that he has made, have cost him. 
I wonder if he's still sat there now thinking about thinking about that Miss Black to go six four up. He's bound to be. You're not human if that's not in your mind. Kev Barton now back to two each against uh Clint Ianson. Yeah, turning back the clock, Kevin. Clint's a break in that match, as we can see. Yeah, look at those yellows. Great break. Good split. Back to the stream table, and it's Gav Robinson who desperately, desperately needs a ball. Yeah, and that's a great break as well. Take that. Yeah, you take that. I mean, he's got one problem on yellows, which I'm not sure if he's got enough angle now to be able to stun up and bump into the reds that are next to this other yellow. Looks straight. Yeah, he does look straight. He only needs a tiny angle with the smaller cue ball to force that up. But he does look very straight. Even on the overhead, we have the uh, benefit of the overhead here. He doesn't quite look on, but we'll soon find out. Because apart from that, they, they are... They are absolute sitters. Yeah, well, he had it. Yeah, and... Uh, it might not be perfect, but he's on it now and he, he can take it to this opposite corner. I think the cue ball just about misses the misses the knuckle. If this comes out good. He's halfway there. Yeah, not quite as he intended when he's stunned up, but he'll take it. Oh, oh, but he won't take it. that. He's missed it thick as well. I mean, it, it, a thinner contact. He has the white ball further down the table as well. I think it's it's, it's hard to uh, it's hard to believe that that, that mistake is still not in his in his mind from from uh, the frame to go six four up. It's time for Ross Fernie to really take advantage. Yeah, time to turn the screw. That's what I was thinking of. <laughs> so that red just next to the eight ball does it go to middle certainly well he's got a couple of balls near it if he does need to develop it at all Stun down. It's close to that. This looks pretty good. Needs a bounce. He'll take it. It's not ideal. But he'll take it. He can take it long as well if he wants. He can take it long. Take it in the middle. If he gets this right. It's a really good chance to go 7-5. Yeah, I think the problem taking it to middle is the cue ball. Yeah, and you don't want to be jacking up at all either. Making the cue ball... Well, he is. He's cued that really, really well. He's having a look. I'm assuming the red passes the black into the left middle. If not, if not, he's still got a bit of work to do here. No, I think it must do the way he's looking. I, I think this is a red to corner, red to middle, the side of the eight. Or is he? Or is he? Yeah, it must go. Definitely must be tight. Yeah, it must be. He's got down there to look at it a couple of times. Delicate little positional shot here. You can see he's played it into the, the sort of right hand side of the pocket from where he was at hasn't tried to do too much with the cue ball either just made sure of it 
Yeah, no heroics. No. Thin cut this. Yeah, it's th thinner than it looks on screen. As you'll see when you see the path of the white. Made it though. Yeah. Very, very good. Great finish. Great finish to steal that frame. Like you said, really turning the screw now. Seven five, Ross Fernie on the hill. Been very solid, Ross Fernie in this match. Taking every opportunity. Gav Robinson. Well, he's played really well for me, but just a couple of little errors crept in. I think the biggest one was the. Well. That queuing off the cushion yeah. there to go 6-4. Just an error of, of, of judgment, I think, when he, he stunned across, didn't he? Yep. Didn't have to. Anything but under the cushion, and it was a play a 10 out of 10. Yep. Maybe that little negative thought you get sometimes when you play a shot, anything but, and you, you land under there. We've all done it. Uh, Ross, back to the front ball break. Yeah, I'm breaking for the match. Again, lost the white ball a bit. It's, it's, it's not timing them very well. Another dry one. Yeah, lost the cue ball. Didn't really impart any power. No. It was a... Uh, Struggling with his break. Yeah, and that will need to improve if he's going to progress in this uh, tournament. Yeah, I mean, it, it looks like he'll probably get through this match. But um, if he's got any chances of winning it, he needs to uh, he needs to sort his break out. Well, Gav Robinson is still alive in this match. If he could take this out, he'd have the break. Potentially, could get himself on the hill, couldn't he? So there's all to play for, still. So those two reds, bottom right, they're awkward. Running low on playing time. Playing the plant now, yeah. Playing the plant now. It's come out really well. It's a good shot. Well controlled. Yeah. As played. Yeah. It could, could have gone wrong, but he, he's got the whiteboard exactly where he wanted it, so he was on this one to the bottom left. Yeah, played it at the right time. Yeah. Controlled what he could. And that was really his only problem. Trying to run these reds out. Those two to that right corner. The black, obviously, no issue. So it's all about the two reds at the bork end of the table, close to each other. Well, he's, he's jumped up there as if he's got a kick or something. And uh, well, maybe he's just under hit it. I don't. I don't know, but he's slightly out of position here. Yeah, he is. So, passes to corner, I believe. But the white's going to be running here. Is it, does he try and hit the yellow? Yeah, full ball. Oh, didn't want that one. That's come out good. He's got away with that. Yeah, he has got away with that. Well, he's checked that right up, but he's checked it that much. He's hampered his queuing. Still fancying for it. Straight red to corner. Nothing to do to get on the eight. But once again, it's not where you want to be, is it? 
No, just a bit Not loose. Perfect. A bit loose with the white ball. Oh, that wiped his feet. Yeah, more drama. But it's there. Uh, seven six. Seven six with the break. So, if Gav Robinson can get a ball down here with an option to run out, we could have a hill hill situation in no time. Yeah, Russ Fernick just uh, ruining over that last break. Didn't time it well. Lost control of the cue ball. And that's, if you had to say anything negative about this match uh, for Ross Fernick, I think you'd have to say his break's not been up to its usual standard. But apart from that, very, very solid performance. Yep. He, uh, it'd be one of these that I think he'd be pleased to get through. Um... In, in a sort of different way to normal. Obviously, you're always pleased to get through, but uh, to to have not played perfect and struggle be a break and um, thrown away a lead and uh, potentially be well, he was he was nailed on to be six four down just like 15 minutes ago. And uh, six four down against anybody, you, you've got to win four one from there. You, you you're really up against it, so it'll be over the moon to get through. Um, sometimes those wins can feel better than when you just play great. But look at this. I mean, this match is far from over. What a break that is from Gav. What a break that is. Yeah, you can't hit them much better than that, has you, to be said. You, you can't. And uh, I mean, reds, yellows, it, it gets either of them, I think. You know, it's, yeah, it's probably the best split we've had in this match. Yeah. And what a time to get it. Maybe the time now to actually punch this yellow into the right middle and go straight across into the to the red to the two reds and the yellow on the left hand side if he if he's got enough angle he doesn't need to do that though yeah I think I'd uh, be as careful as I can at this stage yeah, he doesn't need to because I mean unless he's on it now through that gap I don't know if the white fits through but once he takes the uh, yellow top left. The other one then goes into that same pocket, so no need to do anything risky. Yeah, he could take it now into the corner and then take the ball to middle. That's what he's going to be doing, so just drop this in. Oh, in fact, he's running back across. Well, I thought he may have just dropped it in to leave yellow to middle, but he's got a long yellow. Great single ball potter, as you alluded to earlier, Dan. So we fancy him for it. He's not under the cushion. No. Uh, enough off the cushion to make this one that's uh, quite comfortable, but he's missed it. Wow. Wow. It's like a carbon copy of the black he missed to go 6-4 up. But just slightly easier. Pressure gets to everybody. Everybody. Little saving graces. He's only left a plant for Ross, but it's, it's it's quite an easy one. And if he gets it, I, I mean, you've got to think it's game over. Ross would have been sat in his chair there thinking it's going seven all, and then I've got the break, but I haven't been in the break very well. Yeah. He's played that very well. Played it very well. Just saw Gav there tapping his chair. Sportsmanship. Must be absolutely gutted. We're missing that previous ball. Takes a lot to tap your chair after uh, after missing a ball like that. Doesn't want them both in here. 
I think he's okay. He can still drag this in, but... Um, yeah, he's fine, isn't he? Just drag this. Come back out. Bit of an angle. Oh, yeah, plenty. So there we are. Barring anything extraordinary, Ross Fernie is going to have found his way through this match somehow. I feel like it's one that he's kind of uh, got away with, I'd say. Well, it looked for all the world like we were going to be Hill Hill, seven apiece there. Just missed that ball to corner. That one will hurt for a long time, I'm sure. That that they they will be t that will be tough to take. Um, he'd have rather have just played very badly and, and lost eight two, or his opponent played great and got blown away. But to to fight and dig deep and play really well to get back from three nil down to be five four up, Gav did play really well. You know, he ran out of position a few times, but showed a lot of courage. Bottle to get back into the game and um, yeah he's um, he'll be really really disappointed with that yeah most definitely but it's Ross Fernie who lives to fight another day and that puts him into the quarter finals of this uh, pro event Gav Robinson yeah plenty to think about So, just panned over here. Craig Marsh at the table. Just been informed that 7-6 uh, the lead. Craig Marsh. I'm just having a look here. Not too sure what he's on at the moment, but we'll... Uh, some f well, Reds. Is it Reds? There we go. So he's got one on the cushion here. He's landed on it now. Is he looking for a, a rest? Well, we don't see that often on a pool table these days, but you don't want to be screwing back with a rest by choice. Made that look easy. Great shot. Great shot. Got an option here. Ball to corner or ball to middle. Yeah. Spit it round. Just needs to hold up. Second to last red there, just behind the yellow. You can hardly see it, to be fair. And this red to middle, just position on this eight now. Maybe a little thinner than he, he wanted. So, yeah, great shot. It's a great shot. Great finish. And there you see it. Black to corner, secures the victory, and that puts Craig March into the quarterfinals. And we're now going to hand you over to the studio for an interview with Ross Fernie. I enjoyed the ending of both of them matches, and uh, here's a winner of one of them matches, uh, Ross Fernie. You've got to be pleased with that performance, you know, because Kevin Robinson, he's a fiery competitor, isn't he? and he can really come back at you. Really happy to get through. Um, I don't think I done too much wrong for three 0 up. I think just breaks and stuff. Eh? So I still felt like I was playing pretty well. So I just had to wait on my chance. And um, aye, obviously it's going to be a tough game against Gav. So 
happy to get through. And uh, obviously, you changed your break, you know, a bit mid mid match. Would that be fair to say? You went to the cup break later on. You didn't feel that the head ball was breaking that well, or yeah. Well, ma the match before I was breaking really well. I was just smashing them for the front, and the white was coming straight back. But I think I was hitting them that well there, like the white was going to the side. Uh, so I tried the side, and that didn't work either. So. I'll need to try and get that sorted out for the next game. And your form, you know, obviously into another quarter final. You always seem to do quite well in the professional event. Uh, you know, do you, you feel like your form's really in, into it now? Yeah, I feel I feel really confident. Um, I know if I'm on the top of my game, you know, I've, I've got a chance. So, aye, um, I like it here as well. I seem to always do quite well at the Isle of Man. So, I'm looking forward to the, the next game. And obviously, Gavin, you know, he's a, a real great competitor, and he, and, uh, you know, he's really come up in the rankings. Is, is he going to be one to watch out for at some point? Yes, already for me. I think he's he's class. Like even being ahead there, you know, he didn't want to win in frames because he starts getting a bit confidence, and then he can he can rattle off frames quite quickly. So, yeah, I was just happy to go for the line there. So, yeah, I'm sure. He'll should have done well in the future. Like. Well, I'll let you get ready for your next match, Dan. If you can, uh, we'll get to Dan over and have a few words with him. But good luck for your next match. I know you're back on here. You're going to be playing your uh, fellow Scotsman, uh, Mark Boy. Are you looking forward to that one? Yeah, looking forward to it. Obviously, really tough game, but yeah, it should be fun. Well, thanks very much, Ross, and uh, well played, and good luck for your next match. So, Ross Fernie into the quarterfinals and. Uh, can I say, it's going to be a very interesting quarter-final. Dan David just joining me into the studio. Next match-up, Ross Fernie against Mark Boyle. What do you reckon to that one? What a game. I mean, you know, quarter-finals, you normally are faced with, sort of, but that, that's worthy of a final. Um, they both, they probably won 10 IPA titles between the minimum. Uh, what a match. What a match. And, y you know, you've, you've commentated on the first two games this afternoon. That both of their matches were been an absolutely terrific spectacle. They just both had a bit of everything, you know. Both had the you know, f plenty of finishes from the break, a couple of mistakes, a couple of nervy bits at the end, you know. Proper tension, you know. Uh, it's just great matches to watch. Just for for a neutral, just kept you gripped until the. I've, I've, I've commentated on it. I quite enjoyed them. I actually really enjoyed both matches. It was great. Yeah, and this next one, you know, it's got all the, all the like the, the possibilities of a, having an absolute classic. Yeah, I think this might be the time where you see. I think Ross, Ross needs to break better. If he's going to beat Mark Boyle, um, he he needs to break better than he was breaking there because his break let him down. Um, he wasn't. He, he, you see, he went from the front ball break to the uh, the cut break, and then back to the front ball break. He really didn't. You know, we really didn't settle at all, and I think um, I said in commentary, it's fine getting through a match the way you're not at your absolute best, and sometimes they can feel better than when you play great because you know digging deep and getting let off really. I mean, he should have been six four down. Yeah, and mm -hmm. um, it'll really feel like he's got away with one there. But often you get them out of your system, and then something clicks. You feel like obviously maybe like you know the hand breaks off and. You feel like you're you're free rolling. Um, maybe this is the match where he really kicks on and relaxes. And you know, I won't be surprised to see him beat Mark Boyle. I think I think most people are second favourite against Mark Boyle, but um, they obviously play each other a lot. They know each other well. Uh, but yeah, great game. And it, look, this is the quarterfinals now. I mean. It's very tasty indeed, isn't it? You know, we're already going to be watching the Mark Boyle Ross Fernie one, but either of these matches, will kept, you know, could be a possibility of being on the uh, TV table. Yep. Do you want yeah. to talk us through? Lead you. So we've got Dunster about. against Brown. I think that's already started, hasn't it? Yeah, they've just started yeah, now. Literally just started. A proper contrast in styles. I mean, two completely different players. Um, Craig very, very fluent and uh, ultra attacking and aggressive. Liam just, you know, the most measured. Um, you know, you know, just just complete contrast in styles. Uh, Swaffy. Um, a little bit about Swaffy. He beat Corey Reese eight frames to six, and Corey Reese was an absolute superb performance last yeah. night. Yeah. And and, and um, in his first round against Simon Ward, he was he was quite far behind, and uh, managed to beat Simon Ward eight six as well. So he's going to be feeling great. And um, Dean Shields uh, said to me yesterday that he'd. So he's Swaffy's playing uh, Dean Shields. Dean Shields yesterday, he reckons he's as well as he can play in his first round game against um, Adam Griffiths, 1-8-3. Couldn't have played any better. 
literally just queued like a dream. Broke mm. really, really well. Uh, we saw earlier against Hibbert, he was, um, he was a topsy-turvy game, but he really dug it out towards the end when it mattered, and he did play well. Overall, he played really well. Yeah, 14, you know, it's probably the best I've seen him play this season. He just looked like he, every part of his game was really up at the top notch. And when you play the players like uh, the Godfather, Gareth Hibbert, that, you know, that's what you've got to be. You've got to be at the top of your game, haven't you? Yeah, and I think, I think the biggest thing that will probably please him is he had... Um, a handful, really, of, of pressure pots, pressure clearances, uh, real twitchy, nervy ones, and he just nailed them when it really, really mattered. Uh, he, he found a way to found a way to get it done. And our chairman, he's uh, into the other last sixteen. The winner of that match, no good. chance. Well, he was three two uh, up, I think. No, I don't know what the latest score is now, Clint, but uh, Clint hammers him. Does he? Yeah. From yeah. here. From That's here. Yeah, yeah. Three to eight two. And the winner of this yeah. plays Craig Marsh. Yeah, Clint plays Clint plays Craig Marsh. The chairman's got no chance. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you have it. I'll hide uh, after this. It's currently four two to Clint. Um, pe people like all jokes aside, uh, Kev doesn't play anymore. Do you know what I mean? He doesn't practice, doesn't put any time and effort in. He's got so much on his plate with running all this and stuff like that. But Kev's a really capable player. He really is. Like I remember playing him. Um, 20 years ago, right. when I was like up and coming, you know, 16, 17, and, and, and he d he, I'd always knew that he's a good player, he just doesn't play anymore, do you no. know what I mean, and uh, and he does win the odd match now and again, but he, he doesn't put any effort in, hasn't got the time to, um, to put effort in his game, but still enjoys competing, and um, you can't take him lightly, he, he's a very clever player. Yeah. Um, yeah, four, mm. four, two, What four. about a little bit about Marsh? You've not really mentioned too much about him. He seems to be going under the radar. He's into the quarterfinals now. Well, he, he's on a high because he just won the uh, European Championships playing for um, Wales. Um, so they had a, a, a singles event alongside the team event. And um, he, he, he's on cloud nine at the moment because he played really, really well there and, uh, and, and, and took that title down as well. So... Um, He's a he's a very dangerous player when he's on form. Very dangerous player. Um, you see Clint there. What's Clint done there? Wow. He's just getting down. Wow. Just, that's a bit of frustration there from there's Clint. A, there's a lot of frustration. Is the cue ball still on? Yeah. It's just the hung. chairman pulls off the upset. Well, you never know. I feel weird, wouldn't it? Transferring himself some money. Yeah, it certainly will. I'm sure yeah. it will. I'm not sure how many times he's done that, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> not for winning anyway. Definitely not. And the ladies' final, this is going to be coming up after this Mark Boyle Ross Fernie match. Yeah. I mean, it's still not, we don't know who's, who's in the final. I know the latest score was it 6 3 to Rachel Tucker? 6 I think. 3 to Rachel, so it's yeah. looking like it's probably going to be Rachel Tucker. And as I said on commentary, uh, Rachel Tucker and Deb have partners in together years. Yeah. It's yeah. going to be awkward, isn't it? Yeah. Mm. And they're normally sat in each other's corner. Because one of them always seems to make the final, don't they? That's yeah. what will happen this year. I mean, if it is, they're in the final. Uh, either way, the trophy's going back to the room, but, you know, are they going to be talking? Well, it's going to go one way or the other, isn't it? But, yeah, the ladies' elite final will be coming up after the Mark Ball and Ross Fernie match, uh, the last eight one. Um, but, uh, yeah, this next match has got Blockbuster written all over it, I'm sure. Well, most of Scotland, probably all of Scotland, are tuning into this one, would you think? Yeah, I think so. Um, both, but I don't want to be too nice, but they're both very well liked. Do you know what I mean? They're popular characters, and uh, they're, they're probably going to have their little split of fans in Scotland. And um, But they'd have played each other, God knows how many times they'd have played each other. Um, sounds easy to say, but I, I think, I think Boyle is favourite, slight, slight favourite. Uh, against pretty much everybody at the moment, but um, he'll only be a slight favourite against Ross. But if he if he breaks how he normally breaks, um, Mark Boyle, if he breaks as he normally breaks, he's he, he's going to be really tough to beat. Um, but if more importantly Ross continues to break like he broke in that last game, he's he's handicapped from the start. You know he might as well be two 0 down because he's not. He wasn't hitting them well at all. He, one thing you see with Mark, he, he, he has a cut break and he sticks to it. I mean, he sticks to it because he's very, very good at it, but he sticks to it. Uh, Ross in that last game was chopping and changing, didn't know what 
didn't know what was best for him. So he needs to sort that out. Otherwise, he's 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 in my head, he's two or three nil down before he started. But like I say, when you get through a game like that, he got massively let off. Maybe maybe he'll just come into this now feeling like so relaxed, feel like a million dollars shouldn't even be here, you know. Um, so maybe now is when Ross is at his most dangerous. And I know I've always been quite critical of um, Ross's break because he, he always seems to be have a bit of a loose white. He doesn't seem to have it under control. Where when you do watch the Mark Boyle break, he always has control of that cue ball. Yeah, well, control and 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 just get so much power into it. Yeah. Um, I mean, you know, so much power. I mean, he's he's not a big guy, um, but the, the the power that he generates, he obviously just times it so well. Um, so it's just a weapon for him such a weapon for him so I think we say it a lot in probably most sort of elite top end matches obviously the breaks are going to be absolutely crucial but you say it because you say it so often because it's just true it is Uh, like I say if he carries on breaking like that he's up against it because he's up against arguably the most informed player on the planet at the moment anyway yeah so yeah but I've got a sneaky little suspicion he's going to just relax now after getting let off against... Uh, he'll see that as a let off against Gav. Well, Great game. Well, that's one game we're definitely going to be looking forward to. It looks like both players are just about to lag for, for break. So, Dan, I'm going to give you a well-needed rest and hopefully we'll hear from you later on. So it's now time to get over to the commentary box and uh, Dan Fairway, and he's got a special guest with him at uh, some point throughout this match. Indeed I have. Indeed I have. My special guest is here next to me. Um, Welcome to the commentary box once again, although the first time this weekend, Gaz Hibbert. Afternoon, Danny, okay? Yeah, not too bad, mate, yourself? Good, yeah. Well, been better. Been better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, obviously, um, an early exit for you. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it was a good game, really. Just uh, one or two little loose positional shots along the way. It uh, co- caused me... I, I should have got... F- I was 3-1 in front, and I uh, had a couple of chances to get maybe 4-5-1 in front. And After that, it was a struggle. The good news is that means we're blessed with your dulcet tones for <laughs> at least some of this match between Ross Fernie and Mark Boyle. Um, obviously, Battle of Scotland. How do you see this one panning out? Well, on form, you'd probably have Mark as favourite, wouldn't you, because of how he's done in the last three or four tournaments. So Ross has been a bit quieter this uh, this year, but he's obviously a class player. I'm sure they've played dozens of times in the past, both on this tour and back up in Scotland. So... Yeah, Mark's slight favourite, but uh, it's anybody's game, really. Ross has just come off this table, hasn't he? So he should be tuned in to how it's playing. Yep, that's true. Yeah, I think Ross... I mean, Ross had a real breakout season last year. Um, but perhaps hasn't kicked on in the way that we might have expected so far this season. No, he's not had his best season, but... Um he's just such a class player that he can turn it on in a given game. So he's just he's just got to pull out the... To win these tournaments, you've got to do it for four or five matches, if not more, obviously. So that's the difficult thing. Mark, with his traditional extra power on the cut break, um, I watched Mark last night, actually, in his 32 game. And I didn't think he was hitting the break as well as usual. And I don't think he's hit that one as well as usual. No, he's he's, he's catching him a bit thin, I think. It's like his white's coming lower than it normally would do. His white had normally come back into the pack quite high, and it's coming in a bit low, so he's nearly gone enough on this one. And a couple of the ones that I saw last night, like like you say, they were were a bit low as well, so... Yeah, perhaps just needs to retune. It's come out nice, though. Just a a good first red in the middle, and he's just got a... Just got one nudge to play, really, and they're there. Yeah, last night he was going dry most of the time, yeah. which was really unusual. Yeah, I think he had three or four. His first three maybe were dry, weren't they? Yeah, yeah, I think you're right. Just come slightly the wrong angle on that one to middle now. He'd, he'd have won it thicker, so he could have just come off the cushion and nudge into the yellow and leave himself on the red. So not sure he can check it. He may have to play into the red here. Yeah. Rather have played into the yellow because it's. So if he has to play it now, it's things can go wrong. If he can play the middle one, he he should be fine. But that's tight, though, isn't it? Past yeah. That yellow. No, he's on. It looks like he's looking he's at maybe throwing a bit of right hand side on just to make sure of getting it round. Yeah. That's where he'll want to be in four shots time, just there for his for his black. 
yeah, the eight ball looks quite tied up with that yellow, doesn't it? But like you say, if you're to far enough left on the table as he is now, yeah, um, it's really straightforward. Yeah, it's just really getting out from the one that's that he's just moved. Really, as long as he gets out off that and onto a red, everything's fine. Into the quarterfinals now, so this is a race to nine, extending the races through the tournament. Obviously new for this season. Is that something that you've enjoyed? Do you think that's uh, the right way to do it? Definitely, Dan, yeah, yeah. It's um, the best player will normally come out on top in a first to eight, first to nine, first to ten scenario, so it, it takes luck a bit out of the equation a little bit more. Yeah, just going to try and screw back four or five inches, get dead straight if he can. It, it doesn't matter if he's an inch or two out, but there's no problems here at all. Looks pretty straight. Yep. This is what you're up against with Mark's break. It's such a such a weapon, and it leaves uh, leaves pretty open splits majority of the time, and um, so hard to win frames off his break. Yeah, I don't know what the stats are, but if we had. And actually, this is probably something you should think about. If we had percentage of sort of break dishes or frames won from your own break, I reckon he'd be probably in the top one. Yeah, actually. yeah, yeah. It's just so consistent. Um, yeah, I, I can't think off the top of my head of anyone else who I think would win more off his own break than Mark no. Doyle. I think with the cut break, if and he hits it better than anyone, it, I think you get less. If you are good at it and you hit it well, in my mind, you get less clusters because um, they don't really have chance to mingle back together because they're not flying around the table really, even though he hits it so hard. That's my opinion on it. Anyway, I think I think if you've got a real good front ball break, balls can be flying everywhere and they can actually come back together in little clusters here and there and. Uh, doesn't happen so much with the cut break if you hit it well. If you hit it wrong, you'll get a cluster to one side, obviously. But I was going to say, yeah, because it's interesting you say that because I've never really thought of it like that because I always think of the cut break as the one that develops clusters. Mm. But you're right, it's only if you hit it badly. Yeah. But I guess it's one of those where if you hit the cut break badly, you're guaranteed to get clusters. Yeah, definitely. If you hit a front ball break badly, sometimes it's not so bad. Sometimes it, they come out easier, yeah, yeah. 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 It's strange, really. to break in frame two and he is very fortunate with his fumble break not to see the cue ball in the centre pocket but that's where his luck ends yeah Ross has dabbled with the cut break a little bit in his time as well but he's, he's hit that from the front it didn't hit it well at all really so fair enough that's come dry I think yeah almost three quarter ball wasn't it yeah right across the front of the pack looks on a quick glance just one bad yellow really if, if he's looking at yellows I think reds. If, it depends if the red goes to middle. That's that's sort of welded to the yellow. I don't think it does. No. So you will be looking at yellows, I think, and uh, just the one on the right hand side is issue. Yeah, it's it's one of those, isn't it, where it's so isolated from the other yellows, you could potentially just leave it as a double. Yeah, there's there's going to be loads of options. There is space to get in behind it for for middle pockets and things. So you probably may get the two or three out of the top end and get them out of the way. Play a little nudge, maybe you know. It's just it's when you're on the on the thirty second shot clock, it's just working out these finishes a little bit tougher. If he was just on an outside table now, I think he'd have his plan already and how he's gonna is he gonna move that ball, is he gonna land behind it now? But it is all a bit more rushed when you're on the shot clock. When you've got a table like this on the shot clock, do you see it as almost a couple of frames in one in, in some ways? Do you have to kind of work it out in, in stages? Rather than because yeah, you don't a little have bit, the full yeah. of time that you want, especially because the table's so slidey and that's gone wrong on him that shot there. So you, you're always each time you're always sort of looking at new patterns. Really, it's very rare you'll stick to the original plat pattern on a table like this. I'm not even sure he's, it, it might sneak past this, but he's uh, he's obviously just slid on him a little bit and he's left himself a trickier shot than he needed. Recovery that. 
Yeah, so it, I mean, he could be brave and take the one long. It's it's virtually the black, really, if he f if he's feeling confident to do it. He, he is on his bad yellow long, and um, I think he has to. Mm. I don't think he's going to get a better chance to get on this. No, I think um, the table's playing quite generous. I think it is the time to do it. He's, he's going to come back to it. Maybe, probably if he had more time, he he might play that shot now. But. Just intrigued as to how he's going to get yeah, around not, that now. I think he, in hindsight, he might have been better playing that there. I don't think he's great now, really, to be honest. No, because he, he's pretty straight on this one down to the bottom left, and that's the only pot he can see, you feel. Yeah. Um, is he taking this on as a skill shot? Or does he I think, think it sneaks in, and maybe it can open the pocket as well. No, it was lo always looked tight. Yeah, it didn't look it didn't look on. I think if it took the one long the shot before, because Ross still had bad reds as well, so the, it wasn't hundred percent that he lost the frame if he missed it. So I think it was it was definitely worth taking it when he was on it to the top corner or bottom corner, whatever we call that. I don't know. Uh, uh, interesting discussion. <laughs> um, funnily enough, I've switched because I now call the top the top. Um, table that's at the top of the screen yeah but i was always taught the other way around i think viv, viv when she's teaching refs yeah she's just the black end is the top end yeah i yeah. mean i have done viv's ref course so yeah this is true comes from. Yeah. <laughs> i've done about 50 of them so <laughs> i should know <laughs> but yeah i suppose the black end should be the top really yeah it's just i think it's for ease when we're commentating it makes more sense to the viewer, I suspect, yeah. if we're talking about the top of the table and it's at the top of the screen. The the red just on the side there, it, on the on the on the above angle, it looks like it goes, but on the main angle, it looks very tight, doesn't it? So I'm that's that's, that's his one issue. Yeah, I don't think it does. Mm. It do, from there, it looks like it's nowhere near going. Yeah. I wonder if he could try and get in behind it now, come across the table and take it into the same pocket that this red's going into. It's probably worth a Rick Gamble or he's tried a little nudge and he's found a gap that... It's harsh. Yeah, I think he's going to have to play the double now because it's nothing easy, so you've got to put all your eggs in one basket. Yeah, th there's no point going for anything else now. No. You're not going to get back up there. Just took his extension because he knows it's a big shot. He can sort of play it with not leaving an easy yellow for Mark, but he'll leave Mark pretty much a straight double, which is probably game ball, really, so it is a vital shot. I suppose if he tried to leave it uh, hampered by the yellow as well. Yeah. That might just be an extra level of safety, but... Squared up on him, he's missed it by a mile, but he's not left an easy double. No, because he's stunned so far down the table. He's going to play the little snooker, I think. A, frust a bit of a frustration for uh, Ross, that, because when Mark makes a mistake, they're pretty rare, so you really want to make sure you take advantage. Great double. Yeah, That's a great double. He's just seen Ross's sort of square up a little bit, so he thought, I can just uh, square this up with a bit of pace. I don't think he's going to be able to get back up table to take that last yellow in the centre pocket, is he? No, I don't think so. I think he'll just come across and uh, try and get as straight as he can for the for the corner. I just don't want to leave too much angle on those. It can be awkward. He's a bounce. It's all right. Yeah, it's, he'll be he'll be happy with that. Just a little soft screw. Try and keep the white within three or four inches of where it is, uh, where the yellow is. Had that landed a, a bit closer to the cushion, though, you might be... Um... Yeah, that would have been tough. Yeah. yeah. This table just lends itself to shots like this, really. Just uh, so reactive. He might be screwing across for the, the other bottom corner, actually. That's, I probably would have just soft-screwed that to leave the cut into its uh, into the pocket it's nearest to. Should get this, but again, not perfect. Mm. Yeah, you'd be surprised if he misses these. Touch your right hand side just to help with the cut and to take the in off out of play.
We didn't play any sides. Nope, but it didn't matter. Mark Boyle leads by two frames to nil. Ross Fernie. Tricky chance in that frame. But yeah, he yeah. He expected to do better from there. He would, but he was slightly unlucky to just hit that gap twice. Really, you just um, you think you'd clip one of the balls and leave yourself a better shot than he did. So it's just uh, it's just one of those things. Um, well, you mentioned it before. Of course, he, he's just come off this table, so uh, with the double, you'd sort of expect him to perhaps yeah. know better how it was going to react. He did miss it by quite. a You think he'd give it a better attempt? To be honest, Dan. Yeah, yeah. It was uh, it was a couple of inches wide, wasn't it? There are two of the remaining three quarterfinals, and the one last sixteen match, which is Kev versus Clinton. All oh, right, Kev holding the draw up—that's a surprise. No, it's <laughs> never happened before. Honest. What him get to the last sixteen? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, Liam Dunster currently trailing Craig Brown there by three frames to two. Plays well against the big boys, Craig. To be fair, he's uh, he's never never shirks it when he's playing the big names. Well, yeah, it was mentioned to me yesterday that he's made the semis at the last two world championships. Yeah, yeah. And that is some yeah. going. Mm. And um, again, he, he's one who you feel will get his name on the winners. You'd expect so. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's playing well at the moment. On the winners' trophy soon. See if Mark catches this one. How he how he likes to just that. That second red down, as thick as he possibly can, he's aiming for with uh, throws a bit of right hand side on this as well, I think, just to spin him around a bit more. Yeah, that's, that's better. Yeah, that's it. Oh, that's definitely the one. Yeah, that is. <laughs> <laughs> We've all seen that thousands of times. So it's 3 0. <laughs> <laughs> what else should we talk about? <laughs> yeah, honestly, that is, this is insane. Yeah. And I'm fairly sure that that red in the middle of the table. Goes to the bottom right. Yeah, which makes it uh, even it more unmissable. Yeah, yeah. Just absolute dot to dot. Um, if he can screw back and land anywhere near straight on that, then this is game over. And, well, it's just gone past it. It's even easier now. That's ridiculous. <laughs> this is what I say about the cut break. If you hit it well, it's just there isn't really clusters. <laughs> no, well, <laughs> hit it well. He hits it better than anyone by yeah. a long way. Yeah. But even then, yeah. There are people, there are people that have never picked up a cue that you could probably coach through this, this finish <laughs> and get. I don't know, some of the people I've coached. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was some break. You deserve them easy after that break, but maybe not that easy. Maybe one shot, half a shot to play, but yeah. That's the thing about this game. It's um, when they come out like that. I mean, Mark Mark works so hard at his game. He always has, but um, you don't need to work hard when they come out like no, that. It's no, easy pickings. Like you said before, though, Dan, that's he was hitting it a bit thin yesterday in his first one today, but he's hit that one absolutely perfect, hasn't he? Yeah. Let's take another look. It's just monstrous. Yeah. Sinking feeling for Ross when he sees all those yeah, balls yeah. getting out the way of and. If that's a deciding frame, you put your cue down. Yeah. Just okay. Fair enough. Three nil to Mark Boyle. It's all going the way of that man there in his chair at the moment. Coming up next, top of your screen, the Elite Ladies Final. It's, a, well, it's an in-house affair, isn't it? It is, yeah, yeah. yeah. They should know each other's game, those two, I think. Yeah, yeah. Partners on and off the table. It's a opponents oh, in the Ross. ladies' final. And Ross Fernie... Disaster. Adding insult to injury for himself here. Just put the yellow over the corner, come out, and the reds are just unmissable again, pretty much. It's just uh, someone of Mark's class. It's just the worst possible result. Yeah, you know. but he's gone straight in. He's, he didn't hit his first one well, did he? Maybe he's... Uh, I don't know how he broke in his first game on this table, Dan, but his, his first two breaks in this one have been... Disastrous. Yeah. 
So he didn't break too well apparently in his first match on here either, so maybe he should go back to a cup break, try it. I mean, he's going to have to try something soon because this is, you know, we're getting into real demolition territory here. Yeah. Getting a move on through these. It's just everything's just working for him. He's got a perfect red just to stun him for the black in, in three shots time. It's just it's it's literally unmissable pool, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It's it's sort of almost a dream, isn't it? It's yeah. He's got to be a little careful. This doesn't slide on him if he tries to check it with with left hand side to get straight. Sometimes on this table with the new cloth and new balls, it can uh, can slide a little bit. So maybe he's coming screwing off one cushion with side. I think oh, he's coming off two. He's underdone that yeah. quite considerably actually. I think it was sort of about three shots ago. He came a bit straight on the on the red, and it it was always going to leave himself an angle on that one and. Is he going to have to go into the eight ball now? Because you can't see, you can't screw across because the yellows are in the way. Yeah, I think he's going to have to just slide past it, maybe. Or yeah, Might go to the centre. That's a good shot. Yes. It's probably a harder black than you'd think he'd have in this frame, but he's never going to miss it, so it's not a problem. But uh, you'd think when he looked at the finish four or five shots ago, he'd be da dead straight on it to the corner. But I think what that shows for me is how easy it is for a lesser player to get caught out by what looks like an easy finish. Yeah, take it for granted. Mark yeah. Boyle there has run out of position. Um, you do still have to have that perfection in your game, even when it's not, even when it looks it's simple. Yeah. You can take your eye off the ball a little bit when they're just there lined up like that. All the yellows are out of the way. The reds were just literally one after another, dot to dot. And one slight positional area can, it can make it slightly tricky, but he was never going to miss. 4 0. For Mark Boyle. I think Richard's just missed a black against Dean there. Yeah, it looks like it. Latest score on that one is 2 0 to Dean Shields. Craig Brown, 4 3 up on Liam Dunster. On oh no, he's. Table. Richard missed a yellow after Dean had missed a black and he's left him plum on a skill shot. Oh, that, oh. that's proper disaster. Be three Should never be losing it. those frames. No, he's... I don't see why if in that situation you'd actually leave him anywhere near the skill shot. If you had a missable ball, you'd uh, you'd get your white out of the way, wouldn't you? It's just, uh... But... Oh. Oh, Mark's... Well, he sent the eight ball straight in off, so we'll... Go again. It's amazing how often that's happened. Yeah, he did. He didn't get any other balls as well, which will frustrate Ross. It'll be like, oh, after last break where he got four or five, he didn't get any any reds or yellows, but he gets another go. Mark is he's regularly pots the black, doesn't he? Was, I think it was Craig Brown last night. Uh, watched his first round game on the stream, and he did that three times in the match. Yeah. Sixth of the weekend so far, I'm being told. Someone's keeping that stat. When I played Mark in the Champions Cup final a couple of years ago, he, he did it. I think he, he may have done three or four in that match. It's more likely with the cut break, isn't it? Is yeah. that because the cue ball's coming back into that area? or? Yeah. I, don't, I think, if I remember rightly, I can't remember if I watched it back, but he potted the black twice on the trot, and then he broke again, potted three or four shots into his finish he tried to develop in shot and potted the black so he, right. he potted he potted the black three times in the frame and lost the frame <laughs> and I didn't get a shot <laughs> that was his first shot good split again but I'm not sure he's got a he, Tricky first shot he may have. That's that's his nearest red goes long. Yeah, I I wonder if the yellow he's nearest to might sneak in the left centre. Looks tight, doesn't it? it? Does. If it does though, and you can clear that yellow, then all the yellows are there. Yep. 
Four ball plant on the reds, cut the first one onto the next one, to the next one, to the next one. <laughs> <laughs> Not fancy that, Dan. If he takes that, I'll buy you a pint, have you? <laughs> no, it's a tough, tough one, this. Just shows Pool's a strange game, doesn't it? He's had simple finishes the last two frames. Now it's hits a good break again and not a lot to go at. Yeah, I think he can get the two ball plant, can't he? Into the... Can he? I reckon so. I reckon but he's, he's it leaves it, it leaves him two tough yellows, doesn't it? So, uh, Sorry, two tough reds. So he's, it, it gives him a bit of work to do. Yeah, you're right. Well, that's not bad. But yeah, he's got... Three tough reds, arguably. I think. Yeah. I don't yeah. think that the one nearest the black spot goes in the right centre. It might do. It might just sneak in. I don't think he can risk with this just skimming it in off the yellow to open his other red up. It'd have to be really thin, or he wouldn't. He wouldn't get the pot. I think he might be going off the other yellow. Hmm. Yeah. I think he was hoping he'd go off maybe two there. Just, but he's opened his two of his bad reds up. He's only got one problem now. It's a good shot. Is that yellow far enough up table, nearest the right centre, that he can't play off that one? He's just looked at it there. It does look slightly high, doesn't it? But it, 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 I feel like it's one of those where it might hit the jaw, yeah. Mm. And then you look on the overhead and you think it's probably enough pocket next to it. Yeah. I think the, he could definitely do it off the, uh, the left-hand red of the two, but getting over there would be more difficult. Yes. Does that red pass? The, the red he's looking at now. This passes to the bottom right. Could he screw into it? Even? Yeah, I'm thinking he's screwing into it now. Ideally, maybe like a little half ball flick on the yellow would be great. Oof. Didn't keep a bit, bit fortunate to still be at the table and not going off, so he's got a chance of pulling something out. But I don't think it's disastrous, actually. No. I think the, the red in the bottom half of the table will go to the bottom right. Um, and the, the the awkward red now passes the eight ball. Yeah, he's definitely got an opportunity still. Yeah, it was a bit risky. He's playing the double. Oh, does it need to treble? Oh, it did double. Oh, it did look tight, the double. Yep. It's going to go down as a miss, and it's going to go down as Ross Fernie's second opportunity of the match, and this one is really... You've got to take these out. Yeah, it's... If he doesn't get these, I think uh, it's game, set and match. This is his chance to get one on the board. Just go the right way. Keep it simple. I think I'd try and uh, take the one on the right-hand side of the table after this middle one to leave the to the one over the left middle and then get on the black off his bottom yellow. I think that's the way I'd go. It uh, all depends on this first shot that he plays. In a perfect world, mm. you want to take this yellow last, don't you? But Yeah, that's not an so option. No. He's, he's underdone that a little bit. He really wanted to be straight on that. Screw back out for the middle one. Got nice reaction on that, though. So he's, he's back where he needed to be. Really have to dig into the cue ball. Good shot. I feel a bit better after this because you know when uh, there's a lot of people watching at home and you, you see frames dripping away for three nil, four nil. You just really want one on the board. Yep. It's important here that he leaves enough angle. Shot. Yeah, he's judged that well. He's played it with a little bit of top that took nicely. Yeah, it was a tricky finish from the break for Mark, wasn't it? And he just never really quite got on that, uh, his trickiest ball. 
Yes. Yeah, he... Well, you're well in the end. Um, it was a little bit lax from Mark, but it was a tricky finish to start with. Yeah, it wasn't easy at all. It's one of those, again, where when you're on the shot clock and you're rushing into shots, it's uh, you might go a different way if you've got a bit more time to work it out. Cool, calm, and collected as awkward as always. As awkward, <laughs> doesn't look awkward at all. No, absolutely not. <laughs> He's certainly no couch potato, is he? Mark? He's um, neither of these two are actually. Third time lucky for us, maybe. His first two breaks have been pretty poor. Yep, can he make a ball? Can he keep the cue ball on the table? Sticking with front ball. It's a lot better. Any luck? No, I don't think so. None whatsoever. And actually, you, you feel for him there because that mm. is that's a good break. Yeah. Doesn't look like he's left a yellow. So it, 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 Mark's going to go reds, and he's just got he'll have one positional shot to play to get on his. There's one one sort of trickiest red, isn't there? Yep, just the one up by the top left corner. That really is the only problem. He's got two balls near it to, to just stun across behind it for the same pocket, so... Just a shake of the head there from Ross, showing, showing a bit of emotion. Can you try and move that red now? Is it worth it? Screw down onto the cushion and back into the area. I think he'd like an angle on one of the two on the boat line just to stun over across it, really, and uh, take it into the... Same pocket. It's where he can hold the white off this one. Oh, he's got a bit now. He's found a little gap. Just the wrong side. Yeah, that's a little tricky, that. He probably if he plays this with a bit of pace, he'll catch the yellow. Could maybe play it with right-hand side and try and flick off the yellow and take a red to middle next. If he gets far enough across. Yeah, it'd have to be the right hand one, wouldn't yeah. it? Yeah. He has to play it, it's just uh it's just where his white lands after. If he doesn't get far enough across he could take the the other one long. Yeah. Just run this through and take one of those two long to the bottom right. There's options available. I think he will try and use the yellow. He might try and screw so off the yellow and back out. Yeah, I think that's what he's playing. Oh. Well, it's not quite disaster, but you didn't want to be taking this red in the bottom half of the table. Yeah, there was, was a little bit more risk playing it that way because it, it was hitting the yellows harder and it could do a bit of damage, which they have done. It's just tricky now. He's running into the black. The black could go safe. It's where he lands after. Time's running out. So close to potting that. If that had just flicked the yellow, that was him. It's come out pretty bad, though. Uh, I don't know. I think he may be able to take the long one and screw across and hold it. It's playing so reactive, this table. Oh, no, it looks thin from that angle, though, so maybe not. Yeah, I don't think it's great. I mean, he might have to run into that red. Yeah, I think so. Just bump it. He's screwing this, is he? It's a bit more of a draggy one. Yeah. That's pretty good. It is, but he's got to be good on the last red to, to have a shot on the black. Yeah, because you want to be over to the left, really. Yeah. He's um, got to sort of flirt with the middle pocket here, I think. Just screw around to the area of the middle pocket. I think that was a risky way of playing it because you've got to get so perfect. I'd, I'd have played it on it in the other corner. It was risking the in off, but if you play it right, it's a lot easier shot to get get down on the black. Might have to play this off the. Can he get across? Off the yellow's not really on. Oh, what a shot! What yeah, a positional right. shot that is. On a string. 
a heartbreaker for Ross Fernie. Yeah, he gave Ross a bit of hope there with the, on his second or third red when he didn't come good on it. But uh, yeah, he's a bit superhuman at times, isn't he, Mark Boyle? Certainly the man to beat at the moment. And, uh, he takes some beating, and Ross is staring down the barrel here. Five-one, the lead now for Mark. really tough to see a comeback from this far back yeah you do, see them. You do but the way mark's breaking it's it's hard to see him giving up too many chances isn't it the man at the top of your screen there hunched over the table looking a bit confused he pulled off the comeback of the century yesterday against oh, richard man known yeah, for yeah. comebacks yeah, yeah, yeah. Offield. Um, six two down against simon ward he's got to do it again by the looks <laughs> of it has, yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. He's got a, as big a mountain to climb. Race the nine, of course, so a bit more time. Yeah, to a little bit of time, but... You don't really want to be 5-0 down ever. Not at all. Is this a, oh, no, it's not a dry one. No. Just one bad red again. Yep. And actually, the eight ball, he's got a lovely ball to get on it. Yeah. So there's a gap there between those two. Oh, it, fl it flies in, yeah. He's yeah, just yeah. got this red on the side cushion to worry about. It will double if he needs. He could actually go at it first shot, cut the one cut the one in the bottom left and try and come across. It's a big target. Clip the yellow or the red, you probably are going to be on it. Yeah, just touch your right-hand side on this. I think it's worth a go. Like yeah, you say, okay. just if you can avoid the gap. It's hard to see it not coming out, to be honest. Always got it a bit. See, got that a little wrong. Needed a touch of stun on it. It's actually really bad news because mm. it's, it's blocked off the double now as well. So really, he needs to move that in the next couple of shots. He does, but... Looking sort of a couple of shots ahead, if he leaves the one to middle next, he's not going to leave another ball to land on, so he'd, he'd have to land on the ready moves. So. Needs to be high here. It's a nice angle. I think he might have to play this quite slow and just try and nudge the red, just to nudge it down the cushion past the yellow. Yeah, the, the thing with that is you, the, the cue ball can always end up in behind the yellow, can't mm. it? So... That yeah. was the problem. He wasn't he wasn't landing on the other two reds. So even though it would have been tricky if he had a shot on that, it's uh, you always like to, when you go into a ball, you like to think there's going to be another one to land on. Well, can you see from here, guys? I, I can't see very much. I mean, there's obviously a plant. You can't cut that red. Yeah, I think the plant's worth a go. Where Russ has still got two bad yellows near the black, so missed it by quite a long way. Really tough, wasn't it? It is with the time as well, because you got to. Those are the sort of shots you got to work out. And you try and work out where you're aiming the first red to pop the second, and he didn't really have time to do it. Somewhat hampered, hampered queuing as well. Yeah, very much. Tricky finish though. This can he go long on this yellow? Screw into him, but he risk putting the putting the black or the eight ball as they call it. It's uh, a little bit awkward. Nice shot. Not sure if he can just stun a little angle out of this and take the pocket one next and work his way back up. That would that'd be ideal. Close, isn't it? It's hard to tell from the overhead. Cause yeah, he's just got enough out. That's a good shot. Did look very straight, that.
rostering enough here to perhaps keep himself in this match. As you said earlier, Gaz, you have to take out the chances when you get them from Mark, because you don't get them very often. This is it, because especially the way the game's going off the breaks, Ross isn't breaking too well, so he's not creating his own chances. So oof, that's a bit of a shocker. You either play one or the other there. You play the full-on nudge, or you come back out for the plant. Now he's... He's actually got to play the plant now. He has, he's has, running away from it. Yeah, the, the yellow could fall to the bottom cushion, the, way, the angle of it. And how's he going to get the white back out of that red? Pretty loose one from Ross. Oh. Just did enough to pinch. He didn't pot the plank clean, which obviously is, is planned, so they got better angle on the for the yellow to come to the right side of the table. It's a good shot. Yeah. Well recovered. I feel like he's a little tentative at the moment, Ross. Mm. Sort of shell shocked by Mark's early dominance in this match. He stays in it. Five Hanging two. in there. Yeah, Ross is certainly making a game of it here. It it could easily be seven nil, really, couldn't it? On the chances, so he's he probably five two down is the best he could be at the moment. I think. So yeah, I, he did. He missed. He missed. One oh yeah, and the early so early on the yeah, three, yeah, yeah, so. it could be. Yeah. And that's the thing, actually. To a certain extent, Boyle's made more mistakes than Ross. Yeah. Just the break has been so dominant that it hasn't seemed that way. That would have been a good stream game too, Clinton Marshy. But, uh, not that we're complaining. No, absolutely not. But yes, you're right. <laughs> Two names that you definitely look for in the draw. Yeah. <laughs> took a l oh no. Ooh, oh, that's, that's horrible. That's yeah. in. That's he took a bit off that and he controlled the white nicely. It didn't hit them great, but deserved a ball and then saying that he didn't really control the white great, but gone a little messy. <laughs> Yeah, it's st I still think it's unlucky. Yeah, yeah it is unlucky. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's. Uh... Um, I mean, if Mark can clear this, the red furthest left in that sort of area, I feel like the reds might be the colour here. Yeah, if he can sort of cocktail it around and stun the white out into the through the gap, would be nice just to yeah. leave himself a red next shot. It could even open up the yellow and red that are near the black spot, which would do him a little favour as well. Yep. yep. That's the one. Ooh. No, it's okay. It's a bit irritating that those two reds have gone together. Yeah, a little bit. I think he can play on it to the middle now, the top one of the two, or he could just leave a plant. I think they're a pretty dead, dead straight plant if he needs to do that later on. So he, he could play the one the white's nearest to and screw down and take it to the middle, the, one, the higher one of the two. Probably just want to get down and take that one in bulk as early as possible. Yeah, it's, well. it's one of those finishes you've got to be a little pinpoint with. Might be stunning over to the side. Yep. Take it, you've been here all week, Dan, have you? Yes. Yeah. How's, Tuesday night. How's it gone? Has it been good? It's been great. It's been yeah. a really good, fun week, actually. Good. Um, yeah, the the festival side of it. Obviously, you you arrived, what, yesterday? Yeah, yeah, we toyed with the idea of coming earlier in the week, but just didn't fit in with other things like dog sitters and different bits and all the other times we have off work as well and stuff. So, yeah, we just we just came for the main stuff. But, yeah, it, it does sound good. A pool player's life is um, incredibly limited yeah <laughs> isn't it really the amount of time we have to take off and yeah 
um, I think it's one reason why a lot of the top players either work in clubs or you know own clubs. It does make so a big difference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's it's all pool re- pool related. Yeah, so having that time to practice outside of work and being able to take that time off as well. Yeah. Doesn't want to be dead straight on this. Yeah, he put a bit of left hand side on that, but it slid on him, and uh, he's, he wanted to be a good three or four inches off the cushion more than that. Going to be a tough shot next up, I think. The red above the black is higher up the table, so that'll probably be his next one because then he can stun across for the. Yeah, he the definitely won't want to be playing that last. He's done really well, really well. That's terrific. Yeah, it's shot. perfect. Pinpoint again. Perfect again. Mark Boyle. Making the game of eight ball pool look simple as he does. I think that could. You tend to think the way the match has gone, that could be a bit of a killer blow for Ross because he's sort of hung in there to get to 5 2, and you think it's his break. Maybe if he gets to 5 3, he's in there, but it's such a big margin again. He's got to win this 7 2 from now. His, uh, his breaks have killed him somewhat, Ross. Yeah, he's had a bit of a nightmare with his breaks. Just strode out past us out of the arena for a second um, to gather his thoughts. So let's keep an eye on what's happening on those three tables in the the other half of the arena, I suppose. Yeah, it's a great setup. This to have the the three pro tables and the and the stream table in a separate room. Craig Marsh there at the table on table one. Like he's mopping up those yellows. Feels nicely. like every time we get come across Richards at the table on table on Pro Two, but he's <laughs> he's not winning any frames. So I don't know what's going on. Well, you say that, but the latest score that I can see is five two. Oh, he's got two back cards. So, so he's, he's at it again, maybe. Perhaps. Yeah. Yeah. What, yeah. what about the Craig and Dunster one? Where are we at with that one? Uh, so Craig for and Clint. All. Or all done. Sorry, Craig yeah, Brown, Liam, Liam and Craig, yeah. I was thinking Craig Marsh. Yeah. Got very confused there for a second. Craig Marsh is 2 0 up on Clint Ianson. And Craig Brown, Liam Dunster, 4 all. Although I suspect it's 5 4. Yeah. Just updated on our screens. Craig's going for a front ball break there because he's, he's quite likes a cut break. It's interesting because he was mm. cut breaking. I mean, he was the player last night that got three blacks off yeah. the break. Um, and he was cut breaking astonishingly well. He's gone dry with that one, I so think. Yeah, yeah he has. But to the point where, it, I mean, if he broke like that, he wins the tournament. Mm. It's, it was that good. It was up there with the boil. Yeah. Oh, what's Marshy done there? He's done what I like to call a marsh. <laughs> <laughs> Such a big... Th- you think, oh, it's still early in the match, but it's so big to go 3-0 or 2-1, though. It's just... Um, when you're playing someone of Clint's class, you got to tr- when you've got off to such a good start, you've got to try and keep them down. I did it against Dean. I was three one up and made a mistake. And uh, when you got the momentum, you just have to keep it. He's having a grin to himself though. So you got the black. Yeah, that's again. He's dry again when he gets the black. Seven for the weekend. <laughs> that's mad. I don't think I've ever seen that happen that often. It's a lot, isn't it? It really is, yeah. Have you ever seen it three times in a row? I can't remember to be honest, Dan, no, I'm not sure. No, I no. I don't think I have either. I think I've seen I've seen it happen twice in a row a lot. Yeah, yeah. 
but I don't think I've ever seen three in a row. The closest might be that Champions Cup. Yeah, game. yeah. <laughs> oh, Boyle then waits patiently for a second bite at the cherry. It didn't affect him last time. Ross is looking thoughtful there. Just wants a bit of table time. He's not had that much. No. no it's, it's hard, isn't it? You, you sort of sit there and you get cold and you get flustered. Has he actually had first go at all in any of the frames? I'm not sure. Not sure he has, has he? Maybe one? Yeah, one, I think. Mm. Yeah, he potted off his own break. Yeah. At once and didn't go in off. Slightly lower again on that, but I think he'll take it. Yeah, it doesn't have a red to start with, but it looks things, so I suspect it'll be yellows. They're not in bad, they're not in bad shape. No, not at all. It, it looks clustered, doesn't it? But if you can get in the right position, you can pick your way around all those four yellows in the. Yeah, I think the first shot's the big shot, really. A bit of a stretch if he takes the pocket one, probably for him. But he just he really wants to screw up the cushion or pot it thin and go up the cushion and give himself a choice of two yellows. One to the bottom corner, or one to left middle. And if he's on that perfectly, I can't see him not getting them. It does look a bit of a stretch, though. It's quite nimble, though, Mark. Yeah, I think he has to play the screw up the cushion with it being a stretch. He'd... A fraction short. Yeah, slightly. wonder if he can hop through into that yellow or if, if he slides off it. I think he just skims it. He's he's got, he can play yeah, in the middle, I, I think. Yeah, he's just on in the middle. So. Not great. Whichever one he went for, he was skimming the other yellow and giving himself a slight problem. Yeah, I mean, I think that's giving him quite a big problem, hasn't he? Because he looks, he looks really straight. Yeah, because he needs to be, yellow. he needs to be where the red is on, just above the black spot. Really, I think he, if he gets there, I think the middle, the sort of middle of the cluster of yellows and reds goes, but. If you can just pinch enough to get there with a bit of stun and side, maybe. Try to move them, but that was that was going to be tricky. Can he, see can, can he just yeah, maybe throw it in with right hand side? Looks tight. I think he's, if he does that, it, I don't see how he gets. No, I don't on think. Anything. No, he's not really on anything. May play a little safety here, but I think he's trying to throw it in. Yep. Maybe he can screw it and throw it in. I can play it off the yellow first, mm. I think. I think he just nicked the other yellow. Yeah, I think he must have done, yeah. Contact. I'm not sure that was planned. But if it was, it's a brilliant shot. Mm. Really clever. Still not easy this now, though. Unless this goes to left corner. If it does, that makes a massive difference. I think so. But it is tight. No, it does go. It does. That's right, yeah. So he's just soft, softly screw this in. A nice kiss. That's perfect. Easy game, this, isn't it? Yeah. Just all about his angle now to get on the black. Nice big area to come back across here. Just can't get a foothold, Ross, can he, really? I feel like we've hardly seen him at the table. He just hasn't, really, has yeah. he? He, um... 
he hasn't had the chances to be really firmly in this match. No. But equally, the odd missed chance makes such a difference. Yeah, that first, second frame, was it, where um, where Mark missed and Ross didn't take advantage? It's it sort of set the tone, didn't it? Yeah, and it, even though it looks now like he's being hammered, it's amazing how different the scoreline feels between 7-2 and 6-3. Definitely, yeah. It, it affects later frames as well. Who's to say all the, the next couple of frames would have gone as they did if, if Ross had taken that chance out? You just don't know. Score, scoreboard pressure and different things. Mark Boyle then two frames away from a professional semi-final. Our grand final event here on the Isle of Man. Ross really hasn't caught those well. Is he going to get lucky? Nothing really. Or maybe Nothing, a yellow? Uh, no. Would have needed some serious spin on, I think, that one to drop. Surprised he hasn't changed, really, because he's not. it's a good one, really, in the match yet. No, I feel like he's cut across the front of the mm. pack on every single one, to be yeah, honest. Yeah, he has. Not an easy finish, this, though. No, I think that yellow closest to the cue ball is really awkward, isn't it? It's probably the worst place on a pool table, that, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's just it's hard to play position on because you can't get too close to it. You'd, if you risk moving it, you're bringing in offs into play, and it's not it, it's not really doubleable unless you leave like a thin sort of cross double, is it? Yeah, and you don't want to play it from the bottom half of the table either because the jaw comes in. Yeah. The, you know, there's so many things that can go wrong with that. He's on it now, if he fancies it. He's quite nicely opened up all the reds there, so if he doesn't, uh, if he doesn't clear up, Russ will have a chance. Play this as a sort of in or over, maybe. Get the pocket if it doesn't drop. Don't really be want to screw back in case that white just sucks into the middle. No problem. I looked. A little bit kickish, I think. I think it's just skidded on him a little bit. Yeah, it made its way in safely in the end, but it looked a fraction wide. Mm. I wonder if he has to play the yellow just above the one he's going to pot now in off the red to open the pocket for, for his yellow further down the table. Might sneak in if he gets right behind it, but... He's looking now. Yes. I think he will be playing that yellow into that pocket, so you, you may as well play it off the red if uh, if it needs to open up. Yeah, it was low risk. Yeah. He's a bit short there. Just left him a nice angle just to uh, float down. Makes the posses a bit more missable. If he is going to play it off the red, then I suppose that makes it a nicer angle still, but has he got to be careful about that? Yeah, I think that's the, the issue. I think the issue if you play it off the red now is the red just going in, blocking the yellow completely. If it's got half a pocket, I think he'll just play on it half a pocket. Well, so gone in between the two. Yeah, neither. Has he left a perfect angle to play the skilly first shot as well, maybe? Yeah. Looks pretty good, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, Ross doesn't, doesn't, Ross doesn't miss these, I don't think. Oh, you oh. say that. <laughs> <laughs> Cursed him, haven't I? Absolutely. Didn't really punch it, as you say. He just uh, may be playing the snooker at some stage now, then. Well, could, there's still skill shot options there. It's one of those, isn't it? If they're touching ball, actually, it's not that hard if you get No, right if you get it. right on it, yeah. Plus, he's got the one over the left middle as well. Oh, yeah, that's probably the option, isn't it? 
Just got to get it right off that one though, because there's a big uh, little sort of space where you can get the white wrong, and the white would follow the yellow in. Like he's going after it now. This is this that is looks thin. Like he's got to pot it thin. Yeah, it looks a bit. Uh, is he I think he's just thinking he could pot that thinner and get them both, but he's got it. He's got it wrong, hasn't he? Didn't really look on, did it? No, no, it did. I didn't think it was. It's it's a lot easier for us though. We got the benefit of an overhead view. Yeah. I mean, what you wouldn't give as a pool player to be able to have an overhead view of the <laughs> be table very handy. Yeah. Every single shot. Yeah. So we're getting a safety shot. There's not been many in this match. I think that that might be one. I think it <laughs> might be. Just wonder if he's left enough of the gap there. I'm it's fairly sure it's a social snooker, but just a little swerve. Yeah, I'm not. The thing is, if he if he tries to land behind it off two, he does leave that skill shot you were talking about earlier. So, well, he's. I think he's. It's the other one that he's looking at for the total. So that's fair. Mm. I think if the black wasn't there, I think he'd definitely play the swerve to try and uh, maybe do some damage with it, but he can bring the black sort of in play on that shot. Yeah, it looks like that's the shot. Nailed it. That re that yellow needs to travel. Well, it's, it's just far enough off the cushion that I think this doubles. We saw one square up earlier, didn't we? So if he hits this hard enough... and. It's just about getting the white out of the way, really, because uh, the, the squaring up will help him. It's there. It's Ooh. there. The cue ball has held up in time as well. He's got a sort of awkward little one into the centre pocket, but this is a shot that you don't see Mark Boyle miss very often. Yeah, it's uh, it's another one Ross like get away really that that first skill shot when Mark missed that'd be something he'd get ninety five out of hundred really. Out of the pocket once again eight two. Oh, they just got the scoreboard wrong. <laughs> I saw that happen at the last event, the didn't last it? Event. Yeah, I was just going to say it was Mark Boyle as well. Was it? Yeah, but it, Mark Boyle lost that one. It was um, it was in the open against Rob Donkin. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Before the final, we watched it when we got back. Yeah. After an early bath. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Look at that face. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's um, surprising that they both thought it because normally one person will think it and the other one won't know, and they just uh, they both they both thought it was game over there. Mark Boyle. His break just needs this. Rachel looks relaxed for going on in a minute. She looks yep. uh, ready to go. The next match, Rachel Tucker will take on her partner, Deb Birchall. In the Elite Ladies Final, that's next on your screens. Yellow going to drop. I mean, does that make it slightly more interesting that it hasn't? Not really. I think he's going to have to take. Yeah, I think he goes yellows now. Maybe plays the plant first shot. Yeah. He could take the one over the pocket. It's at the overhead, the plant looks easier than on the uh, on the main pitcher actually. So maybe just take the pocket one and get yourself on the balls and work your way in. Just really all about the first two shots I think this one Dan if he gets the first two shots right I think we're shaking hands in a minute again yep I think so too really good yep let's control that nicely
disappointment etched on the face of Ross Fern either. It looks like he's wishing it was over in the last game. He's got to sit there for an extra five minutes and stew it out. It's hard to blame him, to be honest. Yeah. It's really not gone his way. You can um, you can make the argument he hasn't broken well enough. No, he's, he won't be happy with how he's broken. He has two or three... I think there's maybe been three frames where Mark's missed his clearance and Ross hasn't punished him, which is what you need to do at this level. It's not that Mark's played four, flawless. He's been by far the better player, but he's had all the chances, really, hasn't he? 100%, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I think like you say, the first sort of six, seven frames could have been shared. Yeah. Since then, Mark's really kicked another gear. And I think, I think the the key thing is every time Mark's run slightly out of position, he's had another option available. Yeah. I don't think that's been the case with Ross. No, this is this is it. Yeah, he's he's always been sort of chasing things. Yeah, his mistakes have been fatal, whereas mm. Mark's mistakes have been. You know, he's he's got away with a couple, I suppose, or dug himself out. Of but it. it's going to be nine two. So we played eleven frames, and I think Ross has had first go at the table in one out of the eleven, hasn't he? So yeah. you're not going to win matches at this level. No, that's true. But what a consummate performance from Mark! Going to take some stopping. Mark Boyle through to the semi-finals. A brilliant performance. 9-2 over his compatriot, Ross Fernie. Ross never really got the going. Never really got the chance to get going. But um, great performance from Mark, Gaz. Yeah, superb. Yeah, he broke really well after the first one wasn't great. And then he started breaking well. He was getting chances off most of Ross's breaks as well, unfortunately for Ross. So, yep, he's going to take some stopping in this tournament. Definitely the man to beat, I'd say. Yeah, he's, uh, there are plenty out there that can, but oh, I'm yeah. with you. I think for me, he's, he's gone favourite for the tournament after that performance. That was a an exceptional performance. Here are the players who are vying to join him in the semi-finals. Dean Shields and Rich Swaffield there at the top of the screen. That's 7-2 to Dean at the moment, and looks like Swaffy's taken leave of absence for a minute to collect his thoughts. Yeah. I think every time we've gone, Dean's been sat in that chair, but he's managed <laughs> to win seven <laughs> frames. <is it? laughs> uh, Craig Brown there is at the table and is currently 6-4 up against Liam Dunster. Yeah, he's got a good chance to make it 7-4. Just queue a couple of nice balls in and he's, he'll be on the black. And finally, on the left of your screen, Craig Marsh there at the table. He leads Clint Ianson, the world champion, by four frames to two. So that may be another one for Marshy there. He's played that well. Hit a bit of form lately. Yeah, absolutely. He's uh, been in excellent form. European champion in yeah, yeah. Uh, a European event in Malta, wasn't he? I think he enjoyed that one. Yes, I think so. <laughs> if the videos I've seen are anything to go by. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so he's getting another one on the board, Craig, possibly doing the same. Yeah, seven four is a nice lead. Excellent stuff. Yeah, it's just making it my defeat even more frustrating. All these big boys getting beat. I was, <laughs> I thought if I won, I'd probably have Corey, and Corey lost. And then you'd think that Liam, after after Mark Farnsworth wasn't here, you'd think that Liam would be the the man in that top quarter of the draw, and he's. Uh, he might be biting the dust, so they're obviously all class players, every match is different, so Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you for your time, Gaz. It's been a pleasure. And um we're gonna head over to the studio now where our winner of our previous match, Mark Boyle, is with Mark Pickworth. Cheers, Dan. Thanks, Dan, thanks Gareth, and uh, here I am with Mark Boyle. Mark Boyle. After yesterday's performance, you've you've looked a lot more uh, better out there. Is that down to a bit of the climate in here? <laughs> yeah, I came in here last night and stuck the heating on. 
So, uh, no, no, it feels it feels a lot warmer in here now compared to yesterday. And you can tell the way the balls are breaking. They're actually getting movement out of them now, where yesterday I felt like I wasn't, you know. So, no, I can't complain. Yeah, and your break, you know, it uh, it worked very well today. You know, sometimes you're getting three or four balls and then you, when you weren't potting, you'd either put in the black or something yeah, else was happening. I got lucky a few times with potting the black. Uh, and then there was one break, there was four reds just sitting there, you know, so I got lucky. And then Ro uh, Ross got kicked in twice as well. Well, I think it was kicked, well, he definitely got kicked in once, it was really bad. And then I think once he went straight into the corner, and that kind of turned the game a wee bit in my favour. So it was definitely the, the breaks decided that game. And I think when I spoke to Ross, you know, uh, after he won his previous match, uh, just before you two went on, you know, spoke about his break and he was yeah. swapping it in that match then. Mm -hmm. <coughs> it's just like he's not find his comfort zone in the break. Is this something you think he should be working on? It's just <coughs> if, if, if it's not working, you've got to change it somehow because otherwise it's just going to keep not working. So you, you've got to try and... Every table's different, you know. Sometimes the, the front ball's better on some tables and then other tables the side break's better, you know. So it's... You've just got to try and find it. And when you play a fellow Scotsman, you know, you've obviously mm -hmm. got the bragging rights again against Ross. Did you really want to make sure you had a really good start against him? Because exactly that's what happened. The bragging rights really don't come into it. Whereas Scots guys, we just, uh, whoever wins, we just wish, wish them all the best, you know, because we can all beat, beat each other on every day. Well, any day, sorry. But uh, what was the question again? Um, about on. the bragging rights <laughs> with Ross and that, you know, and also yeah, about you, you taking the the lead. You know, did you always like to try and try, try and take a big lead at the start? Oh, you just you've just got to, you can't you've got to think of no mistakes, no mistakes at the the start. You know, you just got to go like take your chance when it comes because if you don't take your chances at the start, you might start taking them at the end, but then the chances at the start have cost you. So you've got to just take your chances when they come. And as you said, you know, you Scottish players, you're all very, very close, you know, when one player's playing, you're all sat in each other's corner. Is that something that you've always done throughout yeah. of every, you know, part and parcel of any competition? off the table, you know, so um, it's, there's, there's no any animosity between any of us guys. We just get on really well. We're all kind of cut for the same cloth, you know. We all love the game. We get on, we're so easy going. So it's just, and, and you get a good laugh with them. So that's part of the... The, the weekend away, you get to catch up and go for bites to eat and stuff like that and get a wee catch up with everybody. And you've got a bit of a rest period now before you go you play your semi-final. Uh, right. Have got any, uh, what are you going to be doing next? I'll get my dinner. I'll go and, I'll go and grab a bite. I've not I've had a wee bite today, but I'll go and get a nice dinner. And then, I uh, don't know what time, how long have I got, do you think? Well, so I'll, I'll on, roll on, roll off in it. This next right. match up, the ladies, fight, ladies Elite Final is next. Right. OK, right, well, I'll let Perfect. you go and prepare. Enjoy well done for today. Oh, thank and, you very much, And we'll Mark. see you again very soon. Oh, All right, well done, Mark Boyle. And just as Mark Boyle goes off for his dinner, Kevin Barton's, has he been fed? Have we fed, have we fed you or anything? No, don't no think so. I, I've certainly not been fed, but uh, <laughs> Mark Boyle's certainly feeding this audience with some uh, sublime pool, that is for certain. Um, what performance, you know, who would have thought 9-2 against uh, a player of the calibre of Ross Fernie, but uh, it just shows... Uh, He's in some cracking form. Yeah, and we saw Ross Fernie. I mean, you didn't see Ross Fernie because you were playing yourself, but Ross Fernie, he showed some brilliant form against Cav Robinson. And, he, mm. and you really thought that, yes, he could probably go, you know, really get to the semi-final, maybe the final, but he's come up against an absolute machine in Mark Boyle there. Yeah, he has, and, um, you know, you, you could tell, uh, you, you know, these top players, they want this title. You know, this is the second title of the year. Uh, in terms of importance after the World Championships, it's one with the you know the second highest uh, prize fund as well. So they have come to this event all focused, all here for one thing and one thing only. And um, you know that they are you know very professional in their attitude and approach to the to the matches. And uh, you know they're giving it their all, but you know there can only be one winner. Yeah, Mark Boyle already in the semi-final. All the other quarter-finals are going off on there, and uh, there's some close matches in there as well. Yeah, there is, and uh, you know we can just sort of see uh, Liam Dunster. He's playing Craig Brown there, involved in a in a thriller. It's uh, it's nip and tuck there. 
um, and Craig Marsh and Clint Ayanson, they've just uh, set out and uh, I know Richard Swaffield is he's continuing his giant killing, he's, uh, he's involved in a battle as well, so uh, some absolutely fantastic matches going on on the uh, outer tables. Yeah, I mean, uh, obviously Richard Swaffield would be the, a, a real outside favourite to make to the final, but mm. he's been playing some great stuff this weekend so far. Yeah, he's, I was speaking with Richard on, on Wednesday and um, he's come with a completely different approach. He, um, he used to play quite a bit of snooker. Um, and that used to keep, keep his pool quite sharp and so since he's gone into the pro ranks I think he's dropped the snooker and just focused on pool um, and I think he's lost a little, a little bit of that sharpness so he's gone back to playing some snooker and uh, I know he was he was you know, feeling a lot more confident coming into this weekend and uh, you know, he's beat Simon Ward and Corey Reese. I mean, not many people have got that on the CV. No, absolutely not. So, well, the ladies' elite finals next. Mm. Birchall against Rachel Tucker. What we got in store for our audience here tonight? Well, it's a real family affair, <coughs> isn't it? I just thought that uh, at the end of the final, it, uh, it's still uh, they'll still be talking to each other around the, d the dinner table. But yeah, it's it's the top two seeds and um, you know the two form players in the ladies' elite uh, section at the moment. Deb, who's you know virtually won everything. Uh, and uh, and Rachel, who's, who's hot on her heels and you know looking for looking for more silverware. So um, I think uh, you know, we've got the two best players, and I think we're in for an absolutely cracking final. Yeah, Rachel Tucker won the last final um, back in Coventry, and then Deb Burchell, she's made three out of four mm. finals, which is a terrific achievement as well. It? But both had you know uh, quite easy wins in the seventh final. No offence mm. to the players like Ashley Bird and Beck Sweeney, but you know came came through it quite nicely. Well, yeah, uh, like I say, I think they are, they are the two form players in the ladies' elite section, so it's not a surprise that they're in the final. And, um, you know, <laughs> they both want to win this as desperate. There might be, uh, you know, a couple outside of, uh, of pool, but, um, you know, on the table, there's, there's going to be no favours. Well, we sort of queued it up nicely there, Kevin, and we're going to get right over to the ladies' elite final, which is coming next. So I'm going to hand over now to Dan Fairway and Rihanna Graham. Thank you, Pickers. Yep, I am joined for her first stint in the commentary box ever by Rhiannon Graham, ladies, elite ladies number two at the moment. Whose crazy idea was this? Uh, yours, I think. <laughs> yeah, Birchall v. Rachel Tucker, then. Obviously, a battle, an inter household battle, this. Yeah, they're going to be going out for a lot of drinks after this, aren't they? <laughs> yeah, I should think they are. One of them slightly more annoyed than the other. Yes, definitely. Good matchup, though. They both had a really good season. Yeah. Email referee for our ladies' final as well, Fiona. Fiona Atkinson there. Yes, the ladies. Absolutely. No. Do you, is it fair to say that Deb's favourite for this race? It's really difficult to ever look past Deb winning everything she admits herself she wants to win everything um and looking at some of her results this week already she's very much in form um so yeah it's hard to look past but having obviously played against Rach in the last elite final I know very much what Rach is capable of when she's on a game so it, it could be a really good really good matchup dry break to start off from Rachel slightly disappointing because look like that yellow over the right hand pocket I mean it looks in from the overhead yeah but it's just not quite there and well that forces Deb's hand into yellows yeah still a bit of a tricky table though yeah the two yellows sort of closest together and they're going to take a bit of getting on well it's also the one nearer nearer to the black on the left yeah, it doesn't go in either corner. No, it's trying to get the position to get on it in the middle pocket, isn't it, really? So whether she tries to do that now off one of these reds. Yeah. Oh, she's missed the yellow. That was careless. But from Rachel's point of view, she's, she's actually still coming to a far tougher table. Reds would be okay, it's just that one over the over the pocket with the yellow covered, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, I think you can see her plan here. She's going to try and leave an angle to play the skill shot now. Yeah. I think she might have overrun it a fraction, but the cloth's really grippy on this table. I think if she digs into that, she can make that.
Yeah, the only question is what she's leaving after that. She's not going for it. It perhaps feels it's a bit thin. Try and leave herself on a, a second chance now. Well, she's gone for it. Oh. Well, she's gone for it off that. That's, that couldn't have come out much worse. No. Um, I, I think it actually might be a good thing for her that she's... She's tied up those two yellows in the middle, hasn't she now? It, exactly, yeah. And if she can potentially get this red out and leave the white difficult. Yeah, just drift the white onto the bottom rail. That's lovely. Yep. Really nice shot. Left decent what, chance now for Rach. Yeah, I don't know what Deb was trying to achieve there, but to be fair, it was such a good safety shot from Rachel that I don't think there was anything that she could achieve particularly. No, without playing a, a sort of daft pot into the long pot into the opposite corner with that yellow, and that was very little control on the white, so... Oh, that's a wild one. She's got away with it a bit though, putting that yellow on the cushion, because otherwise everything for Deb was there. I think both of these two need to just settle down into the game a little bit. Yeah. Um, do you think it'll be difficult for them playing each other? Ordinarily, for a lot of people, you'd say yes, but I think they've done it so many times now that it's just another day at the office in a way. They'll both be equally wanting to, wanting to win, but will be equally happy for the other if they lose. So, you know, I don't, I don't think they've ever really struggled playing each other. They just do their best, and whatever happens, they're they're happy. So lined up the double. It was, I don't think she ever had a full pocket. Um, again though, reds are awkward. That red next to the right centre pocket is actually really tricky. That definitely doesn't drop in the centre. No, not at all. And it's difficult to get on it down the rail as well. Got the other red at the other end. If she gets the opportunity, it might even be worth trying to cover the middle pocket with that one and just clipping it across it and blocking the way for that yellow. She's going for probably the most difficult pot she could take on now. Hasn't quite made it. Not the end of the world, you would think. I mean, she's covered the pocket for those two yellows now, so it makes it a much trickier finish for for Debbie, even if she does get this pot. Yeah, could she, I don't know. Could she cut the one she's nearest to? Cut it back into the left centre. It looks really tight, but on the overhead, I feel like there's enough distance between the two balls. No, I, I was going to say... Sh oh! Whoops. Well, that was thin. That was the shot I would have gone for, but it was it was thin. Not quite that thin, though. <laughs> not, not that thin. Like you say, these, these two are still just trying to settle. It's probably just a bit of nerves at the moment, but it's a good chance for Rach to get a difficult ball out now, though. She's trying to play the yellow onto it. It's a bit tentative, that. I feel mm. like she could have gone at that quite a lot harder. Yeah, definitely. I don't think she's covered the middle pocket for that red she's closest to. No. Um, she still have half a pocket still, to go at. Yeah. If she had, she could have taken that now and played a plant. Yeah. That might be the next shot, you know. It still just seems very nervy. There's a little bit of sort of stabbing at things at the moment where they'd normally be queuing a little bit smoother, but that's just settling into the first frame, isn't it? So. Yeah. That's wide. Mm. Well, this is a reprieve for Deb. 
wonder whether if she clips this in the middle, she can kick one of those yellows out into the open, away from that pocket. Yeah, I think you're right. I think that's... I actually think that's almost frame ball. Um, if she gets it right and, and lands down down this end of the table, then... I think ideal would be a full ball contact, because then you're still going to be on the one to the left centre as well. Yeah, exactly. That's all... That doesn't want to go up in behind the eight. But that's... that's it. Mm, it's a tough pot, but I think she can still clip that into the middle, can she? Or maybe is the black covering it? I think so. I think that's fine. Yeah, yeah I think she's okay there. It can be deceptive the angles we get in the <laughs> yeah. box. Um, yeah, I think she can she can drop this in the middle, and I don't think that the the yellow in the top of the table, I think that will still pass as well. That's a nice part for the top left. So it came out okay that, but it looks yeah like it could have gone very wrong. Whether she plays this hesitantly or just tries to run it through that little bit to make her last pot easier. Oh, wow. Well, you said. Yeah. And she's gone in between the two shots, basically, <laughs> yeah. there. Yeah. Um, you suggested two options, <laughs> and Deb took neither. <laughs> but she's there, and I'm not, so ignore me. What do I know? I mean, you've been to two of these finals now. But <laughs> in all seriousness, you understand these pressures. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Um, There's a reason I bottled it in both of them. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's it's very different when you're out there on the on the stream table, um, especially if in the ladies' game. We're not as used to it as a lot of the professional men, so it, it um, it's quite unfamiliar and can take a bit longer to settle into that kind of environment. Do you find that the shot clock affects you quite heavily? Or? I expected it to, but not as much as I thought, because I am quite a quick player naturally. I think it definitely affects the naturally less attacking players yeah. a bit more. Um, I actually found in the last final that I probably should have slowed down. I was trying to play my shots with at least 10 seconds left, when actually I had more than enough time to take a second look at some of them. And um, But I think that's just again lack of experience of learning to manage the the shot clock that a lot of the ladies don't don't get and we are really fortunate now that as as elite ladies we're getting much more opportunity than previously to get get used to that environment it's just got to be a little bit careful here just get the cube far enough over to the right hand side of the table leave a nice natural angle on that last red yeah, I think with the with way this frame's going, they just need to keep it simple and just take out a nice, clean finish now. I should never speak again. <laughs> <laughs> Your first commentator's curse, and I was here for it. Oh, so wonderful. Um, I'm, I'm sure much, Rachel's going to thank me for it later. I don't know how much damage she's done there. I don't know if, if Deb sneak? can squeeze past and cover the pocket. Yeah. She's going to try. She doesn't want doesn't this want in. This oh. I didn't even think she had that much of the pocket looking at it on the overhead. No. DB table, a little bit more slidey. Yeah. A little bit. She's got, it's got to be accurate, but that's not a bad shot. Not with where the red's landed on the... Yeah, no, it's really good. It's actually... It's going to be really difficult for Rach to get out from here. Yeah. To the point where I think she might have to play a safety rather than go for that pot. Yeah, contain it. Just play off this red nearest the black and sneak in behind the black or something. Her extension, so needs to go here. Oh, doesn't want to make the double, does she? No. Well, I mean, it's not a great chance, but she's left. She's left Deb a chance. It's just not an easy chance. But we've seen how good at potting Deb is. So I think Deb could play safe here. Really? My attacking brain's on. I don't know if she will, um, but I think she could just nudge into the black half ball. Yeah, possibly. I think maybe the way this frame's gone, she'll feel like she should, but no, I think she's going for it. Yeah, that's a pot. Terrific eight ball in the end ends what was a very scrappy frame from Deb Birchall and Rachel Tucker, and it's Deb who takes the lead. <laughs> I think Deb's facial expression has shown what we're all feeling right there. I think they're both going to be very glad that frame's over. Yeah. Even though Deb did take that frame, I think it'll have helped them both just settle and 
got the bad shots out of the way and hopefully feel a bit more comfortable going into the next frame. Well, they both look fairly relaxed at least. Yeah. So. I mean, I don't think there's a pool player alive that doesn't know what that frame feels like. Yeah. Um, just one of those where you just can't get over the line. Yeah. They both had chances there and they'll both have been disappointed not to take them out sooner, but leave it behind you and start again. It's in Rachel's break. Just about dry. What can Deb do? It's a lovely split. She's she's caught those so sweet. That's really nice. Were it not for the eight ball, yellows would be a dream. Oh, I'd, I'd definitely be inclined to take yellows. It's just thinking about the last ball to get onto that black, isn't it? I don't know if is there a gap if you left the yellow, yellow on the cushion the bottom left. Yeah. Yeah. Is there a gap then to just drop on the eight ball straight into the middle? Yeah, that's that's the that's the way I could see without having to cannon into any reds and make it messy. Just depends whether that gap's there. If it's if it's too skinny, then you yeah. might not go for that. It's how confident you are on uh, comfortable on how the table's running and everything, isn't it? Really, as to how confident you are to leave yourself accurately on it if it does go. Yeah. As to some extent, just for less margin for error, you'd potentially look at just sneaking in behind it and taking it long. Because at least then you've got a bit more margin for error if, if your position runs out slightly. Yeah, that is the other option. She's working her way round here and doesn't seem to have given too much thought to the, the, the situation of the black. So, overdone that slightly. Might just be hiding it well and it's all inside her head. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, she definitely would have preferred that just neatly in the middle. Well, this is interesting because now her, l her final yellow is a different ball. Which actually isn't awful because the black does go with a bit of a back cut into that corner. Be a bit of an awkward pot, but definitely doable if she lands nicely on it. Just get in and out here first, that's Ooh. disaster. I thought she was going to um, top out of there with a bit of running side and yeah. she's almost tried to screw out. I'm not sure I would have been playing to cannon into any of those reds. I would have just avoided them and tried to yeah, make the way round onto the last yellow and try and just at least leave yourself a, a shot on the black even if it was a bit of a tougher pot. Oh, that's it's a good, good hit. contact. Is it going to cover a pocket? No. It's not. So a great chance this for Rachel. Reds are lovely now, all the yellows are out of the way. Yeah, it's always easier when there's no other oh, colours yeah. left on the table, isn't it? Yeah. That's where it can be difficult when you're uh, an attacking player and you miss your last ball. It's just leave it very much open for your opponent. It's interesting that Rach has decided to leave that red there. That you did think surprise that's quite me. a negative mindset because it's obviously she's left it there because the yellow doesn't go now. Yeah. Um, do you think that's a bit too negative? I think had um, had she won the first frame and and had she been feeling a bit more settled, then she maybe wouldn't have have left it and would have taken it first. But maybe it's just while she's trying to settle into the game. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. Just being a little bit more reserved, having that kind of backup plan. Yeah, I definitely think um, if she was feeling more confident on it, probably should have taken it first and then worked her way down the table. But I think my issue with that shot is that's now got to be her last red, which means she's going to have to play a decent positional yeah. shot on the eight ball. But then I suppose with no yellows down there, she can pretty much land anywhere and have, have a chance at the black. Yeah, but given <sighs> what's happened before in this game, you want to be right behind it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And that's not awful, she's left it long, and if that yellow doesn't... Yeah, I don't think it sneaks. No, she'll, I think she'll just have to play it soft and hope the yellow stays over the pocket. 
she hits the left hand side, she should be over. That's yeah. okay. Well that's, well, that's a good shot, yeah. but she's going to be in trouble with the next one, you'd think. Yeah. Yeah, very comfortable safety here, isn't it? Yeah, and it's so easy to block the up and down as well. Yeah. Um, I mean, the up and down's already already covered, isn't it? Mm, is it? I, well, I'm sort of surprised that Rach screwed back there. I think if she'd pushed forward with the keyboard, yeah. then she'd definitely have covered it. I do wonder. I think Deb might be able to get to this now. Yeah, but it's whether that red's in the way now that she's just pushed up there. I think it might just miss on the way back down. Yeah. If you can really hug that left hand red near the eight ball. Oh, hang on. Well, it's a, this is a big swerve. Not a bad effort. But uh, not quite there. She was expecting that to come off the cushion with a little bit more side, wasn't she? And it didn't take. She's got to be careful here because that's not a made plant. Um, she wants probably to get the yellow away from the pocket. Well, I wondered whether she'll be looking for her first shot to be to nudge that red in front of the yellow, whether it goes down the side of it and just clips in front of it. Or that. Well, that makes sense. Pot the yellow. Yeah. Didn't expect her to pot it with that much pace. No, it was surprising, wasn't it? This needs to slow up. That's just about... Yeah, it's pretty good. Just had visions of Rachel getting trapped on that one red thing. Decent recovery. Yeah, it was. You're right there, she overhit the previous one. Yeah, so it was a nice little clip just to get back down into the right area. Oh no, Deb. Well, another opportunity passes by and another opportunity presents itself to Rachel Tucker. Not a nice opportunity though, I wouldn't say. So it's a it's a tricky one, isn't it? It's that red that's behind the black that's Yeah, I think she needs to get the cue balls back down the table somewhere near the, the eight ball. Of the the yeah. black spot then. So I'd say she was trying to force the angle a bit then. She didn't quite have as much angle as she would have liked. Not only that, she's left the gap. Yeah. She's left the gap and she's left a drop in eight ball for Deb Birchall to take a 2 0 lead. And it is 2 0. And. Um, you said they both relax into the game after the first frame read, but I think it will be Deb who's now very relaxed, and Rachel who might be getting a little bit nervy. Yeah, possibly. I do. Th I do think Rachel's quite good at keeping ahead. She's not the kind of person that will lose it a couple of frames down. It is a race to seven. She's got plenty of time to get back into this, and she's made a, f a few errors, but it's um, not been a good standard so far. No. Um, we've we've seen these two players play on the stream. We've seen them play on the IPA before plenty of times. We know they're capable of better than this. It's just... I do wonder if there's a bit of that nervousness about playing each other creeping in. Yeah, definitely. But I also think, um, obviously from experience, I find that with the Elite Final, it's very much... I think all of the ladies feel a little bit of pressure to try and um, show what ladies are capable of doing. And 
and put on a decent show and and I very much put pressure on myself last time and I know Rach did as well of wanting to uh, put on a really good match and we both really struggled and we admitted ourselves that the standard of the last final wasn't anywhere near the standard we'd been playing at in the quarters and semis leading up to it so I think it is just very much the extra pressure of um, of a streamed final and um, yeah it's something that you'll grow into and yeah and Rach and Deb and Deb's been here so many times before and I think yeah. that's part of the reason why she's seen as such a heavy favourite in the elite section. It is because she's out of all of the players in the elite section she's definitely the most used to the to the conditions to the to the pressure and everything like that and deals with it really well. Well from Rachel's perspective it doesn't help when you break actually really quite nicely and it goes dry. Yeah. This is now the third time that Deb has had her pick of the colour sets. Yeah. Bear in mind as well that Deb's just come from from Malta in the European Championships and was in the final of the ladies singles there and um, a significant higher number of people watching that than this so to some extent it's um, live you mean in the arena yeah. yeah yeah sorry yeah live like a live audience yeah there was people watching yeah, so many nations bring so many yeah players. yeah exactly um, and I know for a fact she she really felt the pressure at that one. So to some extent, I think this will be more of her comfort zone than it than it was at that final. So um. this should settle her down. Deb has worked her way around this finish really nicely. Yeah. I think in the last one she maybe overcomplicated it at one point, and well, I think they both did at times. Whereas this one, Deb seems to have really just kept it simple and. Just Taking that one by one. Slightly overrun that last yeah. shot. Yeah. I think she's going to have to pinch the pocket here and really dig into the cue ball because if she screws straight back standard, she's going into that red. Well, it's whether she decides just to leave herself the yellow down down the rail instead yeah. of trying to force it backwards. Because there is a chance if she doesn't get it right, then she snookers herself. Ooh, there we that's go. Close. That's close, but that's that's all right. Ooh. Well, she's held her hand up because she's got a shot here, but it's tough. It's really tough. Yeah. Would you be taking this down the rail or cutting it into the corner? Oh, corner. All day yeah. long. Yeah. Ooh. She's not. She's taking it down the rail. She might have made this as well. What a shot oh, that is. Beautiful shot. Deb Birch will take a bow. Calm down, Deb. No need. Eight ball. First dish of the match. Oh dear God. Oh, it was so close. It w it would have been great. <laughs> but now Rachel Tucker has a chance to really apply some pressure here. And it's those kind of shots that can eat you up inside. Yeah, If absolutely. Rachel now starts turning it on and starts, yeah. starts pulling this game back. Yeah, that will be crucifying herself for that one. Yeah, well, unless she comes out of the snooker here and pots it, and then oh, it'll yeah. be forgotten. Wouldn't put it past unless her. Unless she does. Oh! oh. Close. Look at us, we even come with free sound effects. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't I wouldn't want to use them in anything though. <laughs> Rachel with chance now herself back on the board. Starting to feel like this is a really important visit to the table for Rachel now. Very much so. She's more than capable of taking these out, it's just one ball at a time. Just keeping her nerve.
it was a really good chance for Rach to get her arm going as well. It's been a couple of scrappy frames where she's not managed to quite get on a run of pots, and this is a good good chance for her to really settle on the table. Doesn't have a lot to do here with the cue ball either. It's just after this one really should be just a series of stunt shots. Yeah. Um, so as long as she gets the right angle here. Yep. That's that's okay. I think she can. She'll probably top the left hand of those two reds in now, and then take the, the right hand one into the centre. You confused me then, because I wasn't. I'm looking at the wrong screen. <laughs> <laughs> You'll learn. <laughs> Play pool soon, I hope as well. Ah, we all hope for that. <laughs> oh, she's missed oh, that. Oh no, she left it open. No, that's all right. Uh, I think she was. She was really trying to pinch the pocket there. Yeah, to try and leave herself that red in the... To, yeah, to be nicely on the one in the centre, but I don't think she needed to. That's the thing, they were all they were all there, so I think I think it's almost a case of not worrying about position too much and just yeah. focusing on the pots. They were trying to get the pocket. She's, She's managed. managed. It's got to be a safety here then, hasn't it, really? Oh, big time. And, and Rachel can easily make this very difficult to hit. Yeah. Um, I suppose the question is though is even if she gets um gets um a free visit out of this she'll potentially be at the wrong end of the table. This is, is she well, trying to is yeah. she playing for a re-rack here? Or is she playing to move it? Yeah. Well, tried to. And that's worked out very nicely to be honest. Yes, it has. It could have gone horrifically wrong, but I mean, they're really, they are lined up dead straight, these two balls. It's a, it's a long way to get to the pocket, but yep. the skill shot might be an option. I don't think she's going to clip in it. Oh! Not a bad result. No. The eight ball being welded to that bottom rail. Yeah, Rach has got a, another good chance here. I think she's left Deb a look at this. Yeah. I think she could see the full thing. Nice easy cut into the corner, do you reckon, Dan? Well, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, just, it's one of those where if you play it with a, an absolute ton of right hand side, um, you see them go. Equally, Deb knows her angles pretty well. Wouldn't surprise me if she went a couple of rails here. Ooh. Rach just waiting for a rest, I think. I think we all need one, don't we? Absolutely. <laughs> it's amazing how exhausting it is batting balls around and hoping for the best. <laughs> <laughs> I needed a 12 hour nap after last night. I think that's called a sleep. Oh, well. I don't think you have a nap for 12 hours. Depends what time of day it is, I suppose. Oh. <laughs> Fair point, hard to argue with that. That's a nice shot. Controlled that well, I think. Yeah, again, it, I think it's just come a bit far. Yeah. She's just she wanted a bit of angle, potentially, to... Yeah, she's a little bit high with the cue ball now. Um, there's been a couple of times where she's tried to top one through and... She forced it a little bit too much. Yeah. Ruined this one. Yeah, that's okay. It's not ideal they're being on the cushion, but this is horrible. Mm. If she if she pops this red into the centre, I think she's going straight into the black, isn't she? Really, hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it, and it's just very much then where it lands after that. It's and it's where the cue ball lands as well. Yeah, it's whether she she might end up pushing the black onto the cushion and you could pot it. It's close. She got past it and put the cue ball instead. Well, it's another frame that Deb Birchall has been given. 
Um, is this an anniversary present? Must be. <laughs> I was told beforehand they're doing it to see who does the washing up when they get home. <laughs> so it's going to be a lot of washing up. <laughs> if I had that deal, I'd just make washing up on purpose. <laughs> I wouldn't ever use the same cup for a cup of coffee. No. <laughs> Nine meals a day. Yeah, yeah. I know you're talking my language. <laughs> well, Deb, not looking... I mean, for someone who's 3 nil up, she doesn't look very happy. No, so. no, she doesn't. But I think I think she knows that she, she did miss an opportunity there. And I think as well, like you say, they're playing each other. And as much as Deb will be happy to be 3 nil up, she's also... <laughs> Rachel's partner and will be disappointed that Rachel isn't at her best. Yeah, I think there's a there's a case for that. As we keep an eye on Clint Ianson versus Craig Marsh, and Clint's been horribly kicked in off there. Craig Marsh with a chance to level the match. He trails Clint by seven frames to six. That one, of course, a race to nine. I can tell you, next on the stream will be the first of our Professional semi-finals between Dean Shields. As we watch the replay, uh, Dean Shields and Craig Brown. Sorry, as we watch the replay of the break, and Deb there in off. Lovely break as well. Yeah, it's a it's a beautiful split, isn't it? It's a really good chance now for Rach to get herself back into this match. She's got to be careful. She's taking yellows here. Yellow to the left of the eight ball. Yeah, that's the tricky one, isn't it? Yeah. Um, surprised she didn't try to perhaps move the red to the left of it with her free shot. Yeah. Yeah, I very much think that was a bit of a... So she's trying to get into a runner pot in, isn't she? But maybe she could have just done something a bit different with that free ball. I think I think you've just got to yeah. Right, rests out again. She needs to be quite quick here. She hasn't taken her extension yet. She oh. <laughs> nick of time, in the nick of time. Oh, that's horrible. See, I think I think once she'd called her extension, she should have taken an extra second on 100%, that. Hundred percent. Yep. Yeah, she could have taken a step back away from the table even and just Yeah, it was almost like she still felt like she didn't have enough time and Yeah. And rushed that a little bit, but I swear I'd be being an idiot and clipping that one back into the middle pocket. Oh I, I mean, I don't think that's I think that might be the shot, but I tell Oh you what, that beautiful. is beautiful. I retire. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's a, that's an awesome shot from Rachel Tucker. Yeah, did not call that in a month of Sundays. No, don't think she was uh, aiming for both. No, no, she, she might... aimed for the plant, hadn't she? But yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, even if that other yellow hadn't gone, it was it was going in the right direction towards the pocket, and if anything would have made this clearance a little bit easier to still have that on the table, I think. But I was say, I think she'd be slightly disappointed. She doesn't yeah. want to be hampered here. She's got a nice double though. I think it's worth the risk. Yeah. yeah. I think it's worth the risk of taking the double to give yourself position on the eight ball. Here yeah, the position will be perfect on the eight ball if she gets this double right. Oh, it's slid. Probably just needed to punch that in a little bit more. That's exactly it, yeah. Just needed that extra tweak of pace. Again, it might just be a little bit of a lack of confidence for a moment and or being overly cautious about where she was leaving herself on the black. What a table she has left for Deb, though. Should be a routine finish on reds. I 
towards your journey into the Isle of Man. Easy as anything. Yeah. Yeah. Straight on a plane. Mm -hmm. Straight up, straight down. Yep. Hit a few pigeons on the way. Happy <laughs> days. But you, you're landing safely on the tarmac. That's the main thing. Just about. Love flying into the Isle of Man. It feels like you're landing in the middle of the sea. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. If you're on the wrong side of the plane, um, yeah, it, when you're landing, yeah, the the ground just very suddenly appears. Ooh. And that eight ball has very suddenly appeared in the way <laughs> for Deb Birchall. That's really careless. You can't see enough to spot that. No. She's gonna try and s she might. I mean, I wouldn't put it past Deb to try and swerve this, but I think she might have to. I don't think she's got much choice, to be honest. She's she does seem to be quite comfortable with swerve shots, so I don't don't think she'll be shying away from it. Oh. No, this is a safety option. Yeah, just leaving that herself the wrong side. Be yeah, that's pretty good. It's an easy return though. Yeah, because she's actually left the red in a really awkward place now, where if Rach misses. Red's potentially covered. Yeah, you're right. You're right. It's worth Rach having a dig at this. Yeah. Roll but just being a bit careful with the with the cue ball and leaving the red awkward. Yeah, you can roll this towards the corner pocket and you're not going to leave the red on. You'll have yeah, a shot exactly. at the eight ball. As long as you don't overdo it. And leave the red on. And leave the red on. <laughs> she had to catch that thick rather than thin. Yeah, yeah. I was about to say, if anything, it might have been worth almost not necessarily going for the pot and just leaving it over the pocket, but it's yeah. a lovely shot from Deb. She is just finding her groove now, Deb, yeah. feel, but she's still giving up these chances. Yeah. I did expect this to be a lot closer by this point, to be honest, and they've because they've both had chances at almost every frame. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they've yeah, they, they definitely both had a chance in each yeah. so far. Um, but it's just Deb who's, who's falling over the line at the moment. Yeah. Nice to see some of the other elite ladies in the in the crowd watching. I mean, four of our eight elite ladies play for Wiltshire, as far as I'm aware. I think. So, um, <laughs> all very good friends. Where are the others from? Don't ask me questions like that. Oh, you don't have to. I don't pay enough attention. I just enjoy quizzing you. Oh no. <laughs> I don't even know what county I play for most of the time. That's fair. Four nil then. Deb Birchall is over halfway there. Target is seven frames. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens, I think, if Rachel comes back. Yeah. If Rachel can get the next couple, then we might start to see the nerve show on Deb a little bit more. Definitely. I find Deb's very very much one of those players who um, gets and loses momentum and where she, once she's on a run and she's got the momentum behind her she will really be on one then and there's almost no stopping her sometimes um, but then in the same way if you slow her down and you sort of get a couple of frames against her and she starts struggling she can very much then get in her own head and start to struggle herself so feel like Rach took a bit off that break. Yeah, I think maybe um, maybe she was just trying to change it up because she, she'd been dry in the last two. Yeah, yeah. Um. Yeah, tricky little table emerging here for Deb now. It's an argument that all the yellows have a pocket, but I don't think she's got much of a starter. Reds it is. Nice confident opener. Yeah. Certainly the two reds below the black are an issue. Yeah. It's not an obvious way of splitting those up either. No, she could come off a couple of cushions now and try and get into them. Yeah. I think that's the attempt. Oh, that's not... Well... Um. She's actually left herself a clip into that corner. Yeah, she? I think she's on one yeah. of those two reds now. The, the only disappointment she'll have is she, she's now tied up a red over on the right-hand yeah. side. Um, but it's certainly that nudge on the yellow has kept this frame alive for Deb. Yeah. 
interesting oh. to me. She's not taking it. Okay. Well, she's digging a hole here. Ah, uh, well. <laughs> Who wants an easy clearance, really? I mean, it, we, we, we'd much prefer to see difficult clearances, and oh, I thought we were going to as well, because... <laughs> that would have been a wonderful double, shot if she'd got that. Yeah, and if she makes that double, she's on the red. Yeah. These are all here for Rach, she's just... Got to keep her head and keep her focus. straight on this one perhaps. I have to punch this I think to get people high enough up the table for a next yellow. Yeah. Because if you can take the one above that one and it opens the pocket up, that's a nice shot. It's a lovely shot. I think a main question is going to be getting down the other end to take that, that yellow into the middle. Yeah, it, well, it looks like she might be trying that now, but yeah. I'm not convinced she's got the right angle for this. That's a bit too thin, isn't it? She's punched across, doesn't want to be behind the red. Oh, that's... That's a disaster. That is a disaster. It's unlucky, that. Yeah. Local snooker called by our referee. up for the swerve. Good hit. How's your luck? I mean... Really good? Could Ooh. have been worse. Yeah. Just that last roll of the yellow. Yeah. It's just I left think, her a chance on this, isn't it? I think Deb can pot the, uh, the left hand of those two reds. If she gets this, she should leave herself nicely on the other one and give herself a good chance at a clearance. Yeah. That's a lovely shot. Just punched it a little bit. Yeah. And it slowed the cue ball down. It's this is now awkward again. Um we might just be rolling travel. this one through, the one nearest to the black. There's a lot of a lot of travelling, but yeah, hit that nicely. Yeah, so this is the key shot you feel. Comes around and finishes nice and straight on that last red. Hard to see this going too wrong. It might be a little bit straight on that, but it's not. It's not too bad. I think that's good. I think you can just drop this one in. Yeah, she doesn't need to do anything with this. Just drop it in and take the black in the middle. That's nice. There we go. Slightly hampered, but she's okay. It's there, it's 5-0, it's becoming a bit of a hammering now. And, uh, well, it's going to be an awkward conversation over the washing up fold <laughs> if it's a whitewash, isn't there? Yeah, very much so. <laughs> Rach is just wondering whether to get her washing up gloves on now. <laughs> They're both going to hate me after this. Have you ever played a sort of a partner in a final or anything like that? No. No. I, me neither, but I just can't imagine. None of them have ever been good enough. number six coming up. Of course, not just the uh, the ladies, the elite ladies I should say, and the professional event. We also have the amateur and open events going on. Speaking of the professional event, Parade Marsh there, eight, seven up on Clint Ianson, the race to nine. Getting down towards the semi-finals. 
quarterfinals in the amateur tomorrow. And I think I'm right in saying that will be our first stream game tomorrow, the amateur final. We're looking at a time of 11 a.m. for that, so set your alarms. I mean, it's not that early, but it's a Sunday, and if you're a pool player, then you're probably not out of bed until 12, let's be honest. We're in my case two today, so... <laughs> Bonus of crashing out in the quarters. Up with the lock, you were, <laughs> for you. It's made this a little bit tricky. Knocking that yellow next to the black. Yeah, it was um, out of the frying pan into the fire, that little bit, wasn't it? Yeah. She, she opened it out and then it went somewhere else. Awkward. to that eight ball now. I definitely think Deb's playing with a lot more of a usual confidence now. Yeah, yeah. Just wonder if that plant, you know. I wonder if she can see enough of that yellow above the eight ball to play the plant into the left centre. Doesn't look like it on the overhead, but I've also had a couple of ciders. <laughs> <laughs> it's tight, that's for sure. Probably not then. So she needs to go into it. She needs to go into it soon. Does she have the angle for it now? Possibly. I think she'd have a little to pop bit of right hand yellow. side on it. Yeah, and possibly pop the yellow into the left hand side of the pocket. Yeah. Screw out. That's what she's going for, isn't it? That's nice. Oh. I mean, she might be okay here because if she can play this one into the into the, into the middle pocket and come back down. Yeah, left, middle, bottom, left, right, centre. That's yeah, the that's that's the correct terms. I have still not worked <laughs> out which end of the table is the top and which is the bottom, so... Oh, that way, okay. It's actually funny you say that. I, I had this exact discussion with Gareth Hibbert. Well, you know, I'm glad it's it's not just because I'm an amateur. No, no, no. <laughs> You're not. You're well, technically, no. <laughs> Oh, that's a nice shot. Yeah. I always think of it the wrong way around because you stand, I think you stand at the bottom of the table when you break, but you don't, you stand at the top and it confuses me. No, I, I agree. I think, uh, well, I think you break from the bottom, but um, on camera, we go for the top of the table at the yep. top of the screen. Tricky, tricky April here for Deb As Virgil. we know, pool players are great at logic. <laughs> and she's missed oh. it, and she hasn't fluked it. She really swung her arm at that. It was a little bit wild. What can Rach do from here? Testing there's um a bit of dirt or something on one of those balls. So you'll just have them cleaned. Steady hands from Fiona. You done much refereeing, Ree? Absolutely not. <laughs> not a job you fancy then? No. no. One of the harder jobs in pool, I have to say. Oh definitely. Unsung heroes, our refs on the IPA tour. I can't even rack the balls myself without my hands shaking and messing them up, so. Oh dear. She got away with that. I mean, so yeah, she's covered it, but she's, she's put a red awkward. It's not a good shot from Rachel. No, and it's quite an easy get out for Deb, I think. I think she can see the edge of it. Can she? Oh yeah. I just wonder if it's worth going cushion first and having a bit of a hit. Not a shot that you see very often in pool, the hit and hope, but not at this level anyway. Yeah. Needs to hurry. Oh, well, fortunate, I think we call that. Yeah. Uh, Deb had no idea where that was going. She ran out of time. No.
a nice shot, nicely weighted. Yeah. She got one of her difficult balls out with the same shot. Yeah. She still left dead some of the black, but that'd be a hell of a cut. Ooh. I think she went for it, but I mean she'd I have had she to did. hit it a lot harder than yeah. that to make that. I think the good news is she's pushed a red to the side rail. Yeah, so, so she's got a free ball but two difficult words to get out now. Yeah, this is where Rachel needs to sensibly use this first free shot. Yeah. I think she's going to try and get them both out in one here. Flick off yeah. one and send the cue ball into the other. A little bit thin. Yeah, I think I'd potentially have played that one down towards the pocket and then played another sort of safety with that one because she was in the perfect position there to take that other red off the cushion and just leave the white on the cushion and, and safe. Yep. Looks like now she's going to take yep. that one on the rail and just play safe. Yeah, that's that's the one that I was looking at before. I don't want those two reds to stick together. No. That's okay, they'll still plant. Surely Deb's not going to try and cut this in. What I mean, what she got? I, perhaps off the back, off the bottom cushion first. Would the eight ball go in the centre? It's tight past the red. Yeah. Oh, it's she a, went for it. That was a big effort. That was close. It was close. That red wasn't there. Does this red nearest the pocket clip in? Or is the other red in the way? Good question. It's tight. Because if she can clip it in and then knock that other red off the off the cushion, then she might have a chance at a clearance here, but... I mean, I think... Yeah, I think she should probably take these on. Yeah. She doesn't really have a lot of choice, actually, because no. Deb's put the... The eight ball in quite a nice spot nearish the centre pocket. There's no comfortable safety there anymore, she just needs to. Yeah. Nice confident one. Yeah. I think it's worth taking that plant now. GB planting then. I don't think there's a lot of choice. Yeah, I wasn't sure if um, on the overhead it looks like she can potentially take the, the one nearest the pocket independently. Maybe. Clip the other red and, and knock that off the cushion. But It's tough to see whether that's whether she's got enough of that or not. Yeah, it and the thing is, if she, if she does miss it and it rattles, then um, game over. it's game over. Yeah. Whereas I suppose the upside is if she takes the plant and the white comes back down the other end of the table, then it's leaving Deb a considerably harder black, isn't it? Yes. She's in the rest again, and that that red is right where she would like to put it. Yeah, there you go. That's that's what I was saying. It's that's come out all right. Yeah, I think Deb's got a full view of that eight ball, but she can't see the side to cut it. No. So she's got two choices really. She can either go on and off the top rail, or she can try and treble it. Yeah. I think she'll be coming, well, I don't know. I think she'll be coming off the rail, but uh, ignore me. <laughs> it's six or one, really. That really slid off that last cushion. Yeah. Good cue ball, though. Really good cue ball. We have a final frame decider on our hands. The professional event, Gunter Hansen, Craig Marsh, eight all battle of the former world champions, or well, the current world champion and a former world champion, I should say. Rachel's Rachel covers his pocket, this will be a nice shot. Oh, well, hang on, yeah, with the last roll. I don't know if it's entirely the way that she intended to cover it. No, but, um, she seemed to play it sort of towards the, towards the cushion a bit more than I expected. But it was an awkward cut, so. Well, what's 
they're going to come up here. Just trying try to leave to it in front. It. Yeah, and she, that's a great shot. But has it she is. left enough space? That's the question. Yeah. Because if she has and Rach can sneak this past, then it's quite comfortable. Should be quite a comfortable clearance from there. I mean, it's, it's game over if she gets this. So. Well, she might choose to play this with a bit of pace, a bit like one in a couple of frames ago. Yeah, to kick the black out. Yeah, make sure it gets away. I but I suppose if she, it. yeah. Oh, that's that's lovely because at least she's left herself that that one in the middle. And the eight ball has kept away. Well. It's not the way I thought she was taking those. I'm, I'll be honest, Rhiannon, I don't think that's the, the way anyone thought she would take those. I, I, I thought she'd take middle and then plant and then, you know, leave the one over the pocket for position. Um, yeah, I mean, if she pots this, she should, should still be coming back down for the last one, but, yeah, she's definitely made... Oh, this is close. It doesn't want to be straight. I think she's just enjoying um, the table time, you know. <laughs> she, I think she's putting she's putting herself through the ringer here. I think she's probably putting Deb through the ringer. She's putting us through the ringer. Just think it's pure pressure. That is That's a, a great terrific, shot. terrific recovery from Rachel Tucker. Pretty much plumb straight yeah. on this eight ball. Just hold a nerve now. It's there. <laughs> <laughs> a little celebration from Rach, love that. Well, sometimes you can feel like the world's against you, but um, oh, definitely, yeah. If you can come out with it, out of it with a smile on your face like Rachel Tucker can, then more power to you. Yeah, both of them, they're great. They've always got a smile on their face when they're playing in these sort of events, no matter what happens. It was that shot there, just... Yeah, I mean, I definitely would have been playing the one in the middle first and then taking on the plant. Yeah. But that's, that's a lovely shot to get back on the black, though. Yeah, really good. I thought she I thought she was absolutely dead straight, but she had just enough angle to force her way through. Yeah. As we watch Clint Ianson, surely... Booking his place in the semi-finals. What a tussle between those two. Ooh. I think he thought he'd missed that for a second. He jumped up off the chop. Yeah. But, uh, there we go. Clint Ianson into a semi-final here semi-final here at the IPA Grand Finals. Scoreline definitely reflective of um, how good these two are. Yeah. yeah. Who doesn't love a final frame decider? Definitely not me. <laughs> <laughs> well, me neither, actually, to be fair. Yeah. But, you know, to watch. Better. Oh, to watch, yeah. To watch. I must admit, I'm having much more fun in this commentary box than I did when I was playing, so... <laughs> <laughs> Might just do this every time. Yeah, fair enough. There's definitely a <laughs> career here for you. Thank you. Haven't sworn once yet. Frame number seven in this elite ladies final. Comebacks on for H. Tucker. <laughs> oh, stranger things have happened. Um, so it's so, it's so easy many. in this game. It is easy in this game for the momentum to shift, though. Yeah. If Rach gets a nice, nice opportunity here, crazier things have happened. Pretty good, actually, on reds. Yeah. The red closest to the bottom left is tricky. Yeah. Um. Actually, both reds down there are a little bit tricky. It's just landing on them nicely, isn't it? Yeah, uh, if you could, if you could put the cue ball where the eight ball is, yeah, um, then I think. Oh, that that one would be absolutely fine, isn't it? Happy, but yeah. 
It's just getting getting a position on there, isn't it? Oh, she going oh, first off. Oh. oh, she's planting it. This Forgot a, the rules for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> it's a clever shot. It's could have come, come out, out better. Then for Rach, probably trying to stun across into the yellow from the left. Oh, needed a fuller contact again. This is this is getting really tricky, and it's sort of the entire match in the microcosm where just yeah. the flicks and the it's just not quite working out. The pots are getting a little bit more confident, but it's um, you say she's still not quite got the run. And cover the bottom left pocket here. Yeah. Good shot. Yeah. She could have gone for the pot, but I think it's just then she's leaving herself another difficult pot then. Yeah, I, th I think it was a good time to take stock and perhaps just... Yeah, just take a breather for a second. And yeah, shut up shop for a little bit. Um, that's a good reply by Deb, though. It is... She's it, it has left a gap for the red, but um, where she's left right, she can't see anything here, I don't think. No. And it's not even a double or anything, really, that's... Nothing screaming out, is there? No, not at all. Just trying to get the pocket back or make that one difficult. Just get her into the open because I suppose Deb's still got a couple of issues to deal with um, in that other corner. Yeah. Just the one, really. And actually, where she's left the white has made that other end of the table quite tricky as well. <coughs> yeah, she could take the one in the middle of the ball clog first. If she can't. Oh, she can oh. see enough of that <laughs> one as well. <laughs> These cameras are deceptive. I don't yeah, like it. Made them both look silly then. <laughs> don't need the cameras to do that. Looking at playing this, yeah, this yellow bottom right. Yeah, that's the shot. Off the red. Doesn't want it to drop now because yeah. he didn't catch the red full enough. No. I thought she played that at quite a weird pace. I'm not sure if she was trying to cover yeah. or pop. I definitely think she was trying to cover just because of that other yellow behind it. Yeah. There's not really, like you say, without knocking the red out of the way, there's not much benefit to potting no. it. But she could have gone cushion first and just yeah, yeah, giving it a bit more. I just tried to play a containing safety there, but that red's on. And actually, if Rach can pot this red, and leave herself a chance on second red in from the from the cushion. Off the red. Oh, she's found the one way, but you can't. You don't pot it. Yeah. I was gonna say because that that red on the cushion does sneak past that yellow, doesn't it? So yeah, yeah. That yeah. sort of opened the game up for her if she got an opportunity at it. Yeah, I think the reds are all there. I think to the point where now I think Deb's got to force the issue and just go for something. To some extent, at five one up, I'd be inclined to to go anyway. Which may sound a bit like throwing frames away, but Deb's very capable and she's got a good chance. Just all about that, that yellow and play the bottom the right. And then she's not gone. She's gone to cover the pocket, and that is a really good shot. Yeah, because she's now made those two reds on the bottom very difficult for Rach. I think with where that yellow still is near that corner, I'd be if I was Rachel, I'd be looking to just knock these reds out now, potentially, and just trying to get them more in the open. Yep. 
I suppose the, the one thing she doesn't want to do is leave Deb an attacking option with her yellows over the left to, yeah. to screw into them. So I think that's what this shot's about. This is just a little touchy one, I think. Oh. Yeah. Oh dear. Well, I suddenly got fun. Yeah, I'm not. The thing is, so Deb can actually now get her yellow out into the open. Um, Without risk of leaving Rachel clearance. You would think so. There, there'll still be a risk because... Is she going to play it down into that corner pocket? Skill shot's still available. Long double down, yep. Yeah. yeah, anywhere near the pocket will do. That's alright. Really good. Really good wipe. Yeah, definitely. She's not really left Rachel anything there and... I think anything she leaves now, Deb's got a good chance at a clearance. Yeah, we'll nip and tuck frame this. Now, if you, yeah. I was going to say, if you were, if you were dead, would you be going for this in the middle to cannon into into the corner and get that red out of the way? Possibly. Um, depends exactly on the angle. I think if you come in cushion first, it'd be great. <laughs> that is the one thing <laughs> <laughs> that could have gone wrong, really wrong with that shot. Rachel Tucker then, with the chance. Serves it right for listening to the commentary and taking my advice, really. <laughs> She's just presumably going to clear the clear the pocket here. Sort of assuming Rachel's got a full pocket to the yeah, I think so. To the bottom left, if she doesn't. She she'll, she'll want to be right behind it when she takes that on. Yeah, I think ideally she probably would have wanted to taken taken this on now, but whether she feels confident because she's not quite come out far enough. I don't think she's got a lot of choice. No. Here we go. Slide this off the, the far jaw. Yep, lovely. So that was good pace because I think if it had missed, she would have still left it over the pocket and made it difficult for Deb. So yeah. I think if Rach can finish these, she'll get a bit of confidence. Lovely little clip. Oh, that's a nice kiss. <laughs> that could have gone so wrong. And it was a lovely touch. Five two, and perhaps we just have the beginnings of a game on our hands. I'm calling seven five to Rach. <laughs> that is bold. <laughs> That's very bold. <laughs> I think she heard you. <laughs> I've been told I have to support Deb because I'm English and there's too many Welsh people here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Apologies to our Welsh viewers. Uh, I didn't say there was too many Welsh people here. I love the Welsh. Okay, fair enough. Got great songs. That's true. Great singers, too. <laughs> wonder whether we'll hear Craig, M Craig, Craig Marsh, Marsh belt, belt one out. out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Maybe we should start doing a half-time show. <laughs> Get some cheerleaders around him, he'll be chuffed. Definitely. De that's definitely true. <laughs> Still leading by three. Five two up in this lady's final. That is dry. It's not the best split. <coughs> not bad. Oh, 
have to go red here. Yeah, I'm with you there. Because I actually think that red in, in the midst of all those yellows does sneak past, does it? I don't know if it sneaks or, or to, if the it goes to the left, corner. But it, it would go to the centre. Um. Far more sensible option. Ignore me. <laughs> Too many yellows. The only ball I don't like on yellows is the one closest to the bottom right. It doesn't look like it passes. No, that's why I would have gone reds, because the red passes. Yeah, well, same. it doesn't pass, but, you know, goes. You can get on it. Yeah. yeah. It's quite tricky to work out what Rachel's plan is here. I can see I can see if the last two yellows were the two furthest down the table you could knock the one out with the other. Yeah, it's just when is she getting on this one at the other end? Is she gonna top this through? It's a lovely shot. Well, that's nice. Unless unless it's the camera angle deceiving us and that yellow does pass. But from the overhead, it really doesn't look like it will. No. I wonder whether she could she float in behind it and take it in the other pocket now. No, that's ridiculous. What are you talking about? I can see what you were saying. Um, <laughs> but it was a long way for the cue ball to travel that. Risk of the in-off as well. Yeah, absolutely. But I mean, it's now going to be her last ball. So if she if she makes this one down the rail trying to leave herself an angle, presumably to screw into it. There's no guarantee she ends up on it. Tough pot this as well. Great pot. No position. Nope. I mean, it does cut. It's going straight enough off the red though. You would th you would imagine it would be very difficult to keep the cue ball out of the corner pocket, yeah. <laughs> I mean, she could have done with that yellow landing better. She does get back to the table, but... Yeah, and she, actually, I don't think she's covered the red, so I don't think she will get back to the table. No, the red, the red goes, doesn't it, so... That's too slow. Don't be careless. Just about drops in. Shot. Red in the middle of the table goes past the black to the bottom right, which I'm fairly certain that it does. Again, shouldn't be a lot, of, a lot of work to do here. Just got to be careful here not to flick the yellow on the way through. See, not entirely happy with how she's landed here, Deb, because she's used her extension. Yeah, she would want to be a bit straighter on that. Good pot. She, she played that well, but... Well, has she come... has she found the so gap? Has she, has she left a gap for that? I mean, even if she has, she's not left a great opportunity to then get back on the other red, so... 
And I think it should take this long and screw yeah. that. Possibly. Either that'll take this long and, and get the gap between the black and the yellow. Or what you said. It's a nice <laughs> shot. It's a very <laughs> nice shot. She's finished a bit straight. She'll probably just top this through, leave it somewhere near the, the corner pocket. Just leave yourself a shot on the black, isn't it? Yep, that's the one. Birchall moves one frame away from victory. And she's In... already ruined my score prediction, I'm fuming. <laughs> I mean, I think that's your fault for calling 7 <laughs> 5. Um, at, is it 5 1 or 5 2? 5 2. Yeah. I don't think you can blame Deb for that one. I can try. 6 2. Rachel Tucker now, if she wants to lift her maiden IPA crown, will need the remaining. Potential five frames. Deb Birchall just needs the one. Deb to break next. Don't know if this has been the most enjoyable final experience for either of these two players, to be honest. No. your open campaign um, mm. start mine tomorrow tomorrow morning I think a oh, nice early start haven't looked <laughs> <laughs> I mean don't have too much of a lay in that's I'll be awake at some point <laughs> hopefully on time <laughs> ideally maybe not <laughs> I mean after the disaster that was last night I might as well not turn up Rachel Tucker breaking off that. I mean, she hasn't hit that well, but she's made a couple of balls. Yeah. And the yellows have split open, and the reds have split it's open. It's just that yellow in the middle that's a little bit tricky, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Everything else has got an obvious pocket apart from that. Extension early. It's choosing yellows. I think it's a sensible choice. Yeah, definitely. Uh, <laughs> well. Well, yeah, I'm, you were right about that one yellow. If she did open it up, she just could have done without that other yellow going going in the middle with it. Yeah, I think, I think they might both still go to, to either centre or corner, to be honest. The question is now getting getting the opportunity to get onto that. Is this a double or is it a safety? Safety. It's not too bad. But it's, she's clustered all her yellows together now, which makes it so much easier for Deb to find safety. She left Deb a lot there, though. No, and that double kiss has actually helped her. Yeah, it, it didn't look like it was going to be that useful, did it? And actually, no. <laughs> she's managed to uh, sort of block everything off. I just wonder if Rach can get through to the yellow on the bottom rail and knock that out into the open. Yeah, because she goes. Pretty heavy favourite for me in this frame, as she does. Oh, definitely, yeah, absolutely. 
And she's just leaving Deb in positions where she hasn't got an easy safety on. She can just slide off the one on the side ray road. She gets anywhere near the top cushion. <coughs> oh, hello. Oh, I'm gone. Hello. <laughs> That's a that's a pretty big fluke, isn't it? I think there was a hand of apology there. Deb's doing the washing up now. I was going to say, if there was no hand <laughs> of apology, then the washing up duties might have to switch. This has turned from <coughs> Rachel having full control of the table to actually very presentable opportunity for Deb in the, the space of one fluke. Yep, it's just how she plays this one and where these reds land. They land nicely, you'd say this is game, wouldn't you? Yeah. <laughs> it's really tricky to control work out how this cannon's going to turn out. We just, just had a slight technical hitch there in the venue with the radios. Not sure if you heard that home or not. But that's why we stopped for a second. I don't think that slight delay has done, <laughs> done Deb any favours. Gave her a bit more time to think about the shop, but uh, that hasn't helped. This cubal's close. This cubal's very close. still on the bed of the table but only just and that's where the good news ends for Deb Birchall I think yeah she jawed herself for the, to come off the cushion as well I think she might have done, I think she can probably see a fine edge yeah, of that red she can see the edge of it uh, but what she does with it is anyone's I think she just pushed it into the middle of the table to try and make life difficult yeah well she's now left Rachel in a position where she needs to kind of Go now. Yep. Shot this. It's come off the side rail and back over for the penultimate yellow. Off the side rail it is, and that is spot on. She's found that gap. I think. It's off a lovely angle to come round. Yeah. I think she's found the gap though. She hasn't looked yet. Oh, that one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Perhaps she hasn't. She hasn't seen it. But she hasn't come round all that far there. She now needs to find the gap between those two reds with this cue ball. Because if she runs into that red, I don't see that she's going to have a nice shot on the eight ball here. Well, can she? Can she not screw, screw back a little bit? Screw across the table, maybe. Possibly, but she's going to have to dig. Yep. Just adds a bit more difficulty to the pot. Yeah, that's the one. Bit unfortunate there to land so close to the cushion, but it should still be all right. Yeah, six three, Rachel still fighting. Seven six, Rach Tucker. <laughs> <laughs> there, re there is a reason I never place bets. Oh. Uh, it could happen. <laughs> I'll have a bet with you if you like. I'll put a tenner on that one. You mean free money. 
If I had any, I would. At this point, do you think Deb will be slightly annoyed that she hasn't finished this game off? Yeah, I think I think Deb will. I think she um relevant of who she's playing, she'll she'll want every frame and she wants it over and done with in spectacular style and you know. Is there an opportunity to see that happen now? Deb would love to finish this with a dish. First pass of the part of the puzzle is complete. She's made a ball. Yep. It's not an easy table. Uh, again, they just haven't quite come just apart, have they? Clustered in the middle a little bit. And it, she she made a pretty good contact there. Yeah. I just wonder. All the reds look like they might actually have a pocket. Yeah. This. She can land on that one nearest the black now, and potentially break that last one open. Then they're all there. This is sensible. I think she's she's going your route. Yeah. Um, but just getting rid of that one in the top half of the table first. Yeah. Now all her work is in the one area. Yeah. Has perhaps just over screwed that one a touch. either dead straight or slightly the wrong side of this next red. She wanted to be straight-ish on the, the red that you mentioned to the left of the eight ball. Does she play that one now instead? She might be. I think she is. Yeah, so now she, she's, she's decided against moving that red because it yeah. will go once she clears her next red to the bottom right. So if she can cut this back into the bottom right, drift up table and finish somewhere near straight. Or is she looking at taking this into the middle now? It looks like she is, yeah. Just she's just leaving that one. I mean don't it's think probably she was, I, I was gonna say I don't think she was on anything there. I was gonna say it's probably a good job that didn't go but and she's left right champ of queuing. Yeah. In time for the spider it is. It's rarely seen. I don't even know how to use a rest, so not worth <laughs> asking me. I just stretch and miss queue. That must happen quite a lot, you're quite short. Yeah. <laughs> I'm also stubborn. Fearsome <laughs> <a> combination. <laughs> Shot here for Rach. Looks like she's taking this on up to the top right. Looks to pass the eight ball with the cue ball as well. We've got the pot. What's she left? Nothing. I think she was trying to top past it, but I thought she had too much angle. Mm. Just slid off the back. And now, well, there's a shot on here, I think. I think she could play yellow off the yellow. And into the right centre, but it's, it's so tough. Is she trying to cut it? Can she cut it to the top right? Um, well, not like that. So now, here is the first real opportunity in anger for Deb Birchall to get herself over the line. One good positional shot. And that is absolutely plumb. It's lovely. Three drop-ins to land on the black now. Yep. Yeah, 
herself perfect. There's a real confidence about her when she knows she's won. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I say once once Deb gets on a roll, there's no stopping her. She she knows what she's doing. She really strides around the table. She left that a bit more awkward than she would have liked, but still still fine. She might have had a little bit of a heavy contact there. Yeah. And that's the one. But not that time. In goes the eight ball. Rach Tucker for the is washing up. Defeated <laughs> for the second final in a row, this time by Deb Birchall. Um, sorry, not defeated for the second final. I was about in a row. to say she beat me, she thanks beat for that. You in the last final. Let's not remind everyone. Getting very confused. Um, you may stop talking now. Deb. Commiserations to Rachel. But a good final overall. Yeah, once they both got into it, definitely good standard final. Yeah, it certainly um worked their way in, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah. Um Deb more so than or Rachel more so than Deb I think. But um it would have been interesting to see if that mini revival had come a little bit earlier, I think. Yeah, definitely. Say so it's just um it's just experience and table time and takes them a bit longer to get into it, but overall good game. <laughs> well there's plenty going on in the arena. As we can see on our screens there. Um, but I think we're just getting ready. Yep, we are. Here is the trophy presentation. It's Kevin Barton. Thanks, Dan, and welcome down to the arena for the presentation for the Ladies Elite Championships. First of all, let's introduce our runner up, Rachel Tucker. Thank you. Rachel, it looked like you were getting into form, but just a little bit too late in the match. Yeah, looks like I'll be doing the washing up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but overall, you know, another final. Uh, yeah. Keep knocking on the door, obviously, you know, and the build, building on the success that you've already had. You must be pleased with uh, with how the weekend's gone. Yeah, no, I am. I mean, I um, had a really tough match last night against Kelly, and um, it, it was kind of swings and roundabouts the whole way, and so I was just really happy to get in, into another final. So, yeah, um, hopefully... Uh, well, I thought I was going to get dish 7-0, but um, obviously I was on the comeback then until Deb left me a rest shot, but uh talk about that later over there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, Deb, is, Deb has been the dominant force this year. What is it yeah. that you've got to do to uh, you know, to dethrone her? Yeah, break her cue, I think. <laughs> but uh, when she gets going, there's, you know, in that mindset, th you know, there's not many people who can stop her. So, But, you know, she is beautiful. Um, because it has, you know, obviously does happen. So it's it's just about trying to trying to keep up, isn't it? Every frame, it's just got to keep pegging her, and uh, hopefully, uh, yeah, I will do it in the final. <laughs> and overall, your uh, your experience here at the Isle of Man has uh, been pretty good. Yeah, the love Isle of Man. It's my favourite tournament. Uh, we always say that. Uh, me and Deb, anyway. Um, also got to the final last year, and and again this year. So I'm hoping to go one better next year. OK, well, thanks a lot, uh, Rachel, for taking your part in a great final. Well done. Thank you. Thank well you. done. Rachel Tucker. And our winner again, the ladies' elite champion, it's Deb Birchall. Cheers, Kev. Deb, another title. Not quite the Grand Slam this year, but three out of four. Not too, not too shabby. I'll take it. <laughs> yeah. Um, it was a patchy match. I mean, we both started really sluggish. It's really difficult, you know playing your partner so it's, it's it's a difficult thing but um we both got into the swing eventually and you know part you know a lot a lot more than i was doing earlier on in the match so i'm quite happy with the mm. end of the match really tell us about how difficult it is to actually play your partner you know coming into <laughs> into the match you know and it's really difficult i remember sort of going sort of two or three nil up and thinking yeah i'll just get this one and I'm nail, you know my brain goes oh yeah i want to put another one in nail in the coffin kind of thing but it's like you can't do it it's it's kind of that was what happened it kind of stalled it like and i couldn't do it and um it really frustrated me but i just sort of managed to get over the line and rach didn't play her best there i mean she's played a lot better in the, <laughs> the tournament the rest of the week so uh mm. you know she played a bit you know, a bit more of her game that I know she can, it would have been a lot closer and maybe even the other way around. So, um, mm. you know, I know how good she is. So, you know, winning that last event as well has given her a lot of confidence. Mm. So, you know, really pleased for her as well. Well, she's done. And obviously, World Championships, not, not too far away now. Um, no. all everyone's really excited to think about that. So where do you think your game is at um, as we get, get into the World Championships season? <sighs> for me personally, I think I need a bit more practice, but um, just to sharpen up more, I'm letting a, a few more chances in than I want. For myself, I want to be getting more clearances. I mean, I played a lot better earlier in the weekend against Tilly, for instance. We had a really good game. 
there's you know break dishes, reverse dishes all through the match. Um, it's just it's just a bit inconsistent. I think I just want to improve on that, and I think when I do that, I think it's going to be you know really good. And overall, the ladies' elite been a big success this year. Yeah, it's been fantastic. I think everyone's had a really good you know stab at you know getting getting the top spot, and I've been kind of lucky enough to get there and continue where I've been you know trying to do that all year. So uh, I think everyone's having a great a great time playing in it. I think it's a, a really well thought of, you know, well respected sort of elite ladies tour and I think everyone has really enjoyed it. Well that's really good, well Deb you've enjoyed it more than most, uh, it gives us great pleasure to present you with the trophy, you are the 2023 Ladies Elite Champion, congratulations. So Mark Pickworth, uh, Deb Birchall, continues her dominance of the ladies' elite at, at the moment. Yeah, she certainly does, and you know, even just had a little chat with her there, and she still wants to try and improve her game. So you know, even after all the titles that she's won throughout the ladies' game, she wants to win even more, which is fantastic for the IPA. Obviously, bad news for some of these ladies are going to have to rise up to the occasion because th this is what the level you need to be at. Yeah, and I think you know, as uh, as Rachel said, you know, they are going to have to step up and um, over the next few months before we get to the World Championships. Yeah, of course they will, and everyone will be looking forward to that. You know, it'll be the first time there'll be elite ladies players, you know, come the World Championships. They're all chasing up for the seedings and that, which will make a bit of a difference to them this year. Mm. OK, well, that is one title that has been decided. We have got uh, the final, the semi final, and the final of the men's professional event uh, coming up. Uh, with an absolutely mouth-watering clash between the current world champion Clint Ayanson and Mr Magic Mark Boyle. So we're going to take a quick three-minute break, but uh, we'll be right back.
Well, good evening everyone. I've got to say, it doesn't get any better than this for me. Mark Boyle, Clint Ianson, semi-final of the pro event, Isle of Man. What a match this could be. It just, uh, for me, it, it's about as good a match as that. It, this is pretty much the one. You know, at the moment, you've got Boyle is is playing as well as he's ever been playing. Um, and Clint's current world champion. Uh, just so consistent. And um, I just, yeah, I, a coin flip for me. I can't pick a winner. Um, and I'm actually looking forward to, to watching it. Yeah, it's definitely one of those matches that uh, I think we'd both be watching, wouldn't we? If we weren't in the comms box, I think I we'd be out there in the crowd. I genuinely would. You know, I, I know it sounds a bit unprofessional or whatever, but because, you know, I'm, I'm commentating, but I'm not a massive watcher of pool, um, aside from, you know, when I'm not playing tournaments and there's a stream on and stuff like that, but I would genuinely stop what I'm doing to watch this if I was at home. So... Mark Boyle takes the first break, and once again, what a thunderous cut break that was. I mean, he's he's, he's put a five off the break there. What a joke that is. The power he gets into that is ridiculous. Yeah, I've said it many times. I have no idea how he generates so much power with the level of control that he has. It's, uh, it's remarkable. Yeah. And he's got to feel a little bit unlucky that the cue ball has ended up where it has. Well, yeah. Uh, I mean, I suppose, I suppose the more, the more balls you take off the table, the the, the fewer there's going to be for you to, to have as your as your starter. Well, it wasn't as bad as I th first thought. He was managed to cut that back into the middle. Yeah, I think he's probably made it look a little bit easier than it was. It was a thin cut. You see there, he, he, it's a little bit of right-hand side, isn't there? Tracer right. Yeah, and that cue ball just herded towards the corner pocket. But what a weapon that break is. I've said it many, many times in commentary. To generate that much power and not go airborne is so difficult. I said before his uh, semi-final against uh, his quarter-final against Ross Fernie that um, uh, if Ross continued to break the way that he did against Gav Robinson, given that we know how consistent Boyle's break is, it, it's kind of a handicap, really. You can you can you can make him tune it up before they've started. You know, if if they both break how they normally do or they they they, they were and uh, how Ross did in the previous match because Boyle I've, I've just never seen him break bad never do you know yesterday I think one match was probably the worst I've seen him break yeah and I mean it, it, by no means was it bad but it's probably the only time I've not seen him be devastating yeah you know it's it's just a massive weapon it really is Add to that his uh, his unbelievable cue ball control. Um, he has the white on a string. He really does. And um, Bottle digs himself out of holes when he's uh, when he really needs it. He's got a big shot in him as well. Yeah, he really has. I've seen some fantastic shots. Uh, yeah. When he's been in in real real trouble. Yeah. High percentage of times that he, he he just finds that shot. Yeah, and uh, but uh, <laughs> add all those together, and and you wonder how he ever gets beat. Yeah, he is uh, the real deal, no doubt. A lot of players' favourite player to watch. Certainly one of mine, if not the my favourite player. I think probably of all of them. But Clint Ianson, I mean. We could say a similar thing about Clint, couldn't we? Maybe the break is not as consistent, but I'd have to say that Mark Boyle, for me, is the most consistent of everybody that breaks for making balls. That cut break is just uh, devastating. Yeah, I'd agree with that, yeah. yeah. 
we, we, we can all, you know, uh, form. When, when you're playing well, you break it. And there's, there's sometimes oh, I was breaking great in that match. Or I tend to find, like, when I'm queuing well, I'm breaking well. So if I if I get to the later stages of a tournament, that's when I'll start to break really well. But he's just like it the entire time, from the first frame of the tournament to the last. Uh, Consistency is obviously everything. And it's... Um, that's why he's ranked where he is. That's why he wins as much as he wins. But he's up against Clint. Well, champ. Not not what you'd call a... a this might sound harsh, but, you know, Stuart Bingham won the, 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 the Worlds. Do you know what I mean? But he's, he, he'd never... He wasn't a serial winner before. You know, Clint Clint's a serial winner. He'd been to the final of the Worlds before as well. Won lots of tours, pro events. Um, he is... Elite, so he won't be phased by. If if anything, he'll be up for it, and he'll probably rise to the occasion of of playing Boyle. And um, don't be surprised to see an absolute masterclass from these two. Yeah, well, that shot where he took it into the corner and found position on the ball that he's just made there. That was a a masterclass in its own right. Yep. Positionally, absolutely pinpoint. And uh, as you as you were saying, Dan, he'll be really up for this match. Yeah, it'll almost probably be a, probably be quite weird for Clint to play in a game where he's not a clear favourite. Won't happen often. Obviously, current world champion, um, and was was one of the elite before he won the worlds anyway. But it, w it will feel strange for him not to, to to know that there's probably people out there that will say, no, 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 Boyle's going to win. Boyle's going to win. Uh, and I think that'll really, that'll really sort of focus his mind and, and get him up for it. it I mean, he's going to be up for it anyway. It's in the semis of the grand finals. It's 10 grand to the winner, but more of a point to prove almost. You know, I am the world champ. I am, you know, I am the man to beat sort of thing. Yeah, and it's really important more than ever that he uh, gets a good start in this match. We hope to press. This has been some uh, clearance. That f that shot from the corner to gain position on the red near the black early on. Absolutely pinpoint, as I said before. Yeah, Here you can see. Red to corner. Two cushions he can run. Black yeah. to the same corner if he wants. Yeah, I think that's what he's just deciding now, whether he tops it through and plays the black into the same corner or whether he swings it round with run inside. Well, he's just about, just about got there. Yeah, tad short, but uh, should be no problem. Yeah, I think he did look at playing that a bit firmer and coming round to play the black into the opposite corner, but should be fine. Just just taking his time. One each. Perfect start. Dean Shields on one of the other pro tables. These uh, these three tables you can see on this uh, on your screens now, just at the back of where the mainstream table is. Yeah. All superb conditions, and uh, it's Dean Shields who leads one nil at the moment. That was a clever little shot. It's a great shot, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. Great good. shot. Good vision. Really well executed. Just lifts that yellow from the, the cushion and leaves himself in uh, prime position. Yeah, looks certain to be going 2-0. So, let's have another look at this. It sort of threatens to go dry and then a couple go in. You know, just the two this time. Yeah. He just gets so much movement on that pack. 
Yeah. Just watch this. The ball's all heard towards this this middle. Yeah. I mean that is. Look at that for a leave now. Yeah, I, th I think long yellow and top it through, and uh, pretty sure they all go. It's quite actually a little bit easier than it first looked, maybe. Assuming these two yellows that are together nearest the cluster both go into the corner and they're not covering each other. He's taking his extension to um, as they normally do at the start of the clearance to figure out what he wants to do. Is he looking at to the middle? He might be middle, yeah, and then just rest on the red on the side maybe. Yeah, he had the angle there. You could just see it's Spins the cue ball. Yeah. So could could well have taken that long and run through. Absolutely agree with you. But he took it into the middle, and now he's behind these two yellows. Yeah, you see him just just peer through the gap there. We had a really good camera angle there. He just tops that through a tiny bit. The uh, the yellow closest to the black. Uh, there is a little window there. I think he's just on it. I don't know if he's run too far. I think he's just on it. Would would have liked to have run a, a little bit less than that and, and be able to punch that in and bring the white across to the left of this next one. So he's going to play a cannon. It's just gone a little bit wrong. Don't get me wrong. I'm, I'm, sure, I'll, I'm sure I'll do what... He does best and find a way around it, but if he'd have just run half a, say half a cue ball less on his last shot, he could have punched that in and brought the white out to the left of the one he's about to play now. Yeah, he's going to have to play this middle, so his bottom cushion probably side. And then you'll, well, he doesn't want to go in that white. middle. He didn't want the bump, but you know, he's probably still okay on this. Yeah. It must go to the middle. I think that's what he was playing playing on. I don't know if he's got a full pocket, but yeah, I think he has got a full pocket from the overhead that we can see. But he's obviously running away from this yellow. Just needs a little bit of attention. Yeah, they're not. Well, oh, where's the white? Wow, where's the white? Wow, that's a double whammy there for Clint. It looked like the yellow wasn't going to drop. Then it looked like the white was going to drop. Yeah, it was an only just, was that? Oh, could cue in. Over the rim of the middle pocket, but shouldn't be a problem for Mark. 2-1. The perfect start. Three frames. Three clearances from the break. Expect anything less really from these two. No, wasn't plain sailing. Had three yellows left, played one into the corner, bumped into another yellow, and didn't quite leave the angle he wanted. But he managed to run round table and uh, diced with a couple of pockets there in that finish. We nearly lost the cue ball. Nearly missed a yellow into middle, but uh, eventually didn't cause him any problems. And he now has a 2-1 lead. And as you can see, top of your screen there, the latest score, Dean Shields has taken a 2-1 lead in that as well. Yeah, two very hard matches to call. I uh, wouldn't be surprised with any combination of these four in the final. Made a ball. Yellow down. Just take another look at this break. So complete contrasting styles. As far as the break goes. Yellow's looking the stronger colour set, I would have thought. 
Yeah, I'm just wondering if he might play a plant here. The red in between the two yellows. Yeah, he's just lining it up now. It's hard to see how it can go wrong, really. Just make sure of the pot. You're probably going to push the other yellow towards the corner pocket. Uh, you're almost certainly going to be on the one over the middle. It's worked out. Worked out very well for him. So now it's just about picking your route. Yeah, the ball below the bulk line. Yeah. Needs to get down there at some point. Oh, looked like he might have missed that. So he could play corner, middle. I would think that the ball below the bulk line could be his, uh, his last ball to get to black if he chooses. Yeah, I think bottom right corner, middle next. Yeah. And then the one in the middle of the table to get to the one at the top. So that first shot, a lot of players wouldn't have seen it. Might have taken a slightly easier option or, a, you know, it wasn't an absolute gimme, the um, the plant, but stretching a bit as well. But he, he knew it was worth the risk. Yeah, it had uh, good rewards there. He knew he was kicking a yellow towards the other, the other corner. And as long as he made that uh, plant, he knew he'd open the game up. So this ball to corner, just run through. Just wants an angle on this final yellow, and that'll do him. Yeah, that'll do. Bit of top and left to bring the white up. Anywhere around about the middle pocket is fine. Just make sure he gets uh, he gets the left hand side on here. Yeah, make sure it takes. Doesn't want to be hamper queuing. He's fine. What a start this has been. Yeah, everything we hoped for and expected. It's black for two apiece. Yeah, faultless. Four breaks, four clearances. And we often say that the break is the most important shot. Obviously, the eight ball going down is the most important shot in a in a game, but the break counts, you know, more than anything else. And at this level, I mean, if if you dry break in this match, that could be the difference. Well, it looks like it. Yeah, it really could be the difference. See there, three one. Dean Shields in the other semi final. Both matches not hanging around. You get that though, semi finals, everyone's everyone's playing well. You can't fluke your way to a semi final, so you're queuing well, it's gonna be fluent, it's gonna be good. Yeah, Craig Brown there, dry break unfortunately. I suppose there's the one good thing is he's left a messy table. And there's not many messy tables when this band's uh, breaking, oh. trust me. When he half empties the table when he breaks most of the time. Yeah, another two, three, four. Absolutely ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. Get the power in that break. Yeah. It's like magnets. You can't, you can't even. <laughs> you see it a lot in comps and, and, and people using the cut break and out of sort of frustration and jealousy, people start saying, "Oh, are they tilting the pack?" And they, we've got referees. He's just, he's just absolutely hammering them. It's not. It, there's nothing you can do. You just got, just got to admire it. This shot's crucial. Yeah, and I think he's okay. I think he's nailed that, yeah. He's deliberately played on the one in the right middle next because uh, the one at the bottom of the table doesn't go into the obvious pocket, so he needs to get on the right-hand side of the table here. I think he's just about played it perfect. They're your little shots, your touch shots, that I think a lot of people don't appreciate either how important they are or, or you know, how how 
how good you are to, to nail those shots all the time. You see when they just run slightly out of position, three, four shots later, they're trying to get on it, get on it again. You know, and then people will walk away from the match saying, oh, well, I only missed one ball. but Well, you did, but you made it hard for yourself because you didn't have the cue ball on a string like this man has at the moment. Yeah, pinpoint. He left the perfect position to run through to his awkward red. And once he'd done that, well, there's not a lot to do here, is there? But this is the thing. He's that good, he makes it look that easy. I can assure you, it's nothing like as easy as uh, Mark makes it look. Yeah, I've had that conversation plenty of times when people say, oh, well, he didn't have to do nothing special. You know, they, they came out easy. They were droppings. No, they, he just made it look like them. White's on a string, never has to do anything difficult. Yeah, but when he is asked the question, he uh, he just pulls shots out from uh, nowhere when he needs to. And it is rare that he needs to. Such is the quality of his cue ball. Yeah. The perfect final, uh, perfect match continues. Five breaks, five clearances. Paul cannot be played any better than this. And that was the shot there you were talking about, Dan. Yep. You'd think there'd be nerves out there. You, ten thousand. They're two matches away from ten thousand pounds. They're just. That's what the best do. Was so Steve Davis saying play? Like it means nothing when it means everything. It's very calm, casual, relaxed, but focused. Yeah, and it's not easy to do. I'm sure they'll have both been feeling the nerves before this match. I know that Mark was uh, chewing away on his gum, but you wouldn't think it when you watch them both on the table. And that's the mark of a, a great. Needs a ball. He's got one. He's got two. Has he got a starter? Well, he desperately wants a red, doesn't he? I think he's got a red to middle. I think he does, yeah. I think you're right. I mean, worst case scenario, he's got a yellow in the in the corner and with a perfect angle to go into that cluster. But I, th I think he's just about on the red in the middle. Yeah. I believe the red goes to middle. So, this is the big shot. Missable, these. Queuing off the cushion. Yeah. Cool as a cucumber. Dean Shields 4-1 up now. Craig Brown. So, be running this ball through. Right hand spin on the cue ball. Yeah, and that really took. So, just deciding here how he goes about his clearance. The black not hampered in any way. So, pretty straightforward. Yep, perfect. Come out far enough now so that he can just top this through. Trace a left maybe to bring the cue ball back up to roughly where it is now. This is a hard game if you're watching at home, I promise. They're making it look like like the easiest game in the world. It's, it's really not, I can assure you. Well, I did say it right at the start of this match. It doesn't get any better than this. But we really are. Been given a treat here. What a standard. What a match. Wow. Yeah, the perfect run continues. Three breaks apiece. Three break and clearances apiece. I mean, it's hard enough to, to, to pot off six breaks in a row. 
let alone clear off six breaks in a row. Ridiculous standard. Craig Brown looking in good position there to get it back to 4 2. Assuming that red into the left middle that he's uh, going to get on next is not too acute an angle. Yeah, I think he's okay there. Must be a very good standard on there as well. I mean, that they're, they're rattling through the frames as well. Also on a shot clock, by the way. Yeah, so he's got red onto red. We can't tell from here whether that uh, eight goes to that left corner. But, uh, well, anyway, we won't know now. Back on the mainstream table once again. How many is he going to get off this break? Wow. Cupels. Oh, oh wow. Oh, you see, Clint was just getting out of his seat there and then saw the black dropped. Ouch. Ouch. A glimmer. Well, he made that plan. Oh, oh, he's no. missed the eight. He's missed the eight. Craig Brown, what have you done? What have you done there? The scoreboard pressure, 4 1 down. This needs to hold up. He hasn't, has he? He hasn't. Needs to hold up. Right, take two. Mark Boyle. Yeah, got to say he was fortunate there that the eight dropped. Very. Make a massive difference in this match. Wow. Wow. I want to see a replay. That that just I've never seen the pack split so. Jeez, well, that, that's I don't think I've ever seen him hit him as hard as that. That's ridiculous. I mean, <laughs> it is mind blowing to watch it's somebody cut break at that it, pace. It really is. Yeah, and keep the white on the table. That's the thing. I've tried it a few times. I've to not go airborne, it's incredible. Yeah, I fly the white off the table. It puts you off. Look at the instant explosion there. The action he gets on the pack is, is ridiculous. Yeah, it's such a huge advantage, it really is. It's not fair. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it must seem like that sometimes to his <laughs> opponents, I'm sure. <laughs> Slightly run out of position there. Hamper queuing. He's going to have to... Well, I, I, I don't think the white can go in off because the yellow's in the way. So I think key here, if he's going to cut this one into the left middle is just make sure of the pot. Uh, if you graze the yellow, or, or as long as you play at a, a, a gentle enough pace, it's almost going to be impossible for you not to be on something. Yeah, yeah. and this is what we were saying. Perfect. When he needs to pull the shot out, when he gets out of position, yeah, the very rare occasion, he just always seems to find the shot that gets him back in line again. Yeah, and that was very well controlled. He he, he kind of knew the natural angle was just going to flick off the side of the yellow, but the pace he's played out was perfect. Who's going to break first? And this is like a machine against a machine. Two players on cheat mode. Yeah. I, uh, I don't think I've ever seen him hit them as hard as that, cut break wise. This is going to be seven from seven. Amazing. Amazing standard.
this will be the most important semi-final of Boyle's season. Uh, obviously, Clint's been in a world semi-final earlier this year. But th this match has got a lot riding on it. And, um, you know, some crumble under the pressure. Not these two. Yeah, and some thrive. I think both these players thrive under the utmost pressure. They feed off it. Amazing. And it's hard to believe, but Clint has been flawless up to press. And yet he must feel under pressure. Yeah. He's 4-3 behind. He knows he has to make a ball. And effectively, he has to run out. If he doesn't run out, he's in trouble. There you see Dean Shields, 5-1 ahead. And at the table, with what looks like two simple enough reds. To go 6-1. It's a demolition yeah. job. Yeah, black to corner. Well, this could be two of the fastest semi-finals I think I've ever seen. Yeah. What time did this start? I didn't take note, I will be honest with you. We may be able to find out. I can find out on Q-School, which I will do now. Have we had a dry? We have. And our first dry break. Yeah, we've just been informed that both semis kicked off at the same time. We just don't know what that time is at the moment, but we are looking now. But yeah, as we say that, poor old Clint. Comes up dry. And he's not left the it's not left it that difficult, is he? It's a good split. Yeah. Good split. I mean if the yellow passes the red into the middle then I would fancy Mark to, to to clear on reds or yellows here. Yeah, and this is these are ominous times really for Clint. Four three down, dry break. So, sounds negative, but does it can pop in your head that ah yeah. oh, that's me six three now? It, th those thoughts can go through your head. Just look at this table now. Takes these two yellows at the bark end. Works his way back up. And if he is to take out this clearance, five three lead with the break. And the consistency of his break. Yeah, you can't blame... F you couldn't blame Clint for thinking, you know, I'm 6-3 down here. Mm. And I haven't done anything wrong. Nothing. Didn't hit a bad break there. Just didn't make a ball. Got a lot of action on the pack. So, just drops the yellow into the corner. He just needs to make sure second to last yellow will be the yellow on this bottom cushion. Just needs to make sure he leaves the correct angle to get to his last yellow. So he could run through low, and that's what he's elected to do. Yeah, anything but straight. Looks right. pretty perfect to me. Yeah, it's to me too. Just want to stay away from the side cushion if you can. Straight as possible on this yellow in the middle. Continues to make it look very, very easy. So, we've just uh, had a look. And we believe that these both, both semi-finals started at just after 10 past 7 this evening. So we're looking at, what, 50 minutes? Not even 50 minutes yet. Just gone 45 minutes for 8 frames of perfection. Paul at his absolute finest. Masterclass. 
Well, I've just been told that the first ball in this semi-final was hit at 25 past. Uh, maybe that's just when it went on Q score. Yeah, I so I think the yeah. score, yeah, that would make sense. Yeah. So, yeah, came up on Q score at just after 10 past 7. But the first ball in this semi-final, we're just coming up to half an hour or thereabouts. Just over. So in half an hour, they've both played eight frames. 7-1 yeah. Dean Shields. Trouncing. Just going to be the one where Dean Dean breaks his duck, calls himself the Jimmy White of Paul. Well, we saw Corey Reese do it last season. Clint's just got to stay calm, tell himself that keep doing what you're doing. As uh, good as Mark Boyle's break is, he, he does come dry now and again. It does happen. Tell himself that maybe he's not going to keep getting good splits. Um, you know, the, the games can turn. Yeah, well, he's already had a little bit of run when he uh, scratched in the corner. And luckily, the uh, the eight ball dropped, so it was a re-rack. That could be such a difference. Well, once again, smash. So... From Clint's perspective, at least he's got work to do on this. Whether he goes reds or yellows, the red and yellow together on the bottom left-hand side of the table is going to be a problem. This isn't straightforward. You wonder if he did want yellows, would he maybe try the skill shot first up? Bring the cue ball back to roughly the centre of the table, could leave an angle. To be able to break into this other one. Wow. I can't believe that. I don't believe what I've just seen. How's that stayed out? Yeah, I'd like to see that again. How was that not dropped in? I, I don't... I... Well, no, yeah, no, he's he's hit it into the knuckle, yeah. He has he has tried to play the skill shot as well. And um, what was seemingly a... Hold on, what's Clint doing here? Wow. That... That is a brave shot to play first up when you haven't got a colour. Yeah, and you have to say that when Mark Boyle attempted that skill shot, he is fortunate that red didn't drop. Yeah. Because if it had a done, he'd have turned over the massive advantage there to yellows. Yeah. So the very small amount of luck in this match that we've had, I think you've got to say it's gone uh, Mark Boyle's way, but it is minuscule. It's just been an absolute pool fest. And that's another oh, great shot. A yes. little bit unlucky there. He's a little bit unlucky because he has played it to perfection. He, he played to bump it out off two rails. Played it perfect. And uh, you, you, sometimes you do just need a, a little bit of luck and he's just not got it there. Yeah, that was a, a great shot. Great vision. What's he play here? I mean, he's got... Can't cut it, can he? The billiard? Off the yellow into the corner? Surely not the ultra thin cut. The ultra thin cut he's gone for, but the white's in off. Yeah. Where's a chance of that? Yeah, it was in uh, in big trouble there. A little bit of desperation. Tried to find something. Yeah. Got to count himself... Uh, a little bit unfortunate. Such a good shot he played on the red. Yeah, he's the just... opening red that he played down the down the cushion was a great shot. It's a great shot. When you had no colour set. Such a brave shot. Yeah, and the bottom one of those two yellows definitely goes.
this is looking very much like 6 3. Yeah, takes these two balls up top of the table there. Drops low. Black. There's nothing hampering the black. Black goes in the corner. Just be a question of getting uh, as close to it as possible without taking any risk. So there you see. Lex to try and land on that uh, lower of the two. And he is absolutely perfect, as yep. we've become accustomed to. Yep, very nicely controlled. And I want the cue ball back roughly where it is now for his last ball to get onto the black. Stop shot here. Okay, so he's taking the one. Fair enough. Yeah, I thought it might have gone the other way around as well. Yeah. Who are we to... Uh, question how Mark Boyle sees the game he's playing as well as he's playing just that he's got a shot to play now isn't he you know he's got to trust a little bit to uh, the bounce and the spring off this bottom cushion it's not a really difficult shot but if he took this one second last yeah. then he can yeah I think we both would have taken that second last uh, yeah but look at that. I mean, yeah. Plum. There you go. And that's the reason he used two cushions, not the one. Yeah. And he's uh, obviously so well oiled and plays, you know, so much on these cloths and these tables that he felt like he was in complete control. Had the confidence to play it off two cushions. 6-3. So, looks like Clint's just going for a comfort break. Try and uh, compose himself. And he, he he's really done nothing wrong in this match so far. No, nothing. Yeah, it could have been a different story. Mark Boyle attempting the skill shot early on in that frame. If that red had dropped, he'd have been in a little bit of trouble. As it was, Clint Hansen. His opening red down the cushion was a great shot. And then the next shot, when he breaks out his bad ball, he got to count himself very unlucky. He's, he's quite literally not played a bad shot. 6-3 down. Dean Shields, 7-2. Massive break. Look at these reds. Look at these reds. Yep, so he's taking this to corner. Just seeing where he wants to land. It's perfect. And just drag this in if he wants. Might even have enough angle to punch out towards the centre of the table. Yeah, can't see if that black goes middle. Might go both middles. But if not, he can take it long. Shouldn't be an issue. So it's just punched it out so these are the ones where you just need to not get complacent you're seven two up you know uh keep your foot on their throat so to speak anyway back we go oh dear oh dear uh oh the nightmare continues yet again dry break Again, he, he's hit them well. Yeah, time them well. Good cue ball. But no joy. A 
And if Mark Boyle goes on to make this clearance here and take a 7-3 lead, can you imagine sitting there, Dan? You've done absolutely nothing wrong in your 7-3 down. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I actually sort of felt a bit like that against Craig Brown yesterday. But the difference was I actually did just go straight in off the break um, and I didn't control the, you know, and that felt bad enough. Yeah. God knows how Clint's going to feel. Yeah. He actually hasn't done anything wrong. So, the difficult yellow here is the one that's hampered by the two reds. Yeah, and it'll be interesting to see how he goes about getting on this. It's a tricky table. Pretty sure that's exactly where he wanted to be. Yeah, and we do mean exactly. I think if he can, ideally, I think he, he would like to, to bump into the red and get that out of the way, but it's the angle he leaves on the next yellow after, which is important. Yeah. So he almost needs the white to skid on after as well. Yeah, that's absolutely perfect. He's played the cannon half ball. 7-3, Dean Shields. So he's... How has he messed them up? Looking for all the world to go 8-2. 8-2, you're basically there. 7-3. Do the wheels start to come off? So, is he going to try and bump this out? Rail first. That's what he tried. Well. Well, well. Time for a bit of boil magic. Just got into it a little bit too much. Run behind the yellow. So, Clint, this is what you've been staying calm for the whole time. Now's your chance. Yeah, so it's the first error we can really say from uh, Mark Boyle. Just tried to bump his bad ball out and slid past it. And he tried to pop that into the middle. And I tell you what, he wasn't far away. It wasn't. And um, interestingly there, you know, Clint's, I think Clint maybe could have tried to make that plant if he wanted to. He's chosen to, uh, this is what it does to you when, when someone's playing that well. You know, he, he's left Mark a chance here at a double. And the white could be swinging around. I mean, it's such a low percentage shot, but you, you never know what can happen. But, turns out it was the uh, right decision. So there you see. Very nearly made that. He would have been snookered anyway. And here you can see what he's trying to do. He'd run that cue ball right the way back up table. But it's Clint. Has a free shot here. He's just got to work out that corner. Just needs to see. So as you can tell here. So he's going to try and make this with the black. Yep, so eight ball to kick the yellow in. A little bit of extra insurance.
Does this red slide past the red and yellow? Will he just catch the red? Flick it away? It does look like that. He's got to get the gap correctly. He would like to just catch this red on his way in. That's what he did. Perfect. He'll take it. Probably going to see him come down for this red at the bottom of the table as his last ball. So it's just all going to be about leaving himself the right angle on that second last ball. Well, he'd like to have come away from this cushion a little further. Yes, this is a tester. There's pressure on this. The cue ball will be heading towards perfect territory for that uh, yellow. Should he make any error here? Never in doubt. Perfect. Yeah. He is a little straight on this, but uh, shouldn't pose any problem. There you see, he can screw straight back to the side rail and out. That's what he's doing. Perfect. He'll, he'll, he'll be looking to get somewhere along the line of the bulk line. Yeah, slightly low on this red to middle. Just run through for that eight ball in the corner. That's what he's electing to do. So he wants to keep running a little bit here. That's okay. It's okay. It's tad not perfect. Further. Yeah, a tad further. He'd like to have been lower on it, but uh, yeah, he's going to leave a little bit of distance here. But a little bit left hand side spin through off the cushion. There you see. He's fine. Tightens that angle up. He's kept himself in this match. It's there. So 6 4. Very, very rare error from Mark Boyle. He had that ball into the middle and just tried to develop the difficult yellow and slid past it. Yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong, it, it wasn't an easy clearance, but he's just so used to seeing him get them. As the comeback on, should have been 8-2 this, 7-3. Yeah, and 7-4, I don't know who's breaking next, but it uh, can soon change. You start to feel a little bit of pressure when you know you should have been home and dry. Yeah, eight. your opponent starts to come back at you. 8-2 is as good as done. Um, is he on that? I think he's okay, but it is close. Break all of a sudden is a little bit more important. Delivers as normal. Only made the one ball, but he's at the table. Yeah, not as good a, a layout as he's been used to. The early part of this match. But ball down is the order of the day at the break. Yeah. You just want to stay at the table, don't you? Yeah. Some control. I think I think there's a bit of a route here where he can he can play the one bottom left corner and bump the one off the cushion if he wants to. Um or he can just guarantee to leave himself an angle and back himself to knock the one down the rail. But he can leave himself an angle straight away to get into his bad ball. See all the top players do that, they're always he's just looking to see what his angle's gonna be like if he does bump it out. Is it worth the risk of bumping it out when he can just knock it down the cushion? 
I think it is worth the risk if the white stays there. Mm, let's see. Now he's a bit straight. I mean, there's an argument for just rolling it through and playing this yellow in the middle. It's a delicate, delicate little positional shot, but it does go in the middle. Yeah, and he may well be doing that. Maybe not. Is he looking at playing position into this bottom left-hand corner? So again, not, not not sure what his plan is here. Is he going to try and screw back off the ball to middle? Has he got the angle? I think he can definitely get into it enough to screw into it. It's just that, and and again, it, it can't always be perfect, but you don't want to be going into a ball and having to rely on landing on that ball. What's he played there? It's uh, a miscue, is miscue. that? Miscue, he looks straight at yeah. his tip. Well, 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 he's human. Just, yeah, so. I think, I think he was obviously trying to really dig in there. Yeah. Look how low he's hitting on the cue ball. Yeah, I think you could see just before he took that shot, he was looking at where he wanted to land on the side rail. Yeah. So he was looking at trying to get that yellow into the middle, the, the one that's behind the two reds. What a chance this is for Clint. Oh, dear me. Wow. Dear me. Well, let's try to break those balls, as you'll see here. Draws back. Yeah, I mean, it sounds a little harsh, saying it's not a great shot, but it didn't really have the control there, did it? No. It, it, it was yeah, a tough hit. You trust a little bit to luck with that, but he, he, he did have a bit more control as to how he how he went into them. That wasn't as planned. Not as planned. Well, I think he's just about got away with it though. I think two at the two at the uh end of the table where the black is just needs to leave himself a good angle on the next one but doesn't want to be grazing the red after he plays this. Okay, so he has just grazed it, but he's fine. But he need, needs to needs to get as close to straight as possible on the uh, on the yellow in the middle of the, the middle of the three. didn't like the angle so he's actually come up table for this that's not perfect either I see from his facial expression he's not not happy with it yeah the fact that he's under that cushion makes this so much more difficult yeah so look fine he's on it is he going to put the yellow? Yes. But if he just drops it in, he's leaving a horrible cut on the black from distance. Yeah, you do feel he's got to run forward here. But, but what are you going to do? I mean, are you going to are you going to cross double it? Are you going to try and power it in and risk that? You've just got to leave yourself a shot, haven't you? No, he has cross doubled it, but the slide. Slide on the cushion means he's missed it by quite a distance. Boop. 
So Clint taking this ball down the rail. I think he's trying to play sort of a little bit of uh, a safety at the same time there. Yeah, almost a shot to nothing, but... Now he could play this yellow off the red, potentially. This is uh, what a crucial frame this has become. You had the perfect start, 6-3. Not a mistake made. Quite literally not a mistake made. First seven frames all off the break. And now... Here are uh, a couple of errors each. Difference between 7-4 and 6-5 in such a short race, relatively short race, at this level was massive as well. Yeah. He's playing but your shot, Andy. Is, but he's, he can't afford to play it with too much pace, can he? I don't think. No, he needs to... That's it. No. He missed it. It's not there, but he has at least covered the black. So, simple enough snooker. The one thing I would say is if he does manage to hit this yellow up and down, if he can leave the cue ball where that yellow is now and just bump the yellow out, he'd put a lot of pressure back on to Clint. But it, it has to be perfect, this. Yeah, it just needs to cover the red. That's it. That's looking this pretty is, good. This is pretty good, you know. Oh, he could have done... Oh, it's just... Oh. It's a good hit, but he hasn't bumped it out. If he just catches that half ball, like you say, and, and, yeah. and covers the red with the black. Yeah, just bumps that yellow out, mm. puts a lot of pressure on. But he is really hampered here. So, fine cut to corner. Fine cut to corner and then... Uh, a better snooker. Yeah, a better Thank snooker. You. And he's just pushing that ball. He can push it over the pocket. 7-5 now, Dean Shields. And when we last saw it, it was it was looking for all the world of going 8-2. Is that a turning point in the match? So he just wants to push this in front of the pocket. He's looking at two cushions and flicking off the yellow. To sit behind the eight. This will be one of the best snookers you'll ever see if he gets this. So be some shot. Oh, he's got the yellow, I think. That, uh... Yeah, at least at least keeps him in the frame because the black isn't doesn't go effectively, so. You're stopping Clint from attacking. Again, Clint's got to be careful because if he if he leaves him on this yellow and he and he rolls up to it dead weight, he, he could get a snooker behind the black. See, like now it's 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 a low percentage shot, and even if he gets the snooker, it's gonna be. Fairly easy to get out of, but if if he can somehow get the yellow out just enough so that he can cut it in. Yeah, but he doesn't want to leave this black on, does he, on the eight ball? No. So, good pace. I think he's covered the plant. Lovely shot. Well, I know where I'd be putting it. It's <laughs> for definite. There we are. You're going to need a bit of magic here. That That's... Uh... Yeah, that's tough. Yeah, and the fact that he has this red... 
away from the two together makes it even more difficult. So is he going Jaws? He is going Jaws. Right, well, this is your chance, Clint. Yeah, smile there from uh, Mark. Played out of the Jaws. I thought for a second he was going to get the second set of Jaws. Could have happened. Yeah. So Clint's just going to bump this towards the corner pocket. No need to dice with death. Don't go too close to it. Perfect. So, that's, this is by far the biggest frame of the match so far. The only frame where either of them have made mistakes. And uh, what could have been 7-4 is now 6-5. That feels massive. Yeah, it does. All to play for. Yeah, and the uh, this match has changed completely. This latter uh, quarter, latter third of it. it really couldn't have flowed any better early on. Faultless, one after the other. Look at this. Craig Brown looking at getting another one back. Is that 7-6? Seven, yeah. 7-6. Seven, 7-6 six. Seven, six now. Wow. 15, 20 minutes ago. Looking like 8-2. Yeah. 7-6 down, but probably feeling the better of the two. Yeah. We saw earlier on, though, what... Uh, what Dean can do under extreme pressure. It's a player for a big finish. Enough, is, it? is it there? Oh, it's there. It's not gone down. He's made a ball. Not not an easy layout, but he would just be pleased to be at the table. Yeah, by the look of it, I mean red to middle. It's horrible when you're in the jaws like that. But if he does elect to play that. Oh, I think the red goes to the other middle. Yeah, and he's going to take it on. This is a big shot. Nailed it. Absolutely nailed it. Oh, oh that's harsh. That is harsh. Made three off the break. Controlled the white well, was coming back in a fairly straight line and just got bumped in. What would it hit two or three other balls and got bumped in? That is harsh. Yeah, he's uh, he's not getting the run in this match. That's for certain. Very unlucky. Take another look. Uh, kicked in off. Kicked into the corner. It really is harsh, that. So Mark's just taking a bit of time here, deciding what he's going to do with his with his free shot. Is he going to move the red away from the yellow to take yellows? Yeah, so he's played that well. So reds or yellows here, to be honest, but uh, yeah, reds. Just gives him a few more options, more balls on the table.
ball on the ball cushion. Yeah, probably next. Yeah, I think he's got the angle to. He's got no choice now. He wanted to get the cue ball a little bit closer to it. Did he miss that? Oh, okay. It's there. So it's the ball nearest the middle pocket. It's going to be the one that uh, needs to be careful with. Wants to get as straight on that as possible. Yeah. And he wants to get on it next. So he has options, options to top it through, find the gap, or just stun it back. He's going to check it up. Yeah, it's perfect. Yeah. So you probably see him just stun, stun the cue ball back three or four inches, and then play a little drag shot over the one into the corner. Dean Shields did take that frame, so it's now 8-6. So, just came back a little bit further than we thought, but he's still okay. Just dragged this in, and he doesn't want to be straight on his final red. That's the only thing he doesn't want. There you see, drags it, kills the pace, leaves himself an angle. Perfect. Takes this into the corner, bumps out. There you see, a little bit low though. Yeah, that's that's quite a bit short of where he wanted to be. I mean, I thought he could. He obviously prefers to to screw the ball than. Yeah, he could have run through. He had a, he had options. Yeah. So watch the cue ball. He just runs into this yellow, so he knows he's okay. Fine. Perfect. 7-5. Yeah, and that break there, that was uh, cruel. Kicked off in the corner. Mark earlier in this match was kicked into the corner, but uh, fortunately for him, the eight ball dropped at the same time, and it was a re-rack. And then he breaks and clears. Yeah, and we said at the time that, you know, that could make such a difference. Craig Brown still fighting away. 8-6. A chance to go 8-7. Can't really see the angle here. That's not great. He's on this. It's just not got through the white there. He's on it, but he's on the wrong angle. Needs to cue this very cleanly. Just gene himself up there. Yep, hammered it in. So, is he straight on this last yellow? Can he just draw back in a straight line? Just past the blue spot or thereabouts, you would think. Well, he didn't quite hit those as hard as he has been. He didn't, no. Dry as well. Yeah. Eight seven. Dean Shields, Craig Brown. Yeah, could so easily have been eight two. Fifteen frames they've played in an hour and fifteen minutes. Not messing about. So Clint really, yeah, we talk about luck as well. So he's finally gone dry off the break and he hasn't left. 
Hasn't left an awful lot, has he? Uh, he hasn't left an easy clearance. No. Work to do. I don't know if this... It doesn't look a dead set plant. I don't know how easy it's going to be to make the plant. On yellows. If not, he needs to develop them at some point. Well, a, a clever shot, but needed to cover the bag. And he hasn't. Would have felt a lot better about... He, he's obviously only left a, a very thin cut on this red on the side cushion. But um, wanted this bottom right-hand corner welded up as well. Can he see the red on the bark line, do you think? Maybe, actually, yeah. Possibility. It really was important that Clint covered this pocket, but if anything, if you're being really harsh, you could say it was a little bit of a lapse of concentration. Maybe you thought it was impossible not to cover the bag. Yeah, and this is the better shot of the two, isn't it? If you can play this ball on the bark line. Played it safe. A couple of inches short of getting a snooker of his own. So we've got a long yellow. It's it the thing. Toughy. It's the thing as well, though. That, that this long yellow, he feels like he probably has to go for it. But he's 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 leaving mark on his uh, on the red into the corner pocket that he should have had covered if he misses it. What a shot. Yeah, what a shot. Superb shot, that. Courage. Bottle. Punched it into the corner. I and mean, look where he's left the cue ball. He's literally perfect on the red into the corner. Could have then picked off the other one into the middle. And picked off all of these down. That was that was frame lost, if he misses that. Yeah. Brilliant shot. Tough enough pot to begin with, but to push it through as he did. The perfect position. Well, Fantastic. You don't win the World Championships without having to produce under pressure. Play the big shots. So, we're leaving this plant. Second to last ball. The only issue there is... Just wants to be right on this uh, this yellow. So he's going to drop this in. Just have to be careful with that shot. Yeah, this is. Yeah, this 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 can go wrong now. Yeah, I thought he may have left himself straight there. He could have just screwed straight back out if he had to. Yeah, he's all, he's caught the cushion a bit too soon with it. Oh, this is really. This is crucial. Oh, he's dug in really well there. You can see how much he kind of bit into the cue ball. They've really, really got some... Like, and on these cloths as well, the, the, the cue ball does react differently. You can get into the white. The, the uh, When you play a soft screw like that, it kind of... Um, you get instant take. There isn't that slide before it takes. Perfect. Seven six. Dean's shaking his head. Are we going to take it that uh, Dean is yellows, maybe, and he's missed an opportunity? Either way, he was shaking his head. He wasn't happy. Yeah, and I've just been told it was Dean Shields' his break. So that run out, that mistake that he may have made, would have been for the match. Talking of mistakes. Well, well, well.
So Clint's made a ball and he's here's his chance. These aren't too bad. Dean's on yellows. This is tough. Craig could have left this anywhere. Oh, he hasn't, has he? What a shot that is. What a shot, Dean Shields. Yeah, he's just got to be careful, hasn't he? That last yellow to black. Yeah, we'll try and keep you uh, informed on both. He's a good angle here. I think that's a pretty good shot from Dean. See Clint's is he on this ball? He wants to be, doesn't he? He yeah. wants to be on it He'd now. Wants to be on that now, yeah. If he isn't, get on it after this ball. Ball to middle. Just a little bit more work. Needs to bounce out this. Yeah, it hasn't. What's Dean on there? Is he on it? If it holds up, he is. Needs to stop running. Needs to stop running. Wow, heart and mouth. These aren't gimmies either. This, to put yourself in the grand final. £10,000 to the winner. It's there. Well played, Dean Shields. Well played. Yeah, held himself together. Had a massive lead at one point. But he got over the line in the end. Talking of holding himself together, what a shot that is. And it doesn't look anywhere near as good as it is, but he needed to be straight on that. He's perfect. Just top this through and then he just leave himself in a little window where he can cut that yellow in. Trace a right hand side, maybe swing it around two cushions. Yeah, he's like he's, spin it out, doesn't he? Yep. Yeah, he's um his frame's far from over. He needs to miss that first red. Spin it off two cushions. Doesn't want to be catching that first red. It will be. It will be tight. Yeah, he's flicked it. He's flicked it. That's no good. Another twist. What do you do here? Do you play off the red to middle? He's looking at it. You can't play the skill shot, can you? No, does he play red off the bottom to try and kick it in off the red in the middle? Like that? No, he like hasn't. That. Oh, my God. There you go. Oh, my God. There you go. <laughs> oh, my word. What a shot that is. Wow. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Clint what a Anderson. shot that is. Jesus. That even he finds it funny. That's ridiculous. Yeah, brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Wow. I don't know why he's laughing. I'd be crying. What a shot. Yeah. Great <laughs> shot. What an exhibition of pool this has been. Wow. At 7 all. He's not 7 1 up, cruising. Showboating. That's at seven six down against the machine. Yeah. Played in great spirit in the semi final. Both players. A lot of respect for each other. So Mark Boyle, he needs this break of his to work more than ever. He's made a ball. Think the reds plant into the top corner. He's on a yellow as well. I think. Yeah, you can see there he's looking at yellow off black if he needs to, but bit of work to do. Yeah. He's had easier finishes in this uh 
semi-final, but... Oh, he may have gone red here, I'll be honest. I think there's an argument for both. He's taking his extension, just to have another study. If he does elect to take yellows, he wants to be getting up table. Early doors for me, if he's going to play that off the eight. Yellows it is. The problem as well is is what are you going to be on next after you play the yellow off the, the black into the middle? Yeah, that's why I'd like to play it early. Yeah, are you pushing it towards this other yellow or are you going to remove that yellow first? Or are you going to potentially screw into it now? Off the side cushion? The bottom and left? Yeah. I think that's the shot. That's what he's played. What he's played, I think that's come out pretty good, but I don't know if the black goes in the middle. The yellow's come out enough, so it does go into the corner, but... Yeah, it's not, not clear. I think it probably does drop. Do you think if you... I mean, if not, he can play it long, but... Not going to be easy. It's good position on this second to last yellow. That's good. That's very good. You want to get as close as you possibly can to this yellow, but you don't want to risk snookering yourself. Yeah, and do we think it goes to middle layer uh, eight? Well, it, I mean, if it does go to middle, the frames, the, the frames as good as done. It's just about getting position on this yellow. If it goes to middle now, then then it's frame over. But if it doesn't, does he risk playing a cannon? Cannon on the red, perhaps, and play the black into the left middle? Or does he just top it through and take it long? Looks like he's playing it with screw. I think he's going to cannon the red. Oh, it's gone wrong. He's just flicked the black first. Another twist. So, you go across table to kick it into the middle. I don't think he's got much choice. That's what he's doing. Got a good chance of getting this, I feel. Got a good chance of getting it. <laughs> wow. Well, I mean, talk about plucking out the big shots when you really need it. Yeah, both players, the last two frames... Had to find something for that uh, eight ball. Get this straight across. But don't get me wrong, it's not the hardest shot he's ever going to play, but under the pressure, that's not easy. No, he had to catch it more or less half ball. Yep. Yeah, shaking his head. He just got, got into the white a little bit too much, didn't he? Eight seven, Mark Boyle. It's been a classic as this match. Set off like a steam train. On this back end, we've had uh, a few messier tables to try and sort out after the break. We've had some spectacular eight balls. Needs a ball. Needs, Needs a ball. ball. He's, got, He's one. got one, yeah. He's got one. He's got one, and uh, first glance, I think. I think these reds are very, very nice. Very nice. If anything, it's the eight ball that may, I'll say, pose him a problem. Maybe a little bit strong, but... Uh, 
Yeah, I think he just will probably end up having to plan it into one of the corner pockets rather than yeah. the, the sort of unmissable middle pocket that it might have been. This game's at everything. It's ours. Yeah, looking at uh, these three red to top, red to corner, and he may well elect to take the eight into this pocket. He's just potted that red in. It just depends. We'll see. Yeah, just needs to leave himself as natural an angle as he can on this one. Maybe a little further off the cushion would have been perfect there. Definitely wanted more angle than that. Wanted another couple of inches at least. Yeah, don't want to be forcing these. He wanted to be out past that balk line if he could, or somewhere in that region. Yeah. He's forced to play this with a little bit more pace, Dan, as you say. Well, he got out to balk line. Just made that look very easy. So, does he take it into that corner I've mentioned? I think you're right. I think... Yeah. Uh, I mean, there is another shot. He could play two rails to take it into the opposite corner. Bottom right of your screen as you look now. But yeah, he's played that well. Look, look at that. Absolutely perfect. What a match. Class. Cool, calm and collected under pressure. From the pair of them. It's all going to come down to one frame. Hill, one break. hill, yeah. Hill, hill. Pro semi-final. Been a race tonight. It all comes down to one frame. One break. And it's this man that will be breaking. If you were going to put your house on somebody making a ball off the break in a deciding frame, it would be Mark Boyle, wouldn't it? It would, without doubt, yeah. Most definitely. He's feeling it a little bit. He's, uh, he's toweling his cue down. This is huge. Huge prize money. Points. Everything at stake here. Everything. Well, look at that. Wow. Look at that. Wow. Just devastating. I mean... It almost feels unfair. It just does. Look, look at, at it. That. Look at the split. I mean, you deserve a good split when you hit them that well. But look at the split. Look at these reds. One... One positional shot to play, maybe, that he's got to slow roll this into the middle and maybe cheek in a little bit. Of, I'm trying to find problems here. I can't. No, I mean, this first shot leads him to the, the the tricky ball, really. Yeah. Would he like to have a little bit less angle on this one? Maybe. He'll know better than us from being right behind the shot. Either way, you just snapped your hand off for this split. Would have liked to have just gone a little further, probably. Yeah. But I think he's okay to middle if he needs to. I think he can also actually uh, just screw the white back Yeah. six to eight inches and play the one next to the black into the corner. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Ball to middle. Yeah, just, just about straight enough, isn't he, I think. Mm, hasn't quite gone as far as he wanted to. You could overhit that a little bit and you'd have been fine. Yeah, you could have run through, just nudge into the eight, as it is. Right hand side, and this needs to bite. Is he playing a cannon? 
Yeah, decided to play the cannon instead. Wise move. Looked like he was going to run through, try and uh, check it up. Just pushes the ball, promotes it towards the corner. Can he reach this? Is he worried? He hasn't got an extension left. He's stretching a little. Uh, he's played that to perfection. Decision to make here. Does he does he take the uh, red into the bottom right corner first? Or does he play the one in the middle? Does he feel like he can play this with a, enough check side to straighten the white back up? No, nope. so he's going middle first. I don't think he likes that. I don't think that's the angle he wanted. Yeah, the thing with this is you, you're not on the right line, are you? Nope. It's about pace. To the point now, does he does he actually top it through rather than screw it back? I think yeah, he has to. Got to top it. Got to top it, and that is perfect. What a game! What a standard! It's been an absolute pleasure to commentate on this. Surely there's not another twist. This to book his place in the final. What a match that was. Two, two players at the peak of their powers. Elite players at the peak of their powers. Just putting on a show. Neither one of them crumbling under the pressure. A mistake hasn't cost anyone that match. Just pure excellence. Uh, th there were times in that game where they really had to dig out some big shots under pressure and they both did it. Amazing. Yeah, I know it's a cliche, but they, they didn't deserve to be a loser in that match. No, they really didn't. They really didn't. It, Mark hasn't played any better than Clint. They both played absolutely perfect. Yeah. I think They've had one frame. There was one frame where they both missed a couple. And uh, that was at 6-4. It could have gone seven four or six five, and I mean, just a bit of run of the balls cost Clint the match there. I think the breaks really. The breaks, yeah, yeah exactly. The breaks, and that was it. And that's what we said right at the beginning of this game. The breaks, such an important part. And we're just about to hand you over now to Kevin and Mark in the studio with Mark Boyle. Thanks, guys, and uh, we're going to give uh, Mark Boyle a little bit of a rest before the final. And uh, Mark Pickworth, just reflecting back on that match, what know. have we seen there? That is two of the best players in the world doing their stuff on the biggest stage. Absolutely phenomenal match. Well, what a blockbuster. I mean, we just saw Mark Boyle just come out of the arena there. He's just a, good, a, little, a big puff of the cheeks because no doubt he was feeling a, a little bit under pressure there. Yeah, the split, absolutely perfect. You know, if you want to really you know, take the winning uh, break out at that opportunity that's the, the clearance you want but there would have been some pressure on that especially against a player like Clint Ianson but wow what a blockbuster that was that is certainly going to go down in the uh, IPA folklore you know in, in anyone's uh, top 10 IPA classics that that is going to be up there I mean what a time to pull out a break um, I mean, we talk about the Mark Boyle cut break, but what a break there. Those balls just literally exploded. They'd near enough give up themselves, didn't they? They just wanted to get off the table more than anything. And uh, the, 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 work, the power he generates mm. on that cut break is phenomenal. You know, that's not just luck or anything like that. That is like months and probably years of practice of making sure he hits that cue ball just so it doesn't arise up above the uh, the actual slate bed. Because mm. he has to hit it absolutely plumb every time and he seems to do it more often than not. And uh, when you're sat in that seat just admiring playing pool and the way that he breaks off, you just think, wow, what can you do against that absolute machine? Mm. So we'll pre preview the final. Uh, Mark Boyle and Dean Shields just in a, in a few minutes' time but uh, just let's reflect back on that ladies final and Deb Birchall again just uh, confirming that she is the dominant force in the elite ladies at the moment yeah she's definitely set out the uh, the standard of where everyone needs to get to she's obviously she will finish uh, the elite number one 
uh, you know, she was always favourite, but you've still got to go and do it, especially with how the ladies' game's going at the moment. It's just going from strength to strength to strength, and uh, no doubt we'll see a little bit more strength added to that next season again. Mm. Some really exciting times ahead for the ladies' game and the men's game, which will probably, you know, come upon that very soon. But yeah, Deb Birchall probably one of the best ladies players in the world and uh, you know she proved that and against uh, a partner and uh, I, I was just going back up in the lift with him on the way back and uh, he said I always find it really tough to play against you and that's what Debbie was saying to Rachel she doesn't sometimes produce her best but I think sometimes Rachel's in her head a little bit because she knows how good a, a mm. player that Rachel is as well and you know Rachel's got her own talent won a, an IPA title already this season and uh, well, phenomenal talent, both of them. Mm. So uh, we had a little bit of uh, fun with uh, with Deb and Rachel uh, not so long ago with uh, one of our editions of Guess Who. Take a look at this. No cheating, I know what you like. And you. Me, I don't use cheat. Is it? Can you see? No, can't sure. see a thing. Can't see a thing. Right, okay. I'm Ooh. scared. Ooh. Can I shout out what it is? Pineapple. Oh, I was going to say pineapple. <laughs> I know spring onions. Oh. Spring onions. Oh. I know because I chopped some the other day. The chef of the Boom. house. You can see who does the cooking in our household. Oh. Oh. No. Where's that? Oh, what? Oh, God. It's not real, is it? Because It's a fake snake. It is a fake snake. It's a, it's a mallet of some kind. It's a gavel. No, no, it's a meat tenderizer. Oh, yes, it is. Oh, yes. Look at that end. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> Spaghetti. Spaghetti. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh. oh, don't do mess. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Oh, that's grim. <laughs> At least I can win it somewhere, even if it's not Paul. So uh, a small victory there for Rachel uh, against Deb. Um, she just got the uh, spaghetti. Yeah, I've got to say, you know, probably, you know, the way that she played that, I reckon she would have been practicing at home some of that, um, the way that she'd come on. But who's thought of the spaghetti in a cup? It was you, wasn't it's, it? it? No, I had nothing to do with any of that, trust me. So please do not even associate me with what's going off in there. Mm. Do you think you'd have got the pineapple? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't even be able to eat that pineapple. It was quite tall. It was a tall tale, that's right. You didn't have, you didn't get to play that no, one. No. So if um, if you've enjoyed uh, watching all these great players uh, play on in the arena and um, you fancy taking the chance and uh, putting yourself against the players, well, uh, you can. Um, here's the details for the next year's tour. There are all the dates, uh, dates and venues. We start off in Newcastle, then we go to Coventry twice, back to Newcastle, and then back here in a year's time for the finals, which will be the final event uh, of the tour season, uh, unlike this year. So, yeah, anyone can enter. All you do is go to the website and uh, pay your deposit, and, uh, and you're in, and you could be, uh, you could be on, the, uh, on the biggest stage doing your stuff against the best players. And then the big one, what everybody wants to win, the defending champion, Clint Ianson, the 2024 World Championships. And that is bubbling up very nicely, Mark Pickworth, uh, with all the players seem to be uh, on an upward trajectory in their form. Yeah, I mean, obviously Clint's set the standard. He's a current world champion and you know, everyone wants to shoot him down. Um, and then, you know, if you think that you're, you're really capable of really mixing it with the best, get yourself in. There's no criteria or anything mm. like that. You can just enter through the shop and, uh, you know, test your skills against the best. That's right. If you think you're up for it, put your money where your mouth is and uh, we'll see you uh, in February uh, in Gosforth for the uh, World Championships. And uh, talking about the tour, it's going to have a, a certainly different feel next year, Mark, with, uh, with the World League, the inaugural World <coughs> League. And all these various countries who will be sending their top players to play as professionals next year. Very, very exciting time ahead. Yeah, I mean, just look at some of the countries on there. We just know they're absolutely huge pool nations. Australia, South Africa, Uganda and Zambians. 
you know, they, them boys all know how to sing and dance, but they also know how to play pool. That's the most important thing. So, yes, for some very exciting towns coming up uh, next season, and uh, we're going to see a mixture of uh, pretty much every nation that you can really think of. It's going to yep. be exciting. Yep, and we think there'll be some more nations who will uh, who'll come on board as well. So, uh, yeah, it's certainly going to have a def different uh, feel about the professional events next year. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I'm not sure about the actual numbers that's coming from each, but it's going to be two or four players from each uh, mm. each country, which is absolutely fabulous for mm. that. And uh, you know, hopefully, there's going to be some ladies as well. I mean, it's not all confirmed yet, but the, you know, the, they're the guaranteed nations. I think they're still playing off to see who's going to be uh, mm. mixing it with the best and that. I know there's been competitions definitely in Australia. Mm. Cause yeah. They seem to be playing week in week out over there, but uh, and uh, and. Uh, it's obviously, uh, th they've got a massive contingent over there and uh, they're really heavily involved with black ball and, uh, yeah, some exciting times coming up for the IPA, definitely with all them nations that's going to be involved. And there'll be a lot of people out there thinking, Zambia, Uganda, you know, surely, you know, these are not, not great players, but we know the talent that is in these countries. Yeah, and I think I spoke to somebody, I think it was about five or six years ago, and uh, and I said, oh, who is like the biggest black ball in the nation? And um, someone said to me, it's a Uganda, isn't it? Uganda, mm. and you just don't really mm. understand how big it is over there until you really, you know, dive deep on through your Google app or whatever it is, and really dig in there. That is a huge nation, and mm. they all absolutely live and breathe eight ball ball. Absolutely, they do, and. Uh, I was reading about the Uganda National Championships uh, very recently. I had close to 8,000 entries. Oh, struggling for entries then, aren't they? Jeez. <laughs> I mean, that takes some organising, doesn't it? I know mm. well, sometimes, well, we don't struggle with uh, you know, a few hundred players and that, but 8,000 We might struggle players. with 8,000, wouldn't we? Yeah, especially if there's only like a, a few of us that work here, isn't there? So, yeah, we might need to employ a few more people to, to manage that. Well, that. That's a fabulous number, isn't it? It mm. really is. I mean, there's some football teams that don't get that many to a, a game, never mind to get to a competition mm. yeah it's uh, it's a whole new world and uh, we're going to see uh, some of those top players um, testing their skills and it's going to be inter it's interesting to see how they adapt because obviously they play on different tables you know different brand uh, probably different cloth um, you know their, their patterns are slightly different as a result of that so it's going to be in interesting to see how quickly they can adapt to uh, you know the 861 and the uh, and the tables we use yeah i mean i've seen some of them on the um, social media like facebook um, streams and that because they're forever streaming aren't they with the, the pool and that and they're just fearless and i think that is what um, you know when they come to this country you know playing against the the top professionals some of these top professionals need to look out because the way that they play the game they, they won't play it as they do because they, they don't fear anybody mm. and they don't fear any of the pockets. Uh, you know, they'll take one down a cushion and, they, you know, it will just be like bread and butter to them. Mm. And yeah. we'll see some of those international entries at the World Championships as well uh, and uh, the inaugural World Team Trophy that will be taking place before the World uh, Championships. So uh, another inno innovation from the IPA. Yeah, I think that's just the uh, weekend before we, we start the main event on the Tuesday and uh, that's going to be very exciting. I haven't got the, the final number yet, but I think we're, we're up to about 10 teams now, aren't we? So, mm. you know, that's going to be really, really interesting, you know, especially when you're mixing against the, the English, the Scottish, the Welsh and all of them nations, you know, when you've got the Australians, the South Africans, Ugandans, Zambians, and, and the list is endless. And, mm. uh, you know, there's going to be a few more added to that list over these uh, coming weeks, months, maybe days. Mm. And I'm sure they'll be announced very, very soon. So make sure, if you are really interested, just keep a very close eye on our social media pages because uh, there's some news to come. Mm. And the World Championships, it's really, I mean, it's about, what, three months away? It's um, well, uh, yeah, about three months away. <laughs> it's um, it'll soon be here, and uh, it's really bubbling up um, very nicely because you can see a lot of players. It could be one of the most open championships ever. Well, yes, yeah, it, it really could. I mean, the, some of the uh, obviously the players that we've got here now, <coughs> you know, you've seen that gap close really hugely you know after the number one slot it's just so close now between one and five maybe six you know mark boyle six we, we think that he could be in the mix of being probably maybe the number one seed could be two or three because with this two-year ranking list it could be very interesting mm. come the very last tall you know tall date that will come up in january so when the world championships gets a bit closer and when all the final rankings are done it's going to be interesting to see who is in them slots because it makes such a difference to that draw 
Yeah, and obviously with the sort of false seeding of the likes of Liam Dunster, it's going to be interest, interesting to see where he pops up in the draw. You know, he could be playing a Mark Boyle in a in a last 16, a last 32 match. Yeah, it, yeah, that's exactly right. And we've already seen, you know, Liam Dunster, you know, he's, he's up against the best players straight away in the last 32, last 16, and they're absolutely deserved to be the final. But yeah, Liam Dunster, he's going to be within the mix somewhere because he's not going to be quite in the, he'll be in the top 32 but again he's going to be playing one of these top pros at some point early stages maybe last 16 mm. yeah it's all shaping up very nicely indeed and <coughs> you know, all IPA events are, are open to anyone so if you want to enter just go check out the shop on the IPA website and uh, get yourself in and we'll see you uh, in Gosforth for the Worlds or uh, in Gosforth for the first tour of next season it's all bubbling up very nicely indeed well we are just about to um, get ready for the final of the uh, professional, professional <laughs> event. <laughs> it's been professional a long, event. Couple of days, yeah. but it's been a long week to be finished, Kevin. You know, we, we got here Monday, didn't we? And uh, we, we sort of took it easy Monday, Tuesday, didn't we? And then well, uh, we needed to do after that flight. Yeah, we did. Yeah, we did. We had to like steady our legs a little bit. We and it was a bit like jelly getting off there. But uh, we got off there. We got here safely. Um, but yeah, and uh, this this uh, tour's come round very quickly this week. I'm not sure where the days have gone. I can't even believe I've been here nearly a week. Mm. So Dean Shields against Mark Boyle. We've talked about Dean Shields as the nearly man, one of those people knocking on the door. He's in a final. He's up against Mark Boyle, Mr Magic. How do you read this one? Well, he got to a final <coughs> in the Isle of Man. He always seems to do well. You know, whether he just feels a little bit more relaxed in this venue. He, he couldn't even explain it to me. You know, I questioned him about it when I was uh, interviewing him in the studio, and uh, he just, he just, he, he just seems to be relaxed in here, and he, he just loves the venue, the atmosphere, and all of that. And once again, he's into another final. But to what we've just seen, the, the actual machine that the way that Mark Boyle's been playing on this table, he's going to have his work cut out. But we've also seen Dean Shields on this table. You know, when he played Gareth Hibbert earlier on today you know he played some absolutely scintillating stuff and uh, and he's had a great result against Craig Brown who's been very much in form mm. well you can see their uh, routes to the final and uh, Mark Boyle there pretty pretty comfortable I mean you could say both players uh, uh, you know there's been no deciders I mean uh, Dean's had a, a couple of you know eight six nine seven but uh, Mr. Magic Mark Boyle, he's been pretty pretty dominant. Eight five eight four nine two nine seven. Yeah, no offence to the players that Dean's played. Though. You probably think Mark Boyle's probably had the tougher route to the final. So, you know, even though he had a nine two victory over Ross Fernie, I mean, he's obviously he's played the the number two seed, number three seed, and uh, you know, got rid of them too, and he's in the final. And, you know, I know uh, Dean. He's had a few closer matches. You know, the Gareth Hibbert that probably deserved to be a decider, but made light work of Richard Swafford, mm -hmm. who's had terrific results mm. against Corey Reese and that and then Craig Brown like I said been very informed but he was 7-1 ahead there so credit there to Craig Brown to come back I know he came back to 7-6 then it went 8-6 and then 8-7 and then again another one that probably deserved his, a decider yeah and just a word about Craig you know he beat uh, he beat Liam Dunster the, probably the tournament favourite pretty convincingly I, think. I mean his confidence levels must be absolutely through the roof at oh, the moment absolutely and you know and I think uh, you know every year or two years ago we were saying to him he really struggled with confidence but yeah he dispatched of Liam nine frames to four it was not it on one of the outer tables I think it was four all at one stage so you know mm. Liam wasn't going away to take five frames against a former world champion former IPA number one player is an incredible achievement and again another great one from Craig Brown he's sooner or later he's going to be in a final of his own and he's, he's going to be picking up a trophy sooner or later absolutely well I think we're just a couple of minutes away now from the start <coughs> of the final the players are just uh, getting themselves ready so we're going to take a very 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 short break and we'll be right back with tonight's final
Oh, oh. I think it should be half to half the size. <laughs> Plus, if you go with Arley Ball, that's virtually the whole tour. <laughs> Is your player left or right handed? Yeah, right handed. Not the hard bit, you've got to remember who's left handed. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> <laughs> it's a mental question. <laughs> <laughs> what a stupid question. Right, Meanwhile, That's it. The <laughs> That's the elbow. Yeah, so. Wait, they've not knocked anything. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Mike. Oh, that was a good one. Yeah, 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 really helped you a lot there. Is your player a world champion? No. No. I think more sensible question. Is your player Scottish? No. <laughs> well done, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> Has your player won a ranking title? Yes. Yes. Right, anybody got a list? Right, don't think so. Don't think so. Don't think so. No. Yes. No. 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 Yes. No. 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 Okay. I'll throw a wild card in there. Is he Manx? <laughs> oh, that's a tough one. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I reckon I could go home now and still win this. <laughs> Is your player Scottish? No. No. Is your player English? Yes. Might get two down this time. Is your player from Wales? Yes. Up against the odds here, so I'll try a wild card. Is, uh, is my player South African? No. <laughs> You're going with this, the ambitious question. <laughs> Has your player been in a world final? Yes. Yes. Is my player Gareth Hibbert? You are, that is amazing. No. <laughs> <laughs> and if I've done this right, your player Simon Ward. Correct. Yes. Well done.
First to guess the item wins. <laughs> Have you got it? What is it, Gav? Pineapple. Why, why didn't I get a go? I was like, last time I beat you, I just took it. It's a pineapple. <laughs> Snake. Yes. Wait. Next time, then. <laughs> He's got it. <laughs> salary. No, not salary. Flowers. <laughs> Uh, spring onion. Yeah, it's spring away. <laughs> One of them sponges you use in the bath. I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't get it out. And uh, three, two, one, go. It's a person. Oh, yeah. it's done fairway, that. Uh, no. Dan Davy? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Is it? Yeah. <laughs> See how I knew by the boobs. <laughs> I can't believe you think I'm that short. <laughs> Good evening and we are back here for the professional final. I'm Mark Pickworth and I'm joined in the commentary box by our very own Andy Richardson. Hey, good evening Andy. Yeah, good evening. What's this got a making of then, this well, final? I don't know if you saw any of the uh, two uh, semi-finals leading up to this, but I've just had the pleasure of commentating on the Mark Boyle match, Clint Hansen. What a standard that was. And I do know we kept looking over at the other semi, and that was a battle. So this could be a real top draw final. Yeah, Dean, he's been into a, a final here in the Isle of Man before. Might have been a couple of years ago, maybe a year and a half, whichever one it is. Um, but he's up against an absolute machine at the moment. So, I mean, the way that he played in that semi-final against Clint. And even earlier today, he played some brilliant stuff, hasn't he? Yeah, and he's breaking like a god, it has to be said. We're used to seeing that cut break smashing into the side of him, but... I don't know, he's been giving it a little bit extra. I was talking to him just before this final. Said he was timing them well. Felt he was hitting them really well. Dean Shields. Well, in that semi-final of his, to all intents and purposes, he looked like he was 8-2 uh, at home and dry. And there was just a little turn and he uh, went very close in the end. So I don't know what that will take now of him. You're right, sometimes then long race matches, you know, you want to get it over early so you can have a bit more of a rest break. But yeah, it could have taken a little bit out of him. But Mark Boyle wins the lag and yeah. he does what Mark Boyle does. Yeah, and I think that might have taken a little bit out of him as well. Witnessing that, uh, your opponent breaking like this. Look at that for a break once again. Brilliant. I do know that Mark was saying that it took a lot out of him, a semi-final. Huge concentration required to play at the highest level. But the adrenaline always kicks in, you get to the final. Yeah, even though, you know, I mean, he broke like God in that deciding frame, didn't he? Yeah. But, you know, they still need potting, don't they? And they've got to keep, that, like you've already said, that concentration level has to hit the very highest uh, ability, doesn't it? It really does. And it's such a huge part of the game, concentration. And it's uh, easier said than done, keeping your levels as high as these players managed to over the duration. Yeah, and you know as a player yourself, you know, this this game can be mentally draining at times. It really can. And uh, but as you say, if you try and keep that level of skill up to a high level, it can take a lot out of you. Yeah, I mean, that previous match, Clint Ianson there, I mean, he did almost nothing wrong. Such is the level. Well, it's an early error from Mark Boyle. One that we weren't expecting. No, definitely not at this stage. Um, but first frame. Remember, this final, a race to ten. Yeah, and a, a 
lot at stake in this final, grand final of the pro event. Played it well, very well. Yeah, he's got the cue ball into a very good area. He's just been now working out what his pattern needs to be. There is a plant to middle there, but it's a little trickier than it looks. He may elect, I think he's just looked at possibly using the red near the pocket. He could, if he, he decides to, he could elect to try and disturb those two balls. If he's not confident with the plant. The only problem with that, I think that's what he's going to be doing. You just you just trust him to look ever so slightly with the cue ball. That's the only problem. So you think he's going to take the one closest to the pocket here and just um, bump that over red out? Is that the plan? I think it possibly is. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Soon see. He wants to get the inside. Well, he didn't want that. He didn't want that. It's gone wrong. Yeah. Does he still go into the middle, though? Does he still go into the middle? I don't think so. Can he screw back into these two balls? Is that a possibility? I think he's going to have to pinch the pocket a little bit. He has tried to. Oh, just missed it. Just missed it. So as we'll find out now, if this has got a potting angle, I just don't think that red's sticking out just enough. Uh, he would have played it before now if that was the case, I feel. If the ball nearest the cushion isn't quite touching, can he just roll up to it? Maybe just a little safety. But he has to get this absolutely perfect if that's the case. He's played, he's played it well. It's a clever shot. I it know is a clever shot. I mean, he has left sight of a yellow, unfortunately. Yeah, you feel like if that was just a touch softer, it would have been perfect. Yeah. And does this yellow go off the red into the middle, or is the red just too far? Has it gone just a little too far? Difficult to tell. But he could go into it this way if he chooses. Yeah, you feel like he'd be guaranteed on the uh, the, the remaining yellow that's in the bottom half of the table near the uh, black ball spot. Okay. I'm not sure if he, he meant to go into that. He might be just playing that shot that you've already called. Yeah. When he was queuing it up, I did think he was probably trying to move it, but I think he's definitely left this to play off the red. So he must feel it's a cert. Ah, it's a cert. Doesn't want to block that pocket. Well, it's not the end of the world if he has, as it does go into the other corner. But I think it probably does pass if he needs to. Yeah, and I think he's got a nice angle on this one in the bottom half of the table, just to come on and off the bottom cushion. Leave himself on that of a yellow into the centre. Needs to leave himself an angle, though, so he can drift back up for the uh, the eight ball. Looks a little bit short of pace where he wanted yeah, it to be. He is short of pace. It's definitely not as planned. Now, this does cut to middle. He may elect to play this and run into the red. If he chooses middle, that's what he'll be doing. And that's what he's going to do, I think. Can he just drift wide of the red? Or does he just try and hit it? Yeah, and he's tried to hit it. That's a great shot. Great shot. Perfect. Yeah, very well executed cannon there. And uh, just shows this snooker background there. Just holding for this uh, eight ball along the cushion. We should see this. Into the top left-hand corner, and it is. It's one nil to Mark Boyle. I mean, he, he had a miss there in that frame, didn't he? But uh, and then a, a bit of an error from uh, from Dean. Yeah, um, wasn't punished. So he'll be relieved to get that first frame on the board. Oh, 
been told in my years that uh, Mark Boyle's only lost four times this year on all the tours. You know, obviously he's had a few wins, and uh, that's an incredible record. I mean, uh, wow. Yeah, it really is, with the standard being as high as it is. It's and incredible. The, and the amount of frames you've got to play now, you know, it's... Uh, then we, we'll, we'll go back to the concentration thing. So it proves he's really absolutely got that concentration level to the maximum. Yeah, and it also tells you that that break is super consistent. Because you don't win that many matches without a very, very consistent break, a break and run record. be interesting to see what his win percentage is for this season. And if he's only lost four times, incredible record. And just like that, I've been told the percentage of the uh, win ratio for this year's tour is 88%. Wow. Yeah, wow indeed. I think if Dean knew that uh, about that percentage before he got his queue out to come down for the final, I think he might have stayed in his room. Yeah, and look at this. Dry break. That's the last thing he wants. So... It's going to be reds, that's for certain. And he played that in such a way, cleverly played there, played it in such a way that he brought the yellow away. So just watch this shot. Well, we've got a rerun of the break. Yeah, Dean Shields, I mean, he deserved a ball there, didn't he? Because yeah. he has hit them ever so well. But what he did there is he not only made red onto red, but he made sure he moved the yellow away. And because of that, this ball on the bottom cushion... Now goes into the same corner if he needs to. Yeah, I mean, like you said, it's probably the that was the key to opening this frame up. So we'll we'll probably get a, a look at that shot, you know, after this frame's finished, and uh, just you know, it'll probably just show how important it was, especially if he goes on to clear these up. Yeah. That was his intention, just to clear that pocket. I mean, he's not well on this ball, don't get me wrong. This is a tough ball. And here you go. There you see it. That was the key. I'm sure we'll see the shot that he played to open that pocket later. Later on in this match. So now, the most difficult red you would feel is the one above the balk line. Goes to corner and may go to middle. Well, a little further, I think he'd have been on it now. But I'm not too sure. Well, that camera angle there tells us he's not on the one in the uh, top half of the table. Um, I, th I think that would be the one that he'd would love to have taken next. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure of it. So, what does he do with the red above the balk line? This is what he does with it. That's what he does with it. Get that for a shot again. Bumps it out. Yeah, And he's not perfect still, but what a great shot that was. Yeah, it certainly was. Use the natural angle for the cue ball. And this will be a test of cueing. Because he's, he's more or less dead straight on this red. So he needs to screw back out for sight of this final red. <laughs> and once again, timed it well. A little short. Just a little short. And the problem here... Probably the yellow nearest the corner pocket may well hamper the path of the cue ball. Don't know if he can avoid it. If he can, he'll be running round table. So yeah, he's checking this up. So watch this for a shot. Well no, he's caught it, you see. That was a problem. I don't think he intended hitting that ball as he did. I think he tried to slide past it and round the angles. Well, we know what a great potter he is. Can he see this full ball? No, he 
can't, can he? No, definitely not. But what has he got on? I feel like he's going to have to create something here. Is he going to try and spin into it? Or, well, he's tried a double. He's tried the double. Well, once again, Dean Shields comes back to the table. And he needs to convert this to a win. You feel if he's going to progress, making a headway in this final, needs to punish at every opportunity. Because believe me, these opportunities are a rarity when you're playing a player of the calibre of Mark Boyle. And he's had two already. So, looking to play the yellow to middle. Run through. And he has a, a multitude of balls he can land on here. Just needs to make sure he runs through far enough. Not sure if that one goes into the bottom left-hand corner. Well, well, yeah, behind. It, it, must it, does. Do. it would have been a terrible shot if it didn't. Yeah. Like you said, he had a lot of options uh, running that cue ball through. Near enough impossible not to land on one. Yeah, just needs to be mindful of the eight ball here. Because his final yellow to eight wants to be uh, close to this eight. A little tricky where it is. So here, I would imagine he's going to play the yellow bottom cushion, yellow to middle and he just wants to leave a little angle here so yeah he's checked it up, he's maybe a little too close to the cushion here for comfort but this is basically a stun he can either stun or run, so he's going to run through stuns, there we go played it well as close to the 8 as he could get that was a good recovery <coughs> Well, I thought he'd missed that for a second. He caught the rail well early. But it still fell. So, he got there. There you see. I think he thought he'd missed that as well. Yeah, I think any order. I think that's not dropping. So, but one frame apiece. That's the shot we were talking about earlier on. Where he p took reds, but he made sure he moved the yellow. And as a result, gave himself every opportunity. And there you see, round the angles. He just landed a little uh, tricky. Tried to avoid that yellow. It made contact. Didn't leave himself anything, really. And then Dean Shields did what he needed to do. Punished. One apiece. Mark Boyle to break. And in the semi final, he was unbelievable. The power he was generating with his cup break. Even more than usual. Well. Look at that. Fantastic break. Hit them really well. So punches into the second ball down. Back off the side cushion. And that yellow just hangs in the corner jaw. Nothing down. Yeah, very rare dry break from Mark. Yeah. Especially today. The thing here is, with this leave, you really want yellows where that eight ball is. Yeah. 
Yeah, played it good. Good shot. Made one of each. Yeah, so that's still classed as an open table. So he does need to put a ball. Well, look up, well, put a colour set. And that will be his colour set. Alex to continue with the yellows. So he's got a tough yellow. He's got a couple of tough yellows. Either side of that uh, middle pocket. The one on the cushion, the more difficult of the two. The other potentially a double. And if not, the yellow next to it. He could break it out at some point if he, if he sees fit. And there he has the angle. So he can pop this to corner. Stun into that difficult yellow behind the red. And he'd be unfortunate not to be on either that or the ball down the cushion. Oh dear, he's miss hit that. Complete miscalculation. Missed the yellow completely. Just got a rerun here. Look at this. Punches into it. He just wanted to catch that yellow. Instead, in off. Disaster. Yeah, maybe he didn't have as enough angle that he needed. Um, or he didn't try. Probably tried to pinch the pocket a bit more than uh, he did. Either way, he's given up the table. To Mark Boyle, and Mark Boyle is now absolutely perfect. One shot, and he's in prime position. He can take this. Screws back off the side. He can bring out that uh, red behind him, which he does. And he's got several options how he continues here. He also has the insurance of that yellow on the side cushion. These balls are open. Now you see, deliberately runs into the red. Just pushes it towards that middle. Not a great deal to do here. Perfect. So, ball on the blue spot. More than likely, the ball that leads him down to the eight ball. Takes this to middle. It's a stop shot, you would think. There you see it, stops it. Just drops this in the other middle. There you see the angle he's looking at. So, drop this in middle. He could leave the cue ball more or less where it is now. Just run through maybe an inch or two. And he just follows through on this final ball. So you'll see. Red to middle. Tops it through. Just below the ball line. Will do him. There you see. Just below the ball line it is. He does make the game look easy. We were saying this in the previous match. Simplifies everything. But as we said, it's a much more difficult than Mark Boyle makes it look. I can assure you. Yeah, been a bit of a, a scrappy opening few frames here from both players. I mean, obviously Dean's, you know, more more mistakes than what Mark's made. Well, there's the trophy up for grabs. The grand final professional uh, event. That's what everyone wants. And uh, a small little prize as well, Andy Richardson. Yeah, great prize, isn't it? Nice uh, pay packet for the uh, the weekend's work. Whoever takes that uh, fantastic trophy. And of course, you also have your ranking points at stake. 
Yeah, and there's going to be, I mean, if Mark does go on to win this final, I know it's very early stages, 2-1 up, it is a really good chance he could finish number one because uh, come January, when all the uh, tour points have dropped off from the, the last two years, because Mark did miss three of them events, so he's not going to have any points dropping off where other players around him could be dropping him off. So it could be interesting come January to see who's going to be taking which world ranking space, uh, sorry, world ranking place for the World Championships in February. Dean Shields had a good break last time, a little bit unlucky that it was dry. Makes a good connection, where's the cue ball though, Dean? Yeah, where's the cue ball indeed? And that is the difference between breaking head-on and the cut break. Far more likely, you feel, to go in off when you break from the front like that. But that has got to be player error, really. Drew straight into that pocket. Shouldn't have been anywhere near it. Didn't get kicked in off. But he's just got to forget it. Wait for his chance. Just cut out these little errors. And if Mark Boyle, with his free shot here, runs this red down table, look at the reds. There you see, just bumps it out. Likes to keep it near the middle. Spins the ball, just checks it up to hold the angle that he's looking for. So, bottom right hand side on this cue ball, just making sure he spins past the yellow. There you see, back out for red to middle. Just thinking if it'd have liked a little bit more pace in that, maybe. But I think he's he's happy taking this one now. Yeah. Just runs through and back out. He's a little tad short there of where he wanted to be. Yeah, just got to be careful here. Obviously, ball to middle, no problem. Now, he's going to be running into this red. And he did so in such a way that he hoped that spin would hold for position on his next red. This is a little bit of a shot he's got to play here now. It did look pretty straightforward earlier in this clearance. So, got to cue this well. Yeah. He's got a choice of both reds here, I think. I think he's just on that one in the left centre, if he does elect that one. Yeah, if he can see it, I think he'll play it. I don't know if he can see enough of it, can he? Yep, I can. Yeah, because he's lovely and straight on it. So... Oh, red to corner. Could play two cushions here if he chooses. And that's what he's done. One, two, and out. So eight to corner. And he really is punishing Dean Shields for every mistake that he makes. As you would expect him to do. Yeah, very costly. In off scratch from the break. Cue ball into the corner directly. 
So just see, needs to take a breath. Try and keep his focus. Still early days in this final. Race to ten. I think both players probably feeling it a little bit tired. I know Mark said he was uh, flagging a, a, a touch. Had a little bit of chocolate. Got himself a sugary drink just to get a bit of energy. And when you have to concentrate for this period of time, you know, match on, match off, it's tough. Yeah, they've played a lot of matches today, a lot of frames. And they're playing another one now, best of 19. Oh boy, though, frame number five, he's breaking. What a great angle that is to watch this break. Hope he's got some protection on that camera. That eight ball has dropped in there. That's, he's, he's done that a good few times today. Well, the last time he did it, he was fortunate, to be fair, because he, uh, he broke, went in off, and then the, the last second... The black dropped in the corner, which was a re rack. So, pretty much the same, yeah. Now. Is that but it was very important right? previous time. Yeah. Because he went off at the same in off at the same time. Just uh, a couple of spectators there loading up with refreshments. I think we'll be joining them after this final mark. Yeah, we'll have one or two again, won't we? We'll visit that casino next door. Yeah, it's dangerous, isn't it? Just a few steps away. Yeah. Some good atmosphere in there, though. Yeah, yeah it's a brilliant atmosphere in that casino. When everybody comes in. But, yeah, no early nights when that's about. Still plenty of pool going off as well in the other room. Yeah, the, uh, the open event that's going off, ladies and men's. The amateur event, that's down to a final that will be shown tomorrow morning at 11 o'clock. The ladies' amateur final, that's finished. Ashley uh, O'Neill beat Yvonne Ewing six frames to three earlier on this uh, e this evening. So, once again, cut break, smashes into them, ball in the middle. And here... He has an option to take either colour set, to be fair. A little bit of work to do with both. Oh, I think he's, yeah, he's going to go for reds. So the red that does need some attention, and he's going to be on it in a second, is the red that's uh, just below that middle pocket. But he can play this ball to middle now and land on that. And if you look at it, that's the way to go because ball to middle, ball down that cushion, leaves him on the ball to the other middle. And it's uh, a yeah, perfect position. Needs to make sure of this. I do feel he would have liked to have been a little bit straighter on this ball. Just a little bit more angle than he wanted. Yeah. So he likes to come back to the other side of the table. The ball on the bottom cushion. He wants to get rid of that sooner rather than later. Didn't want to be leaving that as his final ball to get to the black. There you see a different perspective. So it takes this to corner. Bottom, a little bit of right hand side here. There you see. Just drifts up past the balk line. Yeah, you can tell there. It's just showing you where he wants to be. Red to corner, red to middle. 
This wants to be slightly left, so low on the ball to middle would be perfect. And that's what he's done. Just slightly low. Which is the absolutely perfect angle. Stun to middle. Just below centre. There you have it. Once again, making the game look easy. Simple black, simple eight ball for a 4-1 lead in this final race to 10. I think 4-1 is a fair reflection up to press. Keeps wiping his hands. Just look tired out there, does Mark. But uh, as always, still plenty of focus. He knows he's got a job to do. So does Dean. Yeah, I think that's an interesting observation there. You just you see both players early. They've still got that concentration in there, haven't they? Yeah. And no doubt they're, they're very fatigued and yeah. tired. No, it's imperative that you've got the focus. Can't afford to switch off at this game. Much better break. Hit them well, but nothing down. No, nothing really threatened a pocket there either. No, very frustrating. Desperately, desperately needed a ball from that break, you feel. at this struck them well great cue ball brought it back in a straight line unfortunately no joy in the uh, potting department nothing down and these reds it's this first shot really it's position from this first shot that's key Doesn't want to kick it behind the yellow. That's fine. And already he solved the problem. These reds. Things beginning to look ominous for Dean Shields in this final. Yeah, he's got that cue ball in a very good area. It's a choice of reds. And you just feel it's a bit of one-way traffic at the moment. Very delicate little shot he played there. That's lovely position he has now. Yeah, he played that little thin cannon. It's like a little stun shot into it, just to flick off it. Yeah, and he's it, the, the the red that uh, that's important for him here is the next one he plays now. And if you look at this, he's got the perfect angle. Yeah, I'm assuming he's going to take the one closer to the cushion first, draw it back. Yeah, he always wanted to be making sure he didn't run into that yellow. Made sure he got the right angle. Yeah, I think it's imperative probably to lend straight on it as well, just so he could draw it back. But yeah, he's done exactly that. As you say, worrying signs now for Dean Shields. Because Mark Boyle looking like he's halfway to... The race to 10. Going to lead this five frames to one. Yeah, he really is looking like a man on a mission. Ruthless. 
Ruthless indeed. 5 1 now. Mark Boyle leads. And, uh, it looks like uh, Dean just going to go for a comfort break. Yeah, maybe collect his thoughts. Take a deep breath. A bit of cold water. Yeah, it's just uh, there's a few bits not gone for him. I mean, he's had chances. Yeah. In the opening three frames, he could have been found himself 3 0 ahead. Uh, but uh, unfortunately now, he's 5 1 behind. Yeah, yeah, he had that. So he's he's had a break and he's gone straight in off. He had the opportunity early on in one of the frames where he uh, tried to move a yellow and he went straight into the middle. I think that was a key point. So he's not done he's not done a, a lot wrong. His brakes not working. Yeah, brakes not working, and he's just looking a little bit frustrated. And obviously, against a man, you know, on form like Mark Boyle is. I mean, Mark Boyle when he's not on form is a handful. Yeah, but this this is him at the top of his game. Yeah, we spoke earlier on, didn't we, about you know obviously their previous semi-finals. You know how much of did it take out a Dean to have that that fight back from Craig Brown in that semi-final? Because you know it's like he fell over the line in the end, and uh, you know it's, that can take a lot out of you, can't it? It really can, yeah. And he uh, he didn't have much of a break before this final. Both uh, players. We're back on in uh, probably half an hour max. So, yeah, of the two, obviously, Mark Boyle looking the stronger by some margin at the moment. You've got to say, he just looks very relaxed, very focused, as you've already pointed on. Mark there. Yeah, he's just cleaning that queue down again. Keeps cleaning that glove. <laughs> A lot of players just uh, sitting down, coming in to watch this final now. Hope you've all enjoyed our coverage back at home. It's been pretty terrific. We've still got another day tomorrow yet, Andy. 11 o'clock we start tomorrow. 11 o'clock? I know, that means the... I thought it was one. No. I mean, breakfast just finishes at 11. Well, it's about to be early to bed tonight then for me. Yeah, Honest. You sound really like you're really disciplined, Andy. You know, mate. Oh, what's happened here? Consummate professional. Look where that eight ball's landed. Is it potable? On that cushion... Never thunderous break from Mark. Yeah, well, even if it isn't, if you look, you could play yellow, the one that's near the middle pocket, off that black, off the eight ball. I think you may see him take this on. So, yeah, and straight away, he's coming back up here. So he's going to take this to the corner. And then, there you see... Big pocket. Yeah, you feel like he's probably going to take the balls in the bottom half of the table first. I mean, the, the yellow that's left of the one on the cushion, you know, that might be a little bit tricky, so maybe that might, option might not be on. But as you said, that yellow next to that right and middle, bottom middle, that he's pointing at now, that ball yeah. there, that's the one that's going to open up that pocket at the top. Yeah, I feel he plays ball down to corner. And then he plays the ball that's near the middle off the black ball, off the eight, in such a way that he leaves himself position on the yellow that's next to this one he's potting. So there you see. Didn't really want to be straight, though. I'm pretty certain of that. So what he's going to play here is off the cushion first, which gives him a little angle. And if not, he could run through. He's got to be careful with this eight ball, you know, because I don't think he can move the red out at the same time. I don't think so, anyway. So the black could go past the red. Yeah, good call. That's not really what he wanted. You feel like he's going to have to go into him again now. 
It's either that or he maybe feels he can play black onto the cushion off the back of the red possibility. Difficult to tell from here. I think that red maybe is a little further away from the the cushion than uh, ideal for that shot. Yeah, I think the black's just probably a little bit too close to it as well, which uh, just uh, take that shot away from him. It's all about this angle now. I feel like he's got to get back into it. So it's about leaving an angle on that final yellow that's on the balk line. Needs an angle. Or has he got your shot on, Andy? Yeah, I think he may be playing the shot that I alluded to yet. We'll soon see. Yeah, he is looking at it. He is looking at it. Yeah, I don't think he's got any choice now. That's the shot he's enough to play. So, elected to leave this lower. So, it's eight cushion back of red into the corner. That's what he's looking at. I feel like he's got players with a better pace. Yeah, and he did. He tried to hit it with a bit of pace. I was concerned it was a little too far away from the cushion, but he must have felt it was on. Because he definitely deliberately left that as his, uh, his choice. Didn't elect to go in and try and move it. So, Dean, come on. You need to step up here. You're taking that comfort break. Gathered your thoughts, one would feel this this is the time to kick on got to punish every opportunity now he needs things to run for him and he needs to make the most of every single chance that he gets yeah that previous shot there were marked you know that red put on the cushion nothing's landing nicely for for Dean so he's having to work a, a little bit harder for this clearance now you feel like he he, he probably needs to bump this red off to try and make it a bit more easier but if he's going to bump it off he needs to do it sooner rather than later yeah and if he's going to play it down the cushion he needs to get as close to it as possible you feel it does look quite tight to that cushion I don't know if it, it maybe would double but he could try and play onto it now which is what you think he's done Yeah. Well, he's he's played with some confidence here because this is uh, this is no easy pot, and he needs to make it. He really does need to make it. Played it well. Played it well. Much better from Dean Shields. This. Well, he's a little bit in no man's land there. Further out, he could go to corner. And if he'd have run a bit further, a bit lower, as we look at it on the screen, he could have gone to middle, but this is a tough pot. Great pot. Great recovery. Yeah, he's going about things the odd way, really is. And... Uh... Things aren't smooth for him out there at the moment. He's, he's having to work super hard for these clearances. And again, this shot got a little bit of hand queuing. Yeah, but on a positive note, it builds confidence, doesn't it? You know, running out of position. A couple of tough pots. Can't afford to miss any of them. That'll feel much better. Yeah, sending a message over to Mark Boyle's corner, just saying, look, I'm not going away just yet. And uh, Dean, you know, very good clearance, that. So 
So it's all about can Dean Shields get back into this match. 5-2, it's not far away. A bit of a yawn there, look. Been a long day for these fellas. <coughs> Been a long day for us all. Yeah. <laughs> Been a long week for you. You've been here since Monday. Yeah, since Monday. I can't believe where the time's gone now, Andy. I really don't know. But yeah, these guys have been battling since this morning. You know, these race to eights, race to nines, race to tens, they can take them out of you. What does it say? Only the toughest survive. Still seems quite relaxed out there though, Dean. That's the best way of being, isn't it? Just relaxed. Nice to see Kev Barton's relaxed, sat down watching and admiring the game. Yeah, while well, we put in the hard graft. There's a nice part of Stella there for you, mate. We're going to get that. I'll do, mate. In one of the youngsters. Even young, one, of the, uh, one of the youngsters. That obviously must be uh, a few of the locals there. The crowd. Yeah, we've a great representation from the locals at this event, as we always do. The Isle of Man. Frame number eight. We have the stream table, <laughs> the three other pro tables behind, and we Frame also have another five, large eight. hall. Many more tables in, and that's absolutely packed. Yeah, 14. I went in there earlier to go and see the tournament director, Bronny. Just let her know what was happening yeah, in the other room. <laughs> And uh, yeah, there's, there's everybody who's in there. Standing room only. Yeah, it really is. It's difficult to get to the top table. There's that many people in there. Finally got a ball off his break, Dean Shields. Only just dropped, but he'll take it. Not yeah. a bad connection again. Cue ball was tracking, though, to that corner pocket. So let's have a look at these. I feel like it needs to get some momentum going, don't you? And uh, But again, these look tricky. <coughs> yeah. Straightforward. That yellow just below the middle pocket. Dodgy. That cluster around the eight ball. So, he likes to take reds. It was a good, good opening pot, but well, it's not really paid off, has it? So, as you can see there, he's eyeing up red off the yellow into the middle. But even if he should make this, he still has that red that he's just queuing over. Well, not quite hard enough. That was a problem. Perfect line, though. Thinking. Yeah, but everything's just falling difficult for him. You know, he'd love to have it a little bit easier. Especially being 5-2 behind. It's this ball just below the middle. It's the issue. Obviously, 
He's not dropped where he wanted to be there either. So, has to reroute. Not a bad little kiss. I, f I feel that, that uh, yellow that is below that middle pocket, Andy. I think he's got to try and bump it out. I'm not sure he can just drop that in. I mean, if he can drop it in, it'll be his last ball, but it's getting on it. You know, I think he's going to try and get as close as he can to it. Even if he has to take it long. Let's see. So. He's yeah. probably going to be taking both. Well, the two, two yellows lowest on the table. Could well take those into the same corner. If he is planning to land on that uh, difficult yellow last. That's what I think, I think he's looked at. Now, does he try? I suppose really it needs to be his last ball now. I think he's committed. This is key shot. Whether yeah. he goes into it or the angle that he leaves the one on the bottom. See all about this angle on the one on the bottom. That don't look bad. No. And the thing is here, I don't think there's any value in trying to run into it now. Because the margin for error with position is too great. If he can just spin this in, let's see. Very delicate shot he needs to play here. Well, he did try and hit it. And that was a toughie. It really was a toughie. So is that touching ball? I mean, if it is, it might be a bonus for him if he can just hide the cue ball near red. Just rest it on it. I mean, he's going to have to make sure he hits a cushion. What can he do with this? Is it touching ball? Yeah, I'm not sure if our referee give that. But yeah, it is touching ball. He's aiming this uh, away from the yellow. I know what eight happened ball. there. One free shot, one visit. Time running. Well, let's give it away a, a f one free shot, one visit. He must uh, like touch the yellow twice, maybe. I don't know. You know, and he's. Yeah, I don't know what he was trying to do there. I'd have to see a little rerun. Well, Dean can close the gap a little bit more. Seems to have picked the pace up a bit now, Dean, as well. Yeah, because he has had the opportunities, hasn't he? Yeah. This is the thing. And I think he'll take 5-3 down the way the match has gone. Yeah, this mileage in this, yeah, that's for sure. Yeah, I just wonder what he was trying to do there when he was touching that yellow. I still think it'd have been better just dropping on it. I, I mean, I don't think it went in the uh, the top corner. But, oh, oh, oh yeah. See, yeah, just connected with the yellow first. I wonder what he was trying. Was he trying to dislodge the yellow? Screw did back see, into it. Did you see the the screw back in? Yeah. So I think he was trying to take the yellow off the cushion. Yeah. So that at least if he did get an opportunity, he could at, at the very least maybe. Trying to bank it, kick, kick it in or something. Yeah, it felt like they couldn't afford to leave the yellow there, so yeah. tried to make something happen. Frame Once nine. again, it's the Mark Boyle break. Leading five frames to three. Time running. Well, 
dry break from Mark Boyle. This match is getting a little bit interesting again. 5 1 ahead, Mark Boyle was. And we've got Dean Shields back at the table, only trailing 5 3 now. Yeah, didn't split well those balls. I mean, he seemed to hit them okay. But that pack, the middle of the pack, didn't seem to move. Not in the uh, way we're accustomed to. So maybe he didn't quite catch them right. Maybe there was uh, a little gap there, possibility. The general standard of racking at this tournament has been absolutely top class. A couple of issues, sort of day one, maybe with the temperature. But uh, a couple of adjustments were made since then. Yeah, the tables have uh, heated up, as has the action. Yeah, and the standard of play is definitely heated up to today. It's gone from strength to strength. I mean, you find that in tournaments, it will start off a, a little bit a lower level and then it just ignites into an absolute dish fest, which we've seen plenty of them on here. Yeah, and that'll do him. He's just kicked that red over to the side cushion. So should he not make a clearance here, be leaving some work for Mark Boyle. He'd have something to do with those two balls. Because they're not a plant. No, but you you feel that Dean would love to take this out of this opportunity and really, you know, give Mark something to think about. Because it'll be Dean to break in uh, frame number 10. Yeah, so it's red to corner. Red to, it's red to corner. Yellow to corner. Yellow to middle. And it's all about the angle on the second to last yellow. Stuns out. Now, I think he's just the, the wrong side of perfect. But it'll do him. On the overhead, it just looks slightly to have run a little further than perfect. If it had been the other side, he could have run forward. So here, we'll be using the red to hold for that final yellow. You would think. Where does the eight ball go? It's a question. Well, yeah, you're going to see this. He's going to go corner. Side, bottom, side. So it's two or three rails here. Unless he checks, you know, he can play this with a lot of side. And I think he's going to do. This is tough. He's to slow down. Yeah, that was the problem getting towards that corner. Oh, this that is cushion. Oh, this is awful. It's a horrible shot. Not only has he not got his hand on the table, he's on the side of the table, and he's queuing over that red ball. He could have played uh, a couple of cushions there. Had the option. This is tough. What a shot that is. What a shot that is. Very good. Very good indeed. And uh, anybody that thought that Dean Shields was out of this final. Wow, what a black that is. He's back in this. 5 4 now trails. And it will be him to break in this next frame. You feel like, you know, now he's got his brake working a little bit. You know, can he keep this momentum going? Because uh, it's given Mark Boyle something to think about. Yeah, and uh, Mark Boyle, previous break, came up dry. Which has got to give him even more hope. Yeah, he looks better, doesn't he? Since he's been for that comfort break. Just seems to have, uh, those shoulders are up again. There you see that break from Mark Boyle. He yeah, had a couple of balls rattle. Oh, yeah. It ended up dry. Just not the movement with the pack that he usually gets. So, Dean Shields. Revitalised Dean Shields, we may add. Three frames on the bounce, he's had. 5-4. He now trails. 
on big break here. We feel like we've got to have a match on. Cue <laughs> ball safe. And he's got a ball. Where is it landing though? Oh. Does the red go to middle? I think he might just have enough angle. I don't know. It's hard to see from our angles. Can he cut the yellow to corner if he chooses? Never good. Never good contact though off the uh, head ball. Yeah, he can certainly pot to middle. It's just a case of the red that's next to the two yellows. There is the cue ball. Need to work something out with that. Yeah, that's what he's looking at now. Yeah, I think you know if he hadn't got the uh, the red to the right middle, he's definitely got the one to the left middle. As you said, Andy, that red that's uh, in the ball here, you near them two yellows. Is there an angle to even play it? Uh, he can play the edge of this yellow. Yep. Don't blame him. The problem is cannon into balls. Where's everything going? Well, that'll do. Well, we'd like that to a hung. Don't know. He's not in a bad position. Oh, it's fine. But he, I think he would have liked it to have hung. Just a little bit of insurance. Yeah. But he's okay here. So, just that yellow over this left-hand centre. feel like there's a, there is enough room. I think the red's far enough away maybe to clip it in there. So, we can just drift down table here. Yeah, that's a lovely little oh, shot. Oh, it is. Tell you what, they're not easy to play. Yeah. They're a bit more easier to play when you're 5-4 five, down, 5-1 five, down. You feel like it'll probably gone in off. So, can he play yellow to middle here, do you think, Mark? And maybe that, that sort of ball the other middle. Let's have a see. I think it is a, he's got an option for it, but yeah, he's elected to set these balls low first. So that's one. Now he could play it, if he so chooses. Yeah, he's just having a look. Yeah, this is the way to go, isn't it? So I'll play this to middle. The good thing about this other yellow is the natural angle just drifts out. So ball to middle, and there you see that side cushion. Yeah, natural angles, that's what you're always looking for. Yeah, he wants to avoid the co any contact with his red. Really, just so he can drift down because he needs an angle to get back up for the the eight ball, and it looks like he's pretty good. Yeah, I think that is perfect. Only needs a very slight angle. It's just a little stun shot if he chooses. Just stun. He could run through if he uh, feels, but I think just a little stun. Now you see it. As I said, it was pretty good. You got to say, Dean Shields is probably feeling a, a lot right. uh, pretty good as well now. Five each. What a comeback this is! Four on the spin for Dean Shields. Yeah, parity, five apiece. Well, he was five one down in this final, and he was looking well dejected to say the least. So Mark Boyle to break once again. Came up dry last time. Surely he can't come come up dry again. There you see the referee just making absolutely sure. No gaps in this rack. So important that all fifteen balls are touching. That previous break, he may well have been a little gap somewhere in that rack. So just making doubly sure. Frame 11, Mark Boyle to break. Score tied five frames all. Time running. Matt Boyle staying at the same side of the table. It's been working for him all weekend. So, let's see. We get here. 
Yeah, fantastic break. Once again, normal service is resumed. Let's watch this again. Punches into that second ball down. Flies back into the cushion. And a great split. So the red on the bottom cushion wants to be uh, getting onto that sooner rather than later, you would think. Could elect to play red to corner and get on it now. Yeah. So, what's he going to do here? Anything but straight. Just a small angle will do him. And he can screw this. So it's corner and it's a soft screw. It doesn't need a great deal of pace. It's more about timing, is this shot? Yeah, you probably play this shot a lot different on a snooker table. You, you know, we, you punch it in on a snooker table, on a pool table. You don't really have to, to do that. As you said, a little soft screw. Yeah. You know, when that cue ball is obviously smaller than the object ball, you can get a lot more action from it. So, but play to perfection. Yeah. Very wisely, he used the red in front of the corner pocket to get onto that ball on the bottom rail. I thought he may have gone for it straight away, but that afforded him absolutely prime position. Taking it a ball later. So this is going to need a decent shot, you will feel. <coughs> Needs to come back up table. little further I think he would have been uh, perfect just a tad short can he just drag this in and hold or does he run into the black or does he play the other red there's your answer yeah he's played that nice I mean, he's going to have to bring the cue ball down table on and off the cushion maybe just to get directly behind him, he doesn't have to but you feel that that's a, a more natural shot for Mark, he likes to play them sort of shots yeah. and Mark, you've got to say has done pretty well here because he, he's just admired Dean clear up in the, uh, the last four frames so you know, takes some stern stuff doesn't he Mark's made of well, Mark is a proven winner, and no stranger to these finals. These big finals, prolific winner, as we said earlier, the start of this match, phenomenal stats. When you look at the, uh, the win ratio this year that Mark Boyle has produced, again. he's at his most dangerous. Yeah, again, had a puff of the cheeks there, yeah. so, you know. He's probably feeling it out there. It all means a lot to him. Yeah, but he'll step the gears up here, you feel. Five apiece. That's 5 1 in front. He knows the massive importance of not going behind. Stop the rot. Stop the rot, he has. Dean Shields to race. So, Dean Shields 
and have a frame behind again. Six five. Dean hoping for a big break. Well, hit them well, and I think he deserved a ball there, if I'm honest. Yeah, not a lot of threat in the pocket, though, did it? it just... No. But yeah, he hit those well. Plenty of power. Just that one red in that top corner, that was it. Yeah, decent cue ball. Close. So, I mean, these have opened up quite nicely. Well, very nicely, haven't they? calling for his extension as players often do just before he uh, decides which route he's going to go just takes that extra little bit of time yeah, looking at reds here as always it's about the order you take these balls they all have a pocket. It's the one behind the eight ball and the one to the right of the eight ball as we look. There are a couple of key balls in this clearance. Oh. Let's see which way he goes. He's done that right down the table, didn't he? So he could take this ball to the corner. He may elect. Well, there's a path here. Cue ball off the bottom cushion. And just push up. Let's just see what he does. Yeah, that's exactly what he's gone for. But he is, a, is he short there? Yeah, a little bit short. Just wanted to push up another, another three turns of the cue ball. Would have been ideal. And then he'd been able to play that red below the eight and just stun into that black. It'd have been perfect. Yeah, there's a there's a lot of traffic in the way here with all these yellows. Yeah. Is he looking at playing this off the yellow or is he going to cut it? I think he's only got the cut option, I think. Yeah. Cut it. And the good thing is the path of the cue ball. Oh, yeah, very nice. And the other red. Goes to middle, so he could just run through here. He's just putting a little bit of right hand side on this. Well, did he put right hand side? He actually came round the back. I wasn't sure there whether he was going to try and leave it for the middle. It's been a tricky little clearance, this one. Yeah, everything's been close to his work, hasn't he? He's had to navigate the cue ball a lot. And again, I think even this shot, he's going to have to navigate something. Can he get to the side rail? Well, he's just tried to kick that to leave it for the middle. He's short. What does he do now? If he plays this, he needs to hit it very hard to have any chance of making the angle. Cue ball will be travelling. Hold on to your hats. He's going to have to punch this. Here we go. Oh. Here we go. Lovely shot there from Mark Boyle. Right. Yeah, puts his hand up there, but that's the shot he played. Always manages to find something. As Mark. Never really in great position in any of that clearance. He 
He was always just a little bit out. They kept chasing. Tried to develop the eight to leave it in the middle. And that was uh, that was a good shot to punch it in. Any softer, and you feel it have missed the middle. There you see it. Yeah, needed the pace. Punches it straight in. Delightful little shot. And that gives him a 7-5 lead in this race to 10. For a second there, I'm sure Dean Shields was thinking, I have a chance in this frame. Frame 13. Mark Boyle to break. Leading seven frames to five. Time running. So, Mark Boyle once again. <coughs> a punch into these balls from the side. Well, once again, nothing down. Take another look at this. Yeah. Fantastic hit. Total control. But unfortunately, nothing dropped. Yeah, this table's starting to play mean off the break now. Opportunity here for Dean to go one behind again. Just checking whether that goes between the two yellows. He'd have loved it to go through there. Been able to play it and run through. So yeah, this dry break, Andy. It's imperative that Dean finishes this off. Yeah, he's got a bit too much angle there, as he should be able to hold. Now look at it; they should be able to hold this. Does look like he's a little bit. Uh, it's not quite where he wanted to be. Now can it? Can he just drag this in, or does he? Well, oh, that has gone wrong, yeah. I'm just thinking, playing at that pace, what what was he thinking? I don't know. Was he maybe trying to hit the yellow? But I, I doubt it because he'd have been blocking the eight. Surely he can't have played the gap to come back out again. Oh. Yeah, that would have been extraordinary if he'd have got the gap and come back out. It's a chance this has. Oh, he's going to try and come off one cushion, hit the red off the yellow. Tell you what, he wasn't far off. 
No, we weren't, but there'd be a bit of frustration in that. Yeah, I don't think uh, if he was trying that shot, I think uh, probably a little hard anyway. But yeah, definitely frustrated. That was a great chance. Mark, he still needs three frames to be the winner. So he's still got a bit of work to do. Opening pop. Crisp. Heart of the pocket. Stuns out across. They want to leave at least one of these yellows. Yeah, he's going to leave the yellows up top for last, which makes perfect sense. Easiest way for him to get onto that uh, eight ball is to leave those balls or leave at least one of them. He's decided to leave both of them up there. So just keep things simple. Through the gap, there you see it. Yeah, nicely done. So he's taking this to corner, and all he wants to do here is make sure with his second to last yellow that he doesn't leave too much of an angle. That's perfect. It's the right side of this yellow. Pot this. Just stun across slightly to leave him as straight as possible on his last yellow. There you see, he had the angle, the perfect angle. So this eight ball to open up a three frame lead again. He's had a chance in this uh, frame. But didn't take it. And Mark Ball has now opened up that three frame lead again. Eight frames to five. Two away from picking up the title. Yeah. Dean gone for another comfort break. And I think Mark's uh, decided... It's time for a quick break himself. Yeah, well, Dean Shields early on in this match. 5-1 down he was. He came back to five apiece, so in, he knows how to come back. And I think we've uh, just seen that Mark Boyle there just having a look at the air con. I think he was telling me how to operate it and that, so I think he's... Uh, he found the ins and outs of it. Yeah, I think he set the aircon last night, he was saying. <laughs> Technical support. Oh, he's back looking at it. Not just the pool player. Got all the uh, skills of uh, an air conditioner yeah. uh, engineer. Man of many talents. I wonder if he was turning it up or down. You feel up? Maybe to get a bit warmer. Oh, he's having a bit yeah. of the engagement with the crowd. Yeah, he's saying it's the table slowed up. It, it, usually it slows up when it's colder, so... Maybe uh, a couple of sluggish racks with the brake. An indicator as well, maybe, that uh, the temperature had dropped slightly. Yeah, we did notice, didn't we, that the table started to play a little bit meaner. 
Especially off the brakes. We did. So. <laughs> Always played in good spirits. The games here in the IPA. Had a little smile to themselves. Obviously talking about air conditioning. Not, not a language that world understand, Andy. So, Dean Shields. Let's have another look at this break then. Is there? Frame 14. Dean Shields, the break. Trailing eight frames to five. Time running. Well, that ball was tracking towards that corner pocket, but thankfully for Dean Shields, it was stopped by another ball. So let's have a look at this. There you see, well, I think he may not have gone enough, but he was close. But he'll take these. Electing to take reds. So it's just this initial ball to middle. Just need to be careful. So he's taking this red to the corner. You can see there. Ideally, I think he'd be looking <coughs> the red next to the yellow. Just checking the angle here. He feels he can make this run off the side, back across. Let's just see whether he's right. Well, he didn't intend doing that. It's not as intended for definite. Yeah, very clean pot. Yeah, he's in a little bit of trouble here, unfortunately. That red that he's just uh, moved doesn't go to the corner. It does go to middle, obviously, but he's got a big angle on the other red. How does he... Can he check this up? Doubt it. Out it. He's under shot clock pressure. I think he's just hit the jaw there and it's reversed back towards where his red is. Yeah, I think it's done him a favour. I mean, this is tough. Do not get me wrong. Yeah, the pot's tough enough without... The, they're obviously trying to get the position on the eight ball as well. It may be OK if he can drop this in. Just come back out wide of that yellow. Well, he's missed it. Unfortunately, yeah, very tough. Missed it. Just missed one too many in these last few frames. Watch this again. I think he just hits the jaw. So, call for his extension. And he needs to be careful. It's the two yellows to the left-hand side of the table. Obviously, they are a plant.
So if he takes these two yellows low, he may well play that plant when he has three yellows remaining. For me, that would work out. Let's have a seat. Elected to play it now, has it? Yeah, you feel like he probably will play this because I'm not sure that red goes into the top right -hand corner, so it's like a little bit of insurance, really. Oh, he's got to be careful. Yeah, I thought he might take the other ye yellow as well, but. Uh needs to make this plant which of course he has can drop this into the corner lands low on the yellow to the other corner she has so he can run through to the side cushion and back out if he chooses just like that. He's got the pace perfect on that shot. Screws back. Cue ball somewhere near where it is now. And once again, making the game look very easy. Under the utmost pressure. Yeah, one frame now. Mark Boyle's away from picking up the title. Can he do it at the next opportunity? <coughs> Dean Shields definitely had a good few chances in these last few frames. Should be a little bit closer. But the current scoreline, 9-5 to Mark Boyle. One more he needs. Dean Shields. This will be some comeback if he does. He's got to take the remaining five frames. If that's what he's going to do, cause a bit of a, an upset here. Yeah, well, he did take four on the spin to come back from 5-1 down to level at five apiece. So he is capable, but will Mark Boyle give him the opportunity? Mark Boyle will get his break back working. Watch out. Yeah, I think that aircon's uh, done the trick. See the rerun. Powers into that second ball down. Punches them open. As is the norm. It's a good split. Just looking at reds here. Yeah, I think it's all about them two reds in the balk area. I mean, do they? Can he, you know, pop that into the right hand corner without cannon into it? There's not a lot of room for uh, you know, a little bit of error there. Yeah, I think one blocks the other, so he may be only can land on one of those two reds. So. As a result, decides to take yellows. Yeah, I mean, he's got two yellows on the cushion. Probably going to take uh, one in his next visit. Still got that one on that right and cushion. Yeah, the ball down the cushion, side cushion there. May well be his third last. We'll soon see which way he likes to go. So he's going to take this into corner. Just runs out. Yeah, and he leaves himself yellow to middle. <coughs> yellow to middle. 
Yellow to corner. And then does he try and get on that difficult ball on the side cushion? Because if he does, I think it's game over. Yeah, you feel like he's going to have to leave the two in the bulk area to his last two. There's one who'll play onto the other to get onto the black. Yeah. So, key shot here. This is all about cue ball control. Yeah, it's got to be careful. Middle pocket. Well, he's short. Definitely short of where he wanted to be. He accelerated a little bit. Are we going to see a twist in this match? I think he still maybe play it. Just depends. Is he going to reroute? Well, if he reroutes when he plays that ball down that cushion, I think we're going to see a. Let's see what's going to do here. He's going to be screwing it right back up table to try and get onto that eight. Wow, well, that'll make that pop a or, lot more tougher. Well, yeah, he doesn't need to, does it? If he leaves a slight angle, he can just drift out. Take the cut. So, away from the middle. Just bounce out a tad. Probably a little bit straighter than he wanted to be. You get a cue ball in the air, into an area to pop this black. That's the question. Well, if he's confident, he could screw all the way back up here. I think he may be electing to, to give it a go. So this, effectively, is tournament ball. Oh. And look at that for a shot. Brilliant Get that shot. for a shot. Perfect. Cued it absolutely like a dream. So it's this eight ball for the title. And it's there. Absolutely phenomenal performance from Mark. All this weekend. Brilliant. Dominant. Yeah, so impressive. And I'm sure after the level of concentration that he's had to maintain, certainly today, he'll be relieved to have got that final over. Yeah, that break of his, just absolutely devastating. Fantastic, great to watch, a joy to commentate on, has to be said. And we're about to hand you over to Kevin Barton, who will be interviewing Mark Boyle. Been a pleasure. <coughs> Thanks Andy and welcome down to the arena for the presentation of the trophy for the professional grand finals. What a fantastic match between two great players. Unfortunately there has to be a runner up this time. It's Dean Shields. <laughs> Dean, great tournament, but you just couldn't stop Mark today. No, I, uh, I think I made a few mistakes there, but just uh, he's a machine, isn't he? So you, you've got to be on 100%, otherwise you lose. So. Uh, five one down, but showed great character to come back to five all. Mm. So at that point in the match, you know there was real belief that you could win. Yeah, once I got back to that, I thought game on again now. Um, and then I've not really had a sniff. I don't. Well, maybe one or two, but yeah, I say he's just pulled away again and I'll run him up again. Yeah, I mean, you've come through a really tough field, and uh, you know, I know you're obviously disappointed at this point in time. But you must, you know, look back and think, you know, what a great tournament you've done. You just unfortunately run into Mark, who's just in impeccable form. Definitely, yeah. I mean, coming into this, I had a couple of wins. You know, just I've, I've been a bit out of form, so this is a bit of a bonus. So yeah, definitely, I'll take this. Uh, and you all seem to do well at the Alleyman. What is it about the uh, <laughs> the sea air that uh, inspires know. you? <laughs> no idea, no idea. I think it's just letting me air down a little bit and just trying to enjoy myself, enjoy the weekend. Well, well, <laughs> <laughs> well done on a great time, Dean. Well done, mate. Thank well you done. very much, Dean Shields. <laughs> well, our winner, the 2023 professional grand final champion, it's Mark Boyle. <laughs> Mark, uh, I don't really know what to say. The superlatives, you know, just keep coming. That was uh, that was a superb performance, a superb tournament overall. Can't complain, can't complain. Coming into this, I felt, first match, I felt I was struggling a bit. And then my break, my break kept me in games, to be honest. My, my break was brilliant at times. And that's, that's what, after the layout, 
the, the layout was normally there for me, you know, but when I had a wee bit of work to do, I kind of fell short a few times, you know, and that's when you know you're not on, on point, but I definitely got the rubs in, in that game, and uh, Dean's break kind of let him down a, wee, a, a few times, you know, so that mm. he done he done brilliant to come back to five each, and I thought, oh no, here we go again, you know, I've, I, I've let a lead go, but luckily things turned again, and then I managed to hold myself together. Yeah, I mean, at 5-1, it was looking like uh, real one-way traffic. You know, mm -hmm. as you say, you were breaking immensely and yep. uh, taking every chance that was coming. And obviously, you know, Dean sh showed great character to come back and, uh, you know, really put you under it. It just shows you, because even when, <coughs> what was I, eight, was I eight, five up, I'm only one break. I've only, Dean's got two breaks and I've got one there, so I've got to still win my breaks, you know, or otherwise that's a free-frame swing mm. right away, you know. So even though you're eight, five up, you can't switch off. Mm. Uh, another title this season. It's been yeah. a spectacular season for you. It's been no bad, eh? <laughs> She's it's looking down after me. She's looking after me, so she is. Yeah, sure. And uh, you know, for people who, who uh, you know, is watching for the first time, tell us about the top. You know, the the symbolism of the of the, the green and the pink on the top, and what that means oh, to if you. If you don't know, it's just uh, it's just it was my wife's favourite colours. You know, so this is the second time I've wore it, and I've won two tournaments. So. It's crazy the things that have been happening. I just know she's looking after me. You know, I, I, she always did when she was here, and she always will. Mm. You know, like we, we were a team, soulmates, everything. We, we had a special bond, and that will never go away. Well, Mark, fantastic performance, and uh, Mark will present you with the trophy. You are the 2023 Grand Final Professional Champion. Congratulations. <laughs> Well, Matt Pickworth, what an end to a fantastic professional uh, grand final. So with uh, Matt taking the, the trophy, fully deserved. Yeah, and I think uh, there was one of the stats that came through in my ears on the comms. You know, he's only lost four matches this season. And, uh, you know, Dean, as you said, you've got to be on top of your game to uh, be beating a machine like Mark Boyle. Yeah, and whilst he's not number one in the rankings and he's pushing for that, you know, I think it's fair to say that he is the best player in the world right now. Oh, yeah, and especially with the, the actual break he's got, he, you know, it's incredible the amount of power mm. he, he gets from it. Uh, but it's his pattern play, you know, he's got his positional play, everything is just going really well for him at the moment. But he's, he's somebody that works very hard at his game and uh, he's set on a very good level here at the IPN and uh, all these players know that's the level you've got to be at if you want to be picking up titles. Yeah, and just a word about Dean, great fight back, but at the end, you know, just, just run out of a little bit of steam maybe. Yeah, again, uh, that door he keeps knocking on, you know, it's not opening yet, but sooner or later <coughs> it will do, because, you know, when you do keep knocking, that door will open. And mm. uh, again, another incredible performance from Dean to get to the final. You know, he's played some terrific matches throughout yesterday and today, you know, and no doubt he's taken a lot out of him, but, uh, you know, great achievement from Dean. Yeah, absolutely. Well, uh, that concludes the coverage today, but uh, don't worry, we are back tomorrow at 11 o'clock where we will start with the final of the amateur event with two absolutely fantastic players. Can Lee Shepard do back-to-back -back titles? We hope you've enjoyed the coverage we brought you. We'll see you again tomorrow. Good night.